Good morning, everybody. We are back. I want to welcome you to our uh, fourth month of virtual weekends that um, we've been doing this year, um, bringing in special guests. And I think we have a great group um, for the next two days. Um, so we're excited for everything that is to come. Um, we are hoping that you'll say hello, make a comment of where you're at. Um, just uh, say hi to Hope. Hope is coming on here very soon. So we're excited for um, starting a little bit early. I'll have uh, a little word with Hope making me wake up so early this morning. That um, Right, Jer? Um, yeah. Hey, actually, I want to introduce you to my uh, co-pilot, um, Jer Mulqueen. Hi, everyone. Good morning, Jer. Good morning. And what's, what's your name? You're, you're Darren Mulqueen. I'm Darren Mulqueen. Um, so... Any of you out there um, that may not know who we are, we're a, a, a sewing machine dealership from sunny Arizona. Uh, we have very three, sunny, very sunny. It's very warm. Uh, we have three locations. Um, my mom and dad, Pat and Bridget Mulqueen, they started the business in 1977. Did you know that? Yeah, that, that's a long time ago. And um, I'm the second generation working. Mom and dad still work full time. And guess who is the third generation? Who? You. Jer and Definitely me. Um, Declan, Ashling. We have uh, a third generation string starting to uh, work full time and some part time, right? Yep. Yep. Jer is a full time guy. I'm here six days a week. Yep. So if you're ever in the store, in the Mesa store, you'll see at least one mole queen, but all. What, six or eight of us are here. Yeah, how come you're so much bigger than I am on the screen? That's uh, I was born with an abnormally large head. <laughs> I see, I see. So um, we have a lot in store for you. We, we have a lot of prizes. Um, Jer keeps coming up with new ways to give away uh, MoleQueen.com gift cards. Well, it's coming out of my pay. I have to, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. So Jer is paying for all the gift cards. We're, we're going to play a word game. We're gonna, I just announced this morning on an email that we're gonna play a word game that if you find the secret words throughout our nine guests, um, we have uh, a very special $150 shopping spree for fabric. So I hope out, you guys out there like fabric. Um, we are um, gonna put up secret words and all you have to do is jot them down. And at the end of our two days, Go to moldqueen.com, scroll down. We'll show this uh, here again in uh, between other segments, but just scroll down. There's a, a form that all you have to do is write down the secret words. All you need to do is find four of them. Is that right? Yep. You don't need to find all nine. So at least four of the secret words and submit that on our website and we will have a drawing for a $150 fabric shopping spree. Um, we have other winners that we have already picked from other ways of winning. Um, new subscribers on our YouTube channel. We um, gave, we have a winner there that we've picked um, for a new subscriber. And um, we have uh, really new graphics. I don't know if Jared's ready for the graphics. Uh, anybody that's out there on YouTube, if you don't mind to subscribe and um, and hit the little bell. If you like our YouTube channel and subscribe, look at that. Those graphics are 4K. Those are high-end graphics. That <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you are on YouTube, which I think a lot of you are, um, if you don't mind to please um, subscribe to our channel so that way you'll be notified when we do go live. We love giving away a lot of prizes. Um, we have TV magic going on right now. Um, we have Mr. Jer Mulqueen with the glorious background of our first guest. First guest. Our first Hope guest. Hope Yoder. The one and only Hope Yoder. <laughs> well, good, good morning. Am, am I ready to go? I Is think so. so I Hope think for yes. wait so early on this glorious Friday morning. You know, it's all going to be a good day, Darren, because your hair looks good. But look good? I think I... mine still looks better. <laughs> yes, it does. Hey, do, you, always... do you happen to have a hair light? 
I do have a hair light. I have this sucker on wheels. So when I go around, the light just shines on me. That way, if I seem mischievous, really, it you know, I'm very angelic. I have to have something to prove it, though. Little halo. Well, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, don't be a hater of my hair light. When I come to Arizona, I'll see if I can bring it for you. That would be cool. I do have a, a big light above us, but it's not low enough to really show off my, my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so we're excited. I, I, um, I found out that you were able to come on and you have this cool DIY project that you're going to talk about. And we're very excited about that. Um, I hope that you talk about this glorious box here. Um, and um, what Jer had behind him there in TV magic here, the license to create. So I'm excited. I'm going to gracefully bow out if that's okay. All right. And well, I'm thank gonna... you for having me this morning. And thank you for getting up earlier. You're very handsome. I mean, earlier you look even better. So I think you should always start this early. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. My name is Hope Yoder, and I'm filming from my home in sunny Sarasota, Florida, which the weather may not be much different than you guys in Arizona, but I've got some fun things prepared for you. But before we get started, I do want to tell you about the big purple Tiffany blue box that purple, it's Tiffany blue box that you saw that Darren had. And that's our new license to create program from Embellish. Now Embellish is a division of RNK Distributing. They're the makers of the brands you know and love and use like Floriani and Embellish, Quilter Select, Cosplay, Jenny Haskins formerly. So we have really cool subscription box. And um, I'm just gonna get this box because it's big as you saw Darren. Um, First of all, this is one of the things in the box and you have a color binder and all kinds of cool materials. And then just to put in perspective, because Darren is pretty tall and I'm not, this is the big box. And inside of this box, you guys are going to have all the directions and the pro, uh, materials from RK to make the beautiful things you see in my backdrop. So I decorated my background with all of these amazing projects from License to Create. And I just want to show you our short little commercial. It's 90 seconds to inspire you about our License to Create program. And this is something you purchase from Mall Queens, and then you have access to their private Zoom events to teach you to build upon the skills that you have for embroidery and sewing. And once you guys are um, members of the License to Create, we have our own little private Facebook group where you can interact with me called License to Create Consumer Edition. So let me see if I can remember how to share my screen here. And let's see, we're going to go here and share my entire screen. And I have this queued up and ready to go. And this is the projects from License to Create. We know it's been a long winter. For many, it's been really hard. But we have good news. Spring is coming and we can look forward. And we can feel free to create for your home and for your family. Let your creativity bloom with our latest License to Create projects coming this spring by Embellish and Hope Yoder. Just as the spring season brings new life to trees and flowers, we packed our latest spring sewing summer growing kit with a fresh set of sewing projects to breathe new life into your home. Enroll for this season and you'll receive all embellished products needed to make 12 amazing projects. Your kit includes an easy to follow manual to use while your instructor guides you. Here's what you can make. When it's time, you can welcome people back to your home. This banner is easy to personalize and features lovely florals. Brighten any room with this happy bee rug. Add summer charm with this bicycle pillow. Bolster your spirits with this beautiful accent pillow. This circular quilt is nestled in a wooden embroidery hoop, creating a three-dimensional way to hang mini quilts. Spring is a time for cleaning up the house and getting organized. A great place to start with these hanging organizers. Cute and clever. Plan your week with this project set. 
Using chalkboard vinyl and corkboard, you can create multiple places for posting reminders, grocery lists, and love notes. Embellish an inexpensive notepad with the spring notebook cover. Fresh food and outdoor fun is on the horizon, so get ready to head to the farmer's market or local grocery with this beautiful and durable tote. This lovely woven cork basket can help keep things organized. <coughs> and add botanical <coughs> flavor to your walls with this embroidered paper art project. When friends do arrive, serve up smiles with this scrappy quilted tray liner. It's time to feel good again. It's time to create. Join us for our spring sewing summer growing season and contact us today. So I hope you found those projects beautiful. Um, I, I have to send them back to RNK. I'm really sad to see them go. I begged them to let me have them here to show you guys. And uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, but as you can see, there's so many techniques. Now, I do want to tell you that if you have a five by seven machine embroidery hoop, you'll be able to create every one of those projects. So all you need is an embroidery machine and five by seven embroidery hoop. Now, if you do have a larger hoop, there's good news. There's a few optional large designs that you can choose instead of the five by seven designs. And all you're gonna do is add your own fabric. So it matches your, um, it matches your home. All right, so that's licensed to great. You guys can pick up a copy of that box at Mole Queens. And if you have questions, feel free to reach out to them. Let them um, know what your questions are. And I'm going to move on. I prepared a really fun event for you. And I want to show you Craft and Cut software at the end on how I created these files. But this is going to be the DIY outdoor um, rug project. And let me just switch my camera real quick here so that you can see what's on my table um, in, in front of me. And here we've got a some of the supplies that I've used to make these rugs. Now I've made several rugs and the first few turn out really ugly because I follow blogs that other people had written about different materials to use. So I wanna share with you my successes, but most importantly, the things that didn't go so well. And we decided we'd put together a little bundle um, that you can purchase from Mole Queens. It's under $60 for everything except for the rug and the paint. Um, and there's a collection of SVG stencil files um, for making the rug, our embellished vinyl weeding tool, and then we have our R&K embroidery perfection tape. And my favorite material for making rugs is the embellished sticky printable template. So I'm going to move these out of the way and just show you a few other things. Um, you are going to want a stencil brush and you can pick this up at a craft store. In fact, this brush, I used it so much the head fell off, but the embroidery perfection tape is still held it together. I wash it with Dawn dish soap when I'm done, but a stencil brush is hard and flat on the end. Um, and then I'm using craft and cut software to create all of the designs that you can get in this bundle. But I also want to teach you how to use your own SVG files so you can make your own rug. Now, if you're going to purchase Craft and Cut from Mole Queens or you already have, um, Craft and Cut is a digital cutting program that works with any brand of digital cutter like the Scan and Cut. Um, you also get all of these things free when you have Craft and Cut. And if you own Embellish Maker software, you can do everything with Craft and Cut and Embellish Maker. And one of the things you're going to see is we're going to seal our rugs when we're done with a clear um, satin or matte. Um, sealer, just a spray paint. And this is something I picked up at Lowe's. Um, I happen to like Rust-Oleum brand in my craft room. And what, how I've created the rugs is a um, variation of several of my embroidery collections. So you can pick these up at Mall Queens. Um, I'm going to show you how I took elements from the SVG files from all of my embroidery collections. And then I created this DIY rug bundle. So you're going to see a rug that has some of the gnome projects. And I'm going to show you how to take the pineapple from the crazy plant lady. We're going to work and craft and cut with a wine with me designs and um, just some new different collections. All right. So here's the first rug I want to show you. And what I want and also um, you're going to use any type of outdoor paint. And here's just some that I've used. It comes in black but it also comes in a lot of different colors. 
And on this rug, I thought this would be really fun. I want to show you how the red looks. It looks really nice um, with the black. Now, the white paint didn't look so good. I mean, you're going to see an example of that. But this is actually three stencils in one because the sticky printable template is eight and a half by 11. So this was one sheet two and three sheets. So if you want to make your rug bigger, you can just make multiple templates. This one is where we use the pineapple from the crazy plant lady and the flamingo, which came from the animal art collage. And we've done this all in black and I've welded these together, but I'm going to show you on a video that I made how to make these stripes on the rug. Now I've prepared a PowerPoint and a video showing us actually making a rug so you can see what it really looks like. This is from the Gnome for Christmas CD. And this is really fun. This is two different stencils. You've got the Gnome feet and all of the cute elements. And what I want to show you with this is um, this is not the best example. And so while we're still on my little camera, um, you'll see this in the PowerPoint. But this is stencil material and you probably purchase these from mole queens uh, maybe they're things that you use to pounce chalk on your quilt well this cuts really nice on my scanning cut but what isn't nice about it is that it doesn't fuse to the rug and so i have all these blurred lines there's no crisp lines so that wasn't one of the materials that i liked to make these rugs with it didn't make a good stencil um, this is one that's going to go outside of my house. I'm going to show you how to make this corkscrew from the Wine With Me um, embroidery SVG files. And this is two stencils, one and two. And this, if you don't drink wine, that's okay. It could say fabric, chocolate, tacos, um, takeout, whatever you want. And this is the white, red, and blue. And I live in Sarasota, Florida, by um, not far from the beach. And so I love nautical things. But I want to show you the white really doesn't show up real well. You can see a lot of the rug material through it. So I probably would say stay away from white. But the blue, the red, the black, those worked really nice. And then um, here's one that we made for Easter. And it just says, Hoppy Easter. All right, so let me get down here and just show you a little experiment first before I go into the PowerPoint. And you find my little goodies here. One of the things that um, I noticed when I was making the rug, oh, I had everything laid out. Let's see, what did I hate when that happens? All right. So one of the things that happens all the time is that's using the stencil material. Let me go back to my other camera here. Perfect. Let me see if I had any questions while we're going. Good morning. So anytime you use a make a stencil, it's really important that the material stick really well to the rug. So if the material like my um, mylar, it doesn't stick to the rug. I even sprayed this with a headliner spray, Super 77 from 3M. Um, and it's what they put the headliner uh, fabric on the top of your cars. It still didn't stick. I tried freezer paper and I tried the vinyl decal that you use and you put on, um, you know, your Yeti tumblers or your cars. So none of that worked, but the sticky printable template stuck like the wind. I swear a hurricane could come through here and my template would still be stuck to the rug. And that's what you want. All right. Let's see. Let me go in to showing you the PowerPoint on the materials that you need and just some overview. And then I'll go into the video um, with that. So let me go ahead and change. Uh, oops, wrong screen. I'm going to share my screen. And while we're up here, here's we're going to go into some of the materials um, that you would use to make a rug. And then I'll show you there's 12 different stencils on the DIY outdoor rug bundle and then 12 SVGs. So you can use them to make T-shirts and different things with. So here's another one of the designs. And you can see we welded the letters together. And this is a really fun outdoor rug. 
So some of the materials that you're going to need is the first thing that you're going to need is a coir rug. Now, here's a fun fact about coir. Coir is made from the shells of coconuts. And also, it's very popular in making ropes. So you may have a rope that has similar material to the coir rug. Now, these rugs are perfect for outdoors. I wouldn't recommend them for indoors because they do shed that coconut husk. Um, they hold up over time because we're going to seal them at the end. They're perfect for outdoor. But good news, if you want to make an indoor rug, just buy a fabric that accepts outdoor paint. And you can do the same thing for an entryway rug. So we're going to use the Embellish Sticky Printable Template. It cuts beautifully on all brands of digital cutters. So if you guys have a cell phone, you might want to get it ready because I'm going to show you my personal favorite set uh, cut settings for every digital cutter from scan and cut to the Cricut. And you can take a photograph of it with your phone if you're ready. We're going to need the embellished vinyl weeding tool um, and the outdoor rug SVG files found in the bud bundle, the pink tape that you can see on my screen and outdoor paint. I use two different brands. I didn't find that any brand held up better than the other. You just want to make sure that it says it's ready for outdoor or exterior. And usually there's a list in the craft store of the surfaces it'll stick to. A stencil brush and you want a clear matte sealer. It's a spray can of paint. Um, I would use either matte or satin, anything but glossy. And that's going to seal the rug. That's the last step. Now, when I made some rugs, we had we used the eyeball method you know, to center it. Eh, if it looks good, it probably is good. But when we went to photograph it, my eyeball method was not very accurate. So we came up with a really easy way if you have two different rulers, the quilter select ruler, um, the 24 inch ruler and the embellished t-shirt centering ruler worked perfect to nail it and get the design right in the center. And then I'm going to end with craft and cut and show you how to make your own stencils. All right, you guys, get your cameras ready for the next slide. So here's my favorite method is um, the sticky printable template. My least favorite methods. Now, I've tried freezer paper. That was the worst. And then I tried the paper back, um, the decal vinyl, like the Oracle 651, or if you have the Brother vinyl um, that is for outdoors or, or holds up long, uh, long term, that did not stick to mat. So the coir fibers or the coconut shell fibers, the vinyl didn't stick at all. And you saw how the stencil material didn't stick. But what stuck like the wind and made the best, most crisp lines on all of our rugs was the embellished sticky printable template material. And so with this, now I tried some of our other sister brands of this template material from RK Distributing. And for whatever reason, our formula is a little bit different. It seemed to cut much easier on a digital cutter. So um, I just want to point that out there. We also are going to use transfer tape. Now that's the tape that you would use when you work with vinyl decal vinyl. So Here's what the stencil material look like. And you saw the used portion. The good thing about the stencil is you can reuse it again and again. The bad thing is it doesn't stick to the rug at all. So paint seeps underneath and gives you really messy lines. Another thing I never thought about is look what happened. I lost my little pieces in the center of the O's and I had to take them out of the garbage. Yes, I had to dumpster dive, but in my own craft room, it was pretty safe. And so I had to kind of stick them to the template with this pink tape to make sure I didn't lose them. That meant I had to jab them into the rug with a straight pin. And, you know, that was less than ideal. All right. Here's the photographic moment, you guys. The scenic route or um, all the secret sauce settings for a digital cutter for our embellished sticky printable template material. So I'm going to pause here just for a quick second. So you guys can take a photograph of this. Now, what all of these cutters have in common is they read SVG files that Craft and Cut can create. And we had to slow the speed of our cutter as slow as we could go. So every cutter on the market, you need to cut it super slow. But here's all the blade settings, the depth and the speed. 
Another trick is, you know, remember when you used to snoop on your parents at home? And do you ever remember seeing a piece of paper, maybe a notepad, and they wrote a secret note on it and you were so nosy? Maybe this was just me. Could be. I don't know. But maybe one of you out there did that and you got a pencil and you lightly um, colored over that pad so you could see what the note was only to find out it was something totally adult and boring. Well, it's really hard to see the cut lines on the sticky printable template. So we just took a colored pencil or a crown and lightly covered over them so that we could see them. Then we're going to use our embellish vinyl weeding tool to remove the positive part of the design where we want the paint to show through. Next step is we're going to use that transfer tape that you normally use for vinyl and we're going to transfer the sticky printable template, which I'm now going to call a stencil onto the tape. And then this area is where the paint is going to show through. Now here's just a quick little clip showing that I've cut the sticky printable template, put it on the transfer tape, and now you're going to scrape it down and then peel the tape off to create your stencil. And after you have your stencil on, then you're going to dip paint or dip your brush into paint and you're going to pound it or pounce it just like you would pounce chalk if you're making a quilt stencil. And all of these items are found in the DIY outdoor rug bundle. Now, this is a special bundle we put together just for this event. Um, and I know that Darren just has a limited number in stock, but it includes all of these things. And I believe it's $59.99. So I'm going to stop for a minute and kind of come back and see if there are any questions or comments. All right. I see Teresa said she's never heard of Craft and Cut. Well, if you guys own a digital cutter, Craft and Cut is just the number one program that dealers across America sell. And it's made by RK Distributing. And it is a artwork program that's super easy to use. And I'm going to show it to you in a minute, but it works off of SVG files. And so if you own a digital cutter, no matter whether it's a scan and cut or a Cricut or a silhouette or even a commercial cutter, this software program is very easy to use and it has videos with techniques built right in to the software. So you can see a professional making a project and learn from the experts. Um, so that's one of the things that I like. And I think I mentioned this at the beginning, when you purchase Craft and Cut from Mole Queens, you're also going to get 264 original SVG files I created to go right in the software. And you're going to get some training videos on how to use it. All right. So um, let's see. <laughs> There's a lot going on about the um, secret contest. All right. So are there any questions that you guys have before I show you a video? Is anybody in here actually made an outdoor rug? And was it successful or not? Type in the comments. Let me know. Um, I purchased all of these rugs in town. So I, like I said, I live in Sarasota, Florida. And the blank rugs, um, I found those at um, Lowe's, Home Depot, and Target. And they're all about $9.99. And then you can make anything that you want. And guess what? All of my family members and my friends are going to get. I have 12 rugs to give away. I'm going to keep a couple, but that's going to be my go-to gift for the year. So someone asked how much Craft and Cut is. I'm going to let Jer comment on that um, since I'm not sure what the pricing is. <sighs> so Sandy says, I bought Craft and Cut many years ago. Is there a newer version? Sandy, use Craft and Cut. All you have to do is click on a button and update it. The update's free. You probably missed a bunch of free stuff in there. So Joyce has never made an outdoor rug. Ah, and Kathy's never made an outdoor rug. All right, let's get to the video. You guys type in your questions um, at so that I can see them when I come back, when I'm showing a video, I won't be able to see your questions. Um, so you guys keep the feed right now, just about the questions. So I don't have to filter through those, but someone says, where do you buy the rug blanks? Lowe's, Target, 
Home Depot. You can find those and they're all usually around um, $10. So Teresa is asking, what's the difference between Brothers Scan and Cut Canvas and Craft and Cut? Well, one of the things that I love about Craft and Cut, one of the many things is I don't have to be online to use it. So Brothers Canvas, you need to be online to use that portal. And this isn't a portal. This is actually a software program that works on a PC. It works right in um, on your computer. So you don't need internet, except maybe to update and add all the free things. So we have layered vinyl, layered rhinestones, all, and it also does some embroidery. So if you're into embroidery and you love to create appliques, you can make a cut file in a click, and you can also create applique cut files in a click. Ooh, I see Mole Queen's that is too cheap, you guys. So Mo Queen says Craft and Cut is $3.99, the event special. I've seen it at other places for $599. Shut the front door, Darren. I think Gara made a mistake, but whatever. Okay, so new possibilities. All right, let's go into um, <laughs> everything you said is true about eyeball and bleeding. Did I say something about bleeding? I don't think I did, but I'm going to move on because that is food for thought for sure. All right. So let's go into the next screen and I'm going to now show you the video that I created. And this is just um, my, in my warehouse. I'm filming from home, but I have a little office um, warehouse that I work for them to create all the embroidery collections and all of these things. And so we just did some filming. I thought you might want to see how I made a rug and it's just too messy to do it right here. So the first part is going to show you the 12 stencil designs or this 12 rug designs that come in this bundle. And so we'll go ahead and start the video. Now there's the Ahoy. You saw the Ahoy with three colors. All of these rugs I've just done in black to show you. Hello, fall. Fall is coming. Can you believe it? Welcome to my gnome. All right. I got to stop here because when I showed my husband this, all right, I don't know how many of you out here like llamas. They are so popular. And I love to embroider the llamas. I think it's peer pressure because really llamas are kind of weird and they're not necessarily the most friendly animal, right? So <laughs> I don't like it when people come to my house to try to sell me new windows. All right. I don't want new windows. If I wanted new windows, I would have called you. All right. And they don't even bring wine. They're so rude. They just knock on the door and want me to buy something. They didn't bring me a gift. So I figured um, this would be a great rug if you're like me and you only want invited guests to come over. No soliciting. Llamas are weird. So don't make it weird. All right. That just shows you a weird way of what, how my brain thinks. We love cats here at the Yoders. So we have cats. Good vibes. Enter if you brought wine. Hello. Goodbye. And I love this one is outside of my door. Now I'm going to stop right here. And so I'm going to tell you, I love quilter select rulers, rotary cutters, and mats. And if you have those great products that you've brought from Mole Queens, you don't want to use your good mat for this because you could get paint on it. So I have this old mat that I bought at one of those big trade shows and I never liked the mat, but it's perfect for doing crafting. And I actually use my, um, my saw and all kinds of stuff on this table. I have a sander, so there's paint everywhere. But what you want is a ruler and you're going to put your rug on, I'm sorry, a mat. And you're going to put your mat down and then your outdoor rug. You want to make sure that the edge of the rug is parallel with one of the horizontal lines on your mat. And then you're going to take the embroidery perfection tape and I'm using the grid marks on the mat so that I can make my lines of tape one inch apart. And that way I have one inch stripes. And we just decided to make two. So you can see the two stripes there and how we're just taping it actually to the mat. Now you're gonna need some fudge factor so you don't get paint over on the outside of the rug. So I added more tape. Here's the vinyl transfer tape. And you can see I've already weeded my stencil. I put my tape on and now I'm going to use the Quilter Select products to go ahead and um, just trim up the transfer tape. Now, this product is amazing. If you guys don't have this, you need this ruler. If you have a digital cutter, this thing is the bomb.com. And maybe um, on a future event, maybe if they will have me come back, I'll do a little event about how to use the ruler and our foil 
But this ruler I designed to work with any type of heat transfer material. And it has a round net neck template or a V net template. And then this heavy center line is zero. And then it starts one, two, three on each side. So it's a centering ruler made to get your graphics straight on your t-shirt. But we're going to use it as just a centering ruler. I use this for embroidery, trying to get my block straight, all kinds of things. But now we're going to use it on paper. And I have this on the center and I have it, it's about four and a quarter here. And I want to make sure it says four and a quarter on the other side. So I'm going to just draw marks on my tape that's on top of the stencil. I've already done the horizontal. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the vertical marks, just using a Sharpie marker right over the tape. It's not on the stencil. And now I'm going to connect the dots and draw a line. So I've got those crosshairs just like we're used to in embroidery. Now here's a tip for you. If you've ever drawn with a Sharpie marker, or a friction pen only to find out that you have a little ink on your ruler and it transfers onto your white block. I hate when that happens. So you can take a lens wipe and you can just wipe the edge of the ruler and check it out. Look at what happens, how much ink I got from drawing two lines. All right. The next step is now we have the center of our stencil. Now we need to find the center of our rug. So we just use this quilter select ruler and put tape down the center. I think the rugs I have purchased are 18 by 30. Now the ruler is only 24 inches long. So I got to figure out how to find the horizontal center and I'm going to put tape there. Now here's the magic. So I've weeded my stencil. I have transfer tape on top of it and I've drawn my lines to find the center of the stencil. All right. I'm going to slowly remove it. And you want to make sure that the stencil comes off with the tape a little bit didn't. So I'm just going to scrape it back. Now I'm going to actually tape this to the centering ruler. And I want to make sure that the center line is on the center of the ruler. All right. And then we're going to match up this line with the tape marks that we just added. All right, so flip this over. And this is why I needed a second ruler. So I have the quilter select ruler underneath there. And I'm lining up the quilter select ruler so that it's on the horizontal tape marks. Once I have that there, then I can just finger press it down, scrape it, and then you need to get the ruler off of the rug. But this way I nailed it. Every time I used these rulers, I got the design right in the center of the rug. I'm going to scrape pretty using a lot of pressure. And this is the hardest part of this whole project is now you've got to remove the tape so that the stencil stays right on the rug. And so use your fingers, the weeding tool, whatever you can to make it stay in place. Now you're good. We're going to add some tape on the side of the stencil because see how close it goes to the edge. I don't want to have um, paint to get anywhere. I don't want it. So I'm going to use a little more tape, a lot of tape will do ya. And right here, you can see on the upper right corner or left corner, I'm pouring some of that outdoor paint. Now I do have a Ziploc bag um, underneath it. So I'm not pouring right on my mat, if you're wondering. And I'm going to just work the paint into the brush by pushing and dabbing. And then it's an up and down tapping motion where I am pushing the paint into the rug. All right, you guys, in your mind, think how many coats of paint I used on these rugs that I showed you. Five coats. So I'm going to put the first coat of paint by pouncing. And I'm going to set my timer on my Apple Watch for 15 minutes. And when the 15 minutes goes off, then I'm going to apply a second coat. Set the timer for 15 minutes. Apply the third coat, 15 minutes, fourth coat, 15 minutes, fifth coat, 15 minutes. And now I remove the tape. You don't want to wait until the um, paint dries all the way because then it's just you're not going to be able to get that tape off. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And those little pieces that stuck really well because of that sticky printable template, I'm going to just pull them out with my vinyl weeding tool, use the same trick, a lens wipe. And this is the last step. So a lot of times people ask us, don't, doesn't this rug um, fade over time? Well, it's going to fade probably. Even the ones that you buy are going to fade. But 
guess what? You're a maker and you can make another one. But by sealing it with this clear spray, it's going to help it last a whole lot longer and it keeps it from shedding as much. So we actually put two coats on the rug and we're coating the entire rug, not just the paint on the rug. One last look before I um, answer questions is here's what the bundle looks like. Um, I know Mole Queens has a limited number of these if they sell out. Um, hopefully they can get some more uh, from r &K. Special bundle that we put together for this. That's how easy it is to make the rug. And I'm going to end with about five minutes just showing you how to make your own stencils. All right. I hope that you purchase the bundle and support Mole Queens. But maybe you have a lot of SVG files from designs that you've purchased. And I want to show you how to make a stencil because it is a little bit different technique than maybe just creating a t-shirt. So there's some steps that you need to know, but let me take some questions first. Um, and see, it looks like a fun project. And I never thought about creating an outdoor rug. It's really fun. Um, I talked about craft and cut and cool ruler that ruler is the bomb you, everybody that has a digital cutter should have that ruler in their toolkit first time watching hope oh, i'm so sorry there's no refunds for this early morning i hope that you've liked what you've seen i should make a mug that says i hope my enthusiasm doesn't scare you <laughs> so thank you for watching i get really passionate i love to craft to sew to quilt to embroider i even use a laser and one of those things that I have in common is craft and cut software. So let's get right to it. And let me show you how you can make your own stencils using craft and cut software and SVG files. So let's go one more time. And in the meantime, you guys can go ahead and type in your questions and I'll read them when we come back. So this is what craft and cut software looks like. And I'm going to be using the SVG files from the wine with me embroidery collection. And there's a little corkscrew and I want to show you how we made one of the rugs. This is the stencil that I'm going to show you just how I made the corkscrew for time's sake. But I want to show you that this is actually two different stencils. So if you wanted to make the rug for the wine, you're going to need two sheets of that stencil material. And notice how, let me just go ahead and delete this and just show you this one. So a couple things I want you to see, notice how there's a black box. That's gonna be a little smaller than my sticky printable template material. So the overall part of this design is 10 and a half by seven. So anytime you make a stencil and you're gonna use my favorite material so you can get good looking rugs, the sticky printable template, then you want to create a box that's smaller than that sheet of paper. The next thing I want you to notice is over in the layers window, I have combined everything. So it's just one piece of artwork. There's not five or six or seven or even two layers. There's only one. And it's all created like a stencil. The other thing a lot of you said you didn't know or you've never heard of craft and cut. So I wish I had more time, but maybe we'll hop in here another time. But save to cut is an exclusive feature. You won't find it in any other software program. I use all kinds of software programs, including Adobe Illustrator, Lightburn, you name it. But craft and cut is the one that I use every single day in our shop. And it's because of save to cut. Now, if you have a brother scan and cut and you wanted to cut Oh, let's just say heat transfer vinyl. You would click this button and then click next. And what's going to happen is it's going to give you the formula, all of those settings that you need to put your cutter on. Now, if you have an auto blade scan and cut, you know, you probably just need to put it on half cut, but then it's going to tell you how to cut the vinyl. You're going to put the shiny side down on the mat. And then it's going to tell you, you need to mirror image your design. And there's a YouTube video that you can click on right here and it'll take you and it'll show you how to cut and use heat transfer vinyl. Then when you click on next, it's going to say, did you forget to mirror image the design? Because heat transfer vinyl has to be mirror image. Oh, oops. 
that's the video playing there in the background. Sorry about that. And when I save this, all right, you're going to get a screen that pops up and you can print a template and it has all of those settings. It has the size and everything. And now all I have to do is copy that design right on my USB stick and put it into my scan and cut. Easy peasy. All right, now let's go to an SVG file. Now, anytime I work with SVGs, it looks pretty when you look at it in the filled view. But the first thing that I do is I click on this icon to show the outline view only because I don't know if there's problems if I can't see the outline. And so for instance, if I want to create this stencil, that's one piece of artwork, all of this is welded together, but you know that SVG file isn't. So I need to weld it. So let's experiment with this. First of all, I don't really think I need that circle. So I'm going to delete it. And I want to weld this portion, the top into the corkscrew, into this thing, into the bottom pointy thing. You got it? So I, I want to keep the holes how they are. So I'm going to hide that layer by clicking on the eyeball. And next, I want to weld all of this together so I can click all items. In Craft and Cut, there is a drop down. If you see a drop down arrow, that's like Alice in Wonderland saying, jump down the hole and see what other tools are here. So I'm going to click on weld. And I want you guys to look right here. Weld once, done. But I still have two layers here, don't I? One and two. Let me turn this outline view back on. And this is what we need a stencil to look like. We need it to be one layer. So this is super easy in Craft and Cut. You're going to select all of these items, and then you're going to combine them together into one stencil. Done. Easy. All right, now let's say I wanted to make a box and I just wanted a giant corkscrew on my rug. I don't know why I would want that, but let's just pretend I did. You can add text, you can use true type fonts, built in fonts, open type fonts in Craft and Cut. All right, but I'm going to just draw that little box. And what did I say? Seven and a half by ten and a half. So I'm going to type in the number and we'll just make a giant corkscrew. That's like a very big subliminal, subliminal message, isn't it? Now I have two items here. I'm going to need to get it down to one and I could put my text or whatever I wanted in here. Let me center these items. And now let me combine them. And then I have one piece of artwork. And it's that easy. And let's fill this back in with color. And that's how you create the stencil. Super easy. Now, the other um, good vibes that I showed in the video where we made the stripes, I took this pineapple from the Crazy Plant Lady Embroidery Project CD. So in this CD, we have embroidery designs. We have the sewing pattern to make the succulent apartment hanger and the SVG files. So I've opened the SVG files up in here and I don't really need this. All right. So I'm going to take this whole layer and delete it. But what I want to show you is, you guys, there's so much in the, our SVG files and our CDs. We've got all these birds and these flowers, but you know what? I don't really want to use any of them right now, but I could. I could make a sweet little bird rug. So I'm going to delete all of these things that I don't want. Oh, that flower is cute. I need to make another rug, you guys. All right, so now I have all of my pineapple. I'm going to unfill it with color. I need to weld it. Let's see what happens if I just weld it. Okay, now what happened here is I lost my little insides. So let's do this. 
I'm going to combine all of these into one, hide it, now weld it. And let's just change this to something darker. Now I've got this just like I want it and I can combine it one more time and I have just made my stencil super easy. That's craft and cut you guys. So, um, hello, was the latest, what was the last time the new version was updated in craft and cut Jamie? That was, I think last fall and probably this fall again, we'll have another free update for that. So um, there's layered rhinestones. That was a newer update. We did some knife tools. I know on my group, I showed how to do split letter monograms with some new updated tools. So when you're in Craft and Cut, look under the help and then check for updates. It's that easy. Just make sure you're connected to the internet. All right, can you do a contour around artwork in Craft and Cut? Teresa, you can do that. So, um, Let's go here one more time. And if we have craft and cut open, here's my pineapple. I'll just use this and you can do contour, um, create outlines, contour. But what I like to do is even better. And this was an update. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. I'm going to create a shadow effect. And to me, I like that feature a little bit better. And so look what happens, you guys. When I click on that, oops. Oh, Nope. Let's do this. Mm -hmm -hmm. So with this, I probably would need to just use the little contour feature and I can do one ripple around the outside of that. And then I can change that um, feature here. fill it in with color. And so if you wanted to do um, like stickers or different types of things, there's your outline. Now, what I was going to show you um, that I really like is let's just say I'm going to create this arrow and then I can use the shadow tool. And I just want the shadow to be a little different color. And I can do this and have two layers of vinyl. Now, what's really cool, if you wanted to make something like my cup, you can actually use the layered, um, let's go back here, and I could use the layered vinyl registration marks to create an easy way to align these items. And that's how I made my cup. I got them, I drew the shapes in Craft and Cut, and then I got them all aligned with those features. So. Oh goodness, I have a program and I just never used it. Now you want to use it. You guys, um, come back, follow me, and we'll do some fun things with Craft and Cut. Let me answer some more questions. So, um, and, and before I answer those last questions, this has been a lot of fun. As you can see, I have no problem talking. So I could probably go on more and more and more to show you things. But just find me on social media and we'll do some more together. And hopefully I can come back here and show you some more things with Craft and Cut. All right, so Kira says, does it work with a Mac, Catalina, or Big Sur? So that's a great question. I'm a Mac user. I'm working on a MacBook Pro right now, but I have Windows 10 loaded on my computer. As long as you have Windows loaded on your computer, you would be able to use the program because it is only a Windows program, but I'm using it on mine, and I have, I have the latest version of um, the operating system, and I use it with no problem with Windows 10. And before that, I used it with Windows 7. Um, can you do a contour? Let's see. I gave you that. And I see a lot of links here for the program. You know, Darren and uh, Jer never know what I'm going to talk about. So they're furiously trying to give links there. Um, can start stop point nodes be changed? M King. Yes, absolutely. On the left side of the screen, the next icon right below the select arrow, click on it. Nodes, you can do one at a time or you can drag your mouse around it and instantly click add several different nodes. Are there craft and cut classes available? You know, we have an RNK software club. Anytime you buy an RNK program, such as craft and cut from Mulqueens, um, when you go and install the 
program, a pop-up window opens, you click on it and then you just enter your serial number and there's all kinds of training videos, things like that. I also have a group where on Monday nights I do live training on craft and cut and embellish maker software. You're welcome to join it. I don't sell anything embellished. You need to get that from Mole Queens or anything craft and cut. So if you have those programs, you're welcome to join me on my fan group and we'll be happy to show you how to use it together. Also in that license to create that I showed you that big box, I forgot to mention that on the USB stick, there are training software videos for Craft and Cut and Embellish Maker. That's part of what you get with a license to create as well. So bummer that it takes Windows. Yeah, you know, it does. And I've always had Windows on my Mac just because there's so many programs that are only compatible with um, that. And I don't even know if you have to pay for Windows, but I don't think it's very much. I think it'd be definitely worth it. What is the group? Um, it's just look up my name. You, you'll find it there. I don't know if I'm, I don't want to get into anything I shouldn't say, but again, I don't sell any of these products. You're going to get these through Mole Queens and then I'll help you learn how to use it. So I'm new. Do you buy a cutting machine and do you need a separate software? So you guys, you can reach out to Mole Queens. They sell the scan and cut. It's my favorite cutter. I probably shouldn't say that like, oops, but it is my favorite. It's the one that I use. I have every branded cutter, including commercial. And I always use the scan and cut. Um, I don't use the canvas. I use craft and cut for that. The, one of the nice things is a lot of us own more than one brand of digital cutter craft and cut. That's only the one, you know, how to need to learn how to use because you can use it with different cutters. If you happen to own one, uh, more than one, I have two different lasers that I use in our shop and I use craft and cut to design every product that we sell. All right. Uh, I see draw and cut as an add on for craft and cut. Um, so draw and cut is an add on set of tools. If you like to draw with Sharpie markers, you can add that on. It is not a program. It's just extra tools. So um, I want to make that clear. And is it compatible with a Cricut machine? So Cricut, you're still going to need to use design space in order to make your cutter cut stuff. So you can design all of your projects in um, craft and cut, save it as an SVG file, and then you're going to need to open it into design space to make your cutter move. And that's what I do with my um, lasers in my office. Same thing. It has its own software that makes the lasers move, but I don't design anything in that. Um, does license to create come with craft and cut? That's a great question. So if you are a license to create customer, you can add on a subscription for 120 days that will give you embellish maker software and crafting cut. And so you're just going to need to ask Mole Queens about hooking you up with that 120 day subscription. And at the end of that 120 days, you're probably going to want to buy the program. All right. But that's a great way to kind of try it. It's only available if you're a licensed to create subscriber. Mm. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Good morning. So sticky. So Ronnie, Ronnie, I hope I said your name right. So the sticky printable template paper that we use to make with no. So the sticky printable template. All right. So everything that I talked about, except for the rug and the paint and the brush, you can buy it together as a bundle. And it's actually, this is embroidery template paper for our embellish line, but it cut beautifully. Now I tried the ones from Floriani and from Quilter Select and for whatever reason, they're made of a different fiber material, raw materials, and it just didn't cut very well. In fact, I couldn't get some of them to cut, but luckily our embellish sticky printable template cut perfectly on a digital cutter and it comes with all the designs and the other tools that you need. Um, make sure I didn't miss any more cool project. Glad you like it. Very interesting. All in capitals. <laughs> all right. Mo Queens has put a lot of links there. That's great. Um, I think I'm, uh, my time is up. So let me just answer a couple more questions. Can I get those links? Da, 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 da. One more. Okay. we got a lot of links that just dropped. You guys, that was a lot of information as a quick recap. You deserve to all have license to create subscription box where you can do live events, 
um, Zoom events with mole queens to help you work on the projects. You can make them on your own. You need a five by seven hoop and a giant box and you're going to add your own fabric. And if you want to make some of the rugs, I do want to tell you when you buy the bundle, I put a different video on the CD that comes with it. If you don't have a CD drive, just buy a little portable um, CD plug-in player doohickey from even from Walmart. You can get them for like 25 bucks, less than a meal at Chili's. So you're going to get a video so that you can remember how to make the rugs. All those settings I showed you, the designs, the SVGs are coming on that as well. And I think I'm up at my time and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to end this or, oh, good. Darren, thank Yay. you. <laughs> I said that hey, all hope. in one breath. Yeah, did, did you actually take a breath? You, you took yeah. two breaths, I think. I hope that was wonderful. I love how you teach. Um, and I, um, I remember you were here in Arizona a couple of times with us and that, yeah. that hopefully will come again. Yes, I would love to do that. And if not, then, you know, I'd love to come back virtually and, you know, prepare something else. Maybe some of those lessons that everybody's asking about. And I want to thank you for allowing me to come into all your viewers home. Thank you for squeezing me in, in the morning. I appreciate that greatly. I am sorry that you know, you didn't have as much time to gel your hair, but it still looked yeah. great. I didn't even blow dry it this morning. <laughs> I hope, um, I just want everybody to know that we, like you said, frantically added some things into our category. We got the weeding tool. <laughs> as you were talking about stuff, we were like, oh my gosh, let's get it in there. That ruler, the alignment ruler, which is really cool. So we got a lot of, um, of your products. If anybody wants to purchase them, Oh, yeah. And it's OK that you um, talk about your Facebook group. OK, well, let me share that real quick then, yeah. um, because and first I want to say I don't sell embellish or any of the products I talked about. You guys got to get it through Mole Queens. But once you get it, I can show you every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time how to use them. And it's just designs by Hope Yoder fan group. OK, this is all about just building a big community. So I'm glad to. We're better together, you. Darren. Right. Well, thank you for waking up this early. If anybody has any last questions, just go ahead and pop them up. But um, we are thrilled to uh, have you here. Where, where are you at again? Sarasota, Florida. Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. Time for the beach. Is that where you're headed after this? I think that's tomorrow. We have family that's in tomorrow. town. So maybe tomorrow. Right now I'm headed to lunch. <laughs> Lunch, that's right. Yeah, because you're three hours ahead of us. Or yeah. later. Can you uh, maybe fax over or email us some food? Some yeah, food I'll fax a pizza. Food. Your mom's not cooking today? What? Oh, she, prob she probably is. You well, should that's be right. We better not. She'll get mad. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys. Have a great day. Thank you, Hope. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for um, joining us this morning. And that was our first event of the day. Uh, we have how many more events, Jer? Four. Four. Now we're just getting started like the other weeks. Yep. So we got a little extra. We got a, a bonus. A couple hours. Right, a bonus event. Our stores are now opened. It's 10 a.m. about. I guess it's not quite 10. Oh, you got about 30 minutes. Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit early. So how about we... You want to give away a prize? Do you want to you explain the? Oh, yeah. what I posted earlier? So any of you that are just joining us, we added a new game um, for this weekend. It's a, uh, we're giving away a shopping spree, a $150 Mole Queen fabric shopping spree. It's good on our website if you're not in Arizona or you can use it in store. Um, it is um, basically a gift card for fabric. You've got $150 of fabric if you win. Um, and all you have to do is Jer is going to put a secret word on the screen, um, and we will give this one away again just because um, we want you to make sure that you see it. During each of our lives, uh, today and tomorrow, there will be one secret word. Um, and if you go to bullqueen.com, Jer will pop it up on the screen here. Um, just go to our website at the end of tomorrow. Um, and we're really, it's just you have to have at least four of the nine words. So we're not requiring you to watch 
this whole event. We sure hope you do, um, because there's a lot of great guests, um, which we'll discuss here in a, a minute. But if you go to molequeen.com, we're going to show you two things here on our website. Um, one is right when you go to the website, we have all of our events right on the home screen. So if you click on um, any of the events that you um, are enjoying during the next two days, um, so the first class, which we just had, was Hope Yoder. So if you click on that, you will go to everything that she talked about. Um, you can sign up for License to Create, which is that big box. Um, we do have the, um, the dates of our Zoom classes now scheduled. We will let everybody know who is already signed up. Um, and anybody that um, is going to sign up, our Zoom classes, they're just a few hours each. You get four of them once a month for four months. There's 12 projects that will be discussed. And Jared's going to pop up our, in our comment section, I believe, um, those dates, which um, We'll, maybe we'll do that in a few moments, right, Jer? Or is that the best way to do that? Jer's our co-pilot here. He's he's our DJ in the background. Okay, so there it is. Um, our license to create, if you do sign up for that, we have April 24th, May 29th, June 26th, and the 4th is July 24th. They will be um, given by uh, Bridget, one of our uh, customers who... Um, has become a good friend of the family business, and she is now going to help do Zoom classes with our license to create. And Kay, um, Kay Corman, um, she's around here somewhere. We just can't find her. Um, oh, she might be behind this box. Might be inside of it. Might be. No, Kay Corman is also going to um, help with the Zoom classes. And those Zoom classes will be recorded. So if you do sign up for license to create, um, Zoom classes are recorded, so you don't have to watch them live. You can watch them whenever you want. Um, so Hope Yoder, in that section, you can find the, the rulers. You can find the uh, craft and cut software. You can find the weeding tools. Um, so all of that cool stuff. Um, at 10 o'clock, I'm excited to say we have the Creative Grid company um, showing off their rulers. Um, I have just some right here. Let me just grab those. Um, but they have huge rulers. Oh, yeah. I, um, the ruler company is coming on next. I forgot what um, we got into our website originally for. So if you go to the home page of our website and scroll down to the bottom, the secret word game, you will just put your name, email, click that box if that's okay so we can um, help you out in the future with events and specials and coupons. And then the four words, at least four, you could do more words as you see them. Um, but we're going to pick a, a winner for the word game at random. Jared's putting in my information, I think, there. Um, but I only know one of the words, which is license. So, so far, we only have one word. But we're basically just going over the game. If you want to win a $150 gift card or have your chance, just go ahead and keep watching. We'll put up a secret word. Go to our website type in those words and submit and we will pick a winner. I want to add something though. Okay. So it's not like every other competition kind of like where it was like a bingo where you guys could comment and share your share your words to each other. This one is you guys versus each other really. So don't it's a secret word. So if you see it, don't post it in the comments. Keep it to yourself, write it down on a piece of paper because if you tell everyone else then you lessen your chance of winning. Yep. So keep it to yourself. Don't write it in the comments. Oh, Jerry, you're mean. As people are writing it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, and the other game we're going to play this weekend instead of bingo is uh, a word scramble. We're going to give away, we're going to play at least eight times uh, in between segments. And the word scramble will be um, obviously random scrambled words. And the first person to comment what the answer is we will give them a $15 Milk Queen gift card. Should we do one now, Jer? Why not? So we're going to do our first game, um, Word Scramble. So before Jer puts it on the screen, you guys have to be ready because if you figure out what this word is, we will email you a MilkQueen.com gift card. Um, we're going to do this eight times. So 
stay tuned for all of that. Um, Jer will warn me before he puts it up there. So Jer, can we talk about the guests that we have coming up? Yeah. So 10 o'clock, we have the Creative Grid Company. Um, they have, you know, your standard rulers. They have a unique grip pattern on the back that doesn't wear off to keep your ruler on your fabric. And uh, we have, um, or they have, rulers that are for specific shapes and specific quilt patterns. Um, every one of their rulers has um, QR codes that you can find out how to use the rulers. Um, on our website, smokegreen.com, we've put um, all, all of that info so that if you do buy a ruler, we have the videos on it and instructions. Um, so that's Creative Grid. I'm very excited because I hear um, that we'll find all the ins and outs of that company. And we sell a lot of rulers. We have a ton of rulers. Um, and just so you're prepared for this, um, we have two classes in the next two days that you can print off a PDF. Um, so on um, Creative Grid, if you go back to mulqueen.com, um, right at the very top, I'm, I don't know if you're able to do that. Here's our, our mix master. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Jerry is cute as a button, according to 94% of the people that were polled. <laughs> if you get our emails, if you read the bottom little fine print, there's always some silly little note in there. But if you click that, the second event of today, which is Creative Grids, if uh, you click on that, Jer, the just to show you right below the headline on it, there's that... Uh, word that says click here to download PDF. If you click on that, you can print off all of the rulers that Creative Grid has. So you can circle the one that you're interested in and be prepared. That's something I keep forgetting is to make sure you have a, a piece of paper and a pen. Um, some people call them biros. I don't know if anybody's ever heard the word biro. Have you heard that word? I have. That's uh, Gaelic for pen. That's Gaelic for pen or ballpoint pen, I think. Um, so grab your paper and your pen so that you can write down what um, our guests are talking about because sometimes it goes so fast and you go back to try to find it and it's hard to find. There's a couple people asking where they type the words, so I'm going to show them. One more time, we'll show you. And we'll show you again You know, down the road. We won't keep giving out the word again, so just have to watch the event to find the word. Um, and it's just uh, for those people, because we have a lot of people that say they watch every event that we do the whole day. So we're kind of trying to give back to the people that are sitting there watching the, the whole event. So molequeen.com, right, Jer? Yep, molequeen.com. And then you scroll down on the homepage all the way to the bottom. And then it says to type in your first name, last name, and email address. And then it says, I give permission to Molqueen Sewing and Fabric Centers to send me emails. You can subscribe at any time. Uh, type secret words here. So when you uh, when you find your four secret words, um, that's when you're going to um, add those into the that page that I just showed you. Um, don't type them in the chat because it's a secret. So as long as you see it, then you'll know. But you don't want everyone else to know because it lessens your chance at winning. So keep that in mind. Don't type it in the chat. I see like 100 people typing it in. Um, but and it's okay for the first one, the first one, cause we've already posted it twice, but from here out, we're only going to put, um, one, it's only going to be up there one time for about 10, 15 seconds and that's it. So maybe two times. So only one once. Okay. Once it is, but I do have this, the word to unscramble. Oh yeah. Let's, um, play our first game instead of bingo this weekend, we decided to play word scramble. So Jared's going to pop it up on the screen and Please, just the first person that comments, we can see whether you're from YouTube or you're from Periscope. No, no, Twitch. Twitch, Facebook. Or, or Facebook. So we can see all of the streams coming in from all the different um, pages. The first person to comment what that word is when you unscramble it um, will win a $15 MoQueen.com gift card. Morning, Brian. That is a crazy word. It's two words. I don't even know if I remember what it is. Oh, I know what it is now. Kathy Grubar wins. <laughs> so who, who got the first one? Kathy Grubar. Kathy Grubar. Are you sure? Yep. Oh, no. 
Yeah, that's the first one that I saw. There was more that popped up before that. All right, so let's make sure of, we, we see the comments. We want to make sure as far as the time stamp. To be fair, um, we have seven, at least seven more of those to come. So hopefully um, they're not that easy. <laughs> And it is illegal in 49 states to use a, um, a Google website to unscramble the words, according to 93% of the pollers. Just kidding. No, please don't use any fancy unscramblers to unscramble these words. Right, Jer? Yep. <laughs> OK, so after our 10 o'clock event, we have electric quilt company. I don't know if you know who they are, but they've been around for quite a while. And I hope that you stay for that as well, because it is an amazing software that allows you to create your own quilt blocks using your own fabric. You can do custom. You can do one of the over 6,000 quilt blocks that come in the software. All you do is print it off. They're all license free so that you can use them. You can sell the quilts. The blocks are all free for you to use. Um, and they have a brand new program called Block Base Plus. And I thought, how cool is this? They're quilt blocks that were originally from like the 20s that were um, sold for a lot more than what they are selling for today in our, um, our event. Everything we have is on sale. Um, so make sure you go to mulqueen.com. And after Electric Quilt Company, we have a wonderful young lady named Michelle Watts, and she is a Southwestern-themed uh, pattern maker. And I don't know if you know uh, Anna's awesome applique. We had her here in store doing some classes, um, but she has taken some of Michelle Watts' designs and, embroid and created them into embroideries. Um, but that is coming on at 2 p.m. today. And then last but not least for today, it is a handy quilter. Andy Culture will be live from their studios in Utah. You didn't get to see the our new intro video. I you did get, not. You want? How about we show everyone? A little. It's like a little ad about our store, and you get to see. Um, yeah, that sounds good. I I was running around frantic to um, get in here, and I missed it. So what we'll do is we'll I'll play this video. Um, Jer has a friend. We're, we're gonna take about a ten minute break. Just so you know, Jer Jer has a friend. What's his that, name? That's it. I have a friend. Oh, yeah, that's all. No, Jared has a friend named Jer. Yep, Jared. Uh, we're, Jared. Bo we're both named Jared. So. Um, and he made this for us yesterday, which is amazing. So yeah, I think that's awesome. We filmed awesome. it yesterday and then edited it yesterday. Shout so. out to Jared. But uh, I will go ahead and play this. We're gonna, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. For Creative Grid. For Creative Grid. So uh, And more prizes, more secret words. Yep. Awesome. Alrighty. So here It'll we give go. you time also to go to mulkqueen.com if you want to get any of that embellished stuff. All right.
and we are back for more fun. Uh, we will be doing more prizes here in a little while, um, more games, and the most important part is that we're going to have a lot more guests. Um, we have a specialty ruler company. They they actually do, you know, your standards, the rectangles, the squares, um, you know, all your regular shapes that you would normally love to have. I just, I know they're going to talk about this, but my favorite feature is they have specialty grips that are built into the ruler not to wear off. Um, they have specialty shape rulers. Um, so they sell rulers for um, all different types of quilts, um, not just your standards. And I love how they give you instructions on all of that. Um, they are part of the Gypsy Quilter um, group as well. Um, and so I know that today we get to have some bundles. Um, you can't really see this, but I don't know if you've ever seen that tiny little iron. Um, we're going to talk about all of this with um, Chessa from the Creative Grids Company. So I'm excited to introduce Chessa coming up here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Chessa. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. A little bit of an echo there, but I think either Jared can oh, maybe no, help can with that me. or Jared's trying to get that going here. Um, so, Chessa, where are you at right now? What state? We are in Ohio. Ohio. Got to take care of that echoing. Yep, it'll. Jerry will tell us if it's on our side or your side here in a quick moment. But what's the weather like in Ohio right now? I always like to know where, Byron, you know, where they're coming from. Place. And Ohio is quite a distance yeah, from. Sunny Arizona. I'll remove them real quick. And while we're waiting for them, do you guys want to do another unscramble for this section? Um, sure. OK, let's do that. We, we do have a few extra scrambles that we can um, throw in there in case we find that we have time for more. And just so you know, the more you comment um, and the more you share, the more that people are watching, the more prizes that we get to give away. So if you don't mind to keep your comments coming, please ask questions. Um, we love to do a question and answer. It's not every day that we get to talk to these companies. So we're always excited to bring new stuff to you, new companies. Um, if you've never heard of Creative Grid before, I think everywhere you go now and you see a ruler, you're gonna scout out Creative Grid rulers because they are the best for um, all the different styles that they have. I think it's like over 50 different rulers. So the word is on the screen. That's our second unscramble of the day. If you can figure out what that word is, um, and somebody has already figured out the unscrambling of that word, and the winner is, we're going by the first person. We want to be fair. We would love to give everybody gift cards. Um, I personally would, but Jer won't because they all come out of his pay. And so um, you can blame Jer for, oh yeah, we have 4K graphics. Did you see that? Whenever we give away prizes, um, when it's prize time. Um, Nancy Trowell, congratulations. Nancy, you get a $15 mulqueen.com gift card. Um, boy, that, that confetti was exciting. Try to bring in Chessa and see Yes, her. Chessa. Chessa from Ohio. Hi, Chessa. You can How see me, you? but I can't see you right now. OK. We can hear you, though. You're good. Though. Perfect. There's no echo. And Chessa, <laughs> thank you for doing this. Um, I will be back in a little while for question and answer. So I hope that um, people will um, share. In fact, um, you know what, Jer? I'm going to offer a, a, a uh -oh. I'm going to offer a $15 gift card if you share this feed on your social media um, and just comment done when you have done that. But let's wait. Don't share it until we get the audio fixed. 
we're excited to find out all about these rulers. Um, the, the Creative Grid company is part of the Gypsy Quilter. I don't know if you remember. Um, I don't know if it was March or February that we had. It was last month. Yeah. Where we had the Gypsy Quilter show all of their products. Um, we were happy with how that turned out. They um, have so many cool things for quilters. And we are back with Chessa. Let's see how that is. Is there still an echo? Yeah. You know, the cool thing is that um, everybody loves Chessa. Now we get two or three or four of you. <laughs> <laughs> is it yours? I'm going to turn yours off. So that, we'll get this fixed here shortly. So oh, sorry, guys. You know, we always love the the fun world of virtual land. And, um, no, but you, no, I'm getting Use a, a program to stream all of this together so it doesn't matter where our guests are coming from. And um, sometimes, you know, there's uh, an extra microphone on or um, the sound is coming from two spots in one location that could cause this to happen. And so I think we're getting, thank you, Tracy Edwards for sharing and Patricia Morgan and Rainy Brown and everybody, thank you for sharing. We have, um, looks like over 300 people right now. It keeps growing with how many people are watching us. We have people watching on Facebook and on YouTube and Twitch. Um, and they all just compile into our screen here. Um, so we can see comments from everywhere. Not a one is missed from any of you. And we thank you for putting up with our little technical difficulty. Um, I'm, I'm echoing now, I think. No, it's coming through on me, unfortunately. Okay. Can you guys hear me OK? Yep, that Says sounds great. Has muted your mic. Yeah, so you you should be good. I kept, I kept muting you, unfortunately, because it was uh, it just kept back over. So we're good now. I have you on the the camera in front of you. Is it okay? That's a couple of questions that I have to ask them. I'm gonna. If you guys have questions, just now is a good time to ponder. Hmm, what would be a good question to ask once Can we I get this going? You know what question I'm going to ask here? I'm going to ask how long has Creative Grid been around? Is that a good question? That's a good question. Maybe I should write it down so we can, so I don't forget at the end. Um, is, it, is it because they're having too many uh, open of the video source chair, do you think? Yeah. It's, maybe they should only have one video source open, one, one speaker, right, chair? Here's our. So our I just, I'm going to just remove them right now so they can run around and get that sorted. And... So, Jer is our DJ on this side of things. And it's kind of amazing that um, I guess you have to be a, a young whippersnapper to <laughs> know how to, to run all this. And just so everybody knows, um, there was a poll done, and 94% of the people said Jer is cute as a button. So Darren, how about you tell everyone about how we got started in a business, like what, how this came to be? Well, it happened a long time ago where Jared's papa, my dad, was they, he immigrated to New York from Ireland, and he started working right away at the Natural History Museum there in New York City. And met my mom, who also immigrated from Ireland at an Irish dance. And my dad, walking down the street one day, saw a sign that said, help wanted. And he was intrigued, so he went to see what it was. And it was the Singer Sewing Machine Company looking for help. And he said, I am here to sign up to be a technician for the sewing machine repair. and um, they said, I don't think you'll be a technician, you'll be a salesperson. So my dad became a singer sewing machine salesman. Um, I think it was more than 20 years ago now. It's been a long time, in the 60s. Um, we, 
transferred from New York to Arizona in 1973 when I was eight months old. And um, my dad worked for Singer in the malls, Chris Down Mall, I believe, Maryville. I think it was Maryville Mall um, back when the malls had Singer stores in them with a little bit of fabric in that. And then in 1977, we opened our first Singer Sewing Center in Tempe, Arizona, and um, quickly grew to eight stores in strip malls all over Arizona. Fun fact. Fun fact, yes. That Tempe store is actually where I was raised, in a yeah. box. Oh, that's right. Yep, my, my parents would drop me off, and my grandma would throw me in a box. And Whenever we had a sewing machine cabinet come in, and the box was huge, it was like a, a condominium for a little one like you. Yeah, my grandma would just give me a couple packs of needles to play with. And... What? <laughs> you know, my first job with our family business was my parents had a, a bin box full of bobbins. And my job was to take all of the thread off of those bobbins. And I got so good at removing thread from hundreds of bobbins, I would put eight or ten on a screwdriver and turn on the vacuum. The vacuum would suck all the thread off, off all the bobbins. We have a picture somewhere floating around that shows our Tempe store where we every machine was in a flatbed sewing cabinet. They were all pretty much flatbed sewing machines. It was before the craze of free arm sewing machines came out. And I think we're almost ready for Creative Grids, but um, in, about 15 years ago, we changed the name to Mole Queen Sewing Center, as you can see behind me. Um, we have only three locations compared to eight, but they are in freestanding buildings big enough to house anywhere from 6,000 to over 10,000 bolts of fabric. And um, as on our, our new intro video that Jer's friend Jer made, it shows that we have online fabric for $4.95 a yard. And that's where it starts. And then in store, our fabric starts at $6.95. So it's pretty crazy what we've become into, what everything's turned into. Yes, Jer. You want me to bring them back on, see if we're good to go? Yes. So okay. without further ado, we have Chessa. Did we fix it? Yep, you you're sure good to did. Go. Yes. Yay. Cindy, can we're you just so turn it a little bit so I can hear them a little bit better? Sure can. So Chessa, I am going to gracefully bow out here on our side. and I appreciate gonna... all your patience. <laughs> oh, no problem. This type of stuff happens, and we're just so excited to have you here. So it, every, anything, nothing matters. Everything is good. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. Sorry about all that love-hate relationship with technology. So my name is Chessa. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about some Creative Grids rulers and show you the patterns that are made with them. I also have Cam and Penny on the sides here that are Creative Grid experts that will help answer any questions that anybody might have. So without further ado, let's get started. Everyday quilts are literally that. They're the quilts that your family cuddle and love every day. These are the ones that get used and abused and instill the recipients with a love of quilts. When they get dirty, just throw them in the washer and dryer. There's no mess, there's no fuss. And I know some of you are already panicking. She said to do what? But if you ask around, historically with this amount of wear and tear, the quilts are gonna last about 15 years. And I think that's pretty good. This trunk sew specifically features mostly scrap quilts using cut loose press patterns. These are reasonably priced two-sided patterns that showcase notions such as the Creative Grids tools and Gypsy Quilter notions. Since these are scrap quilts, the only monetary investment is your batting and your backing, plus any machine quilting if you quilt with your checkbook. And since the time invested in creating the top is pretty minimal, it doesn't matter if someone spills a drink on it, or the dog decides to claim it, or in my case, my cats love getting all up in there. So I'm going to get started with this double four patch throw that is behind me on the left. This can be made in just an afternoon. It features 
large strip piece blocks with no sashing or borders. What could be easier? Just sew a five inch strip to a two and a half inch strip and then subcut the strip set into units. The geometric look and generous size at 52 by 78 inches makes it a great quilt for your loved ones to cuddle up in. And all you need are your favorite rectangle ruler. But now it's time for a top tip. I love Creative Bridge rulers because they have a grip on the back so that they stay in place when you're cutting. Can you hear that? They're also very easy to read and they have the best variety. For instance, we have rectangle rulers in 24 different sizes. A one by six inch all the way to this whopping 12 and a half by 24 and a half inch. And we call this one the big easy. It is the largest on the market. Also, make sure you check out the Creative Grids wish list to see all of the available options. If you download it from Creative Grids USA, you're able to check them off because it's interactive. I know Darren also has them on his website. There is this little downloadable form. It's going to go through the quilts I'm talking about, the notions that go along with them, and some other, you know, gypsy quilts or tools that might help you. And in the back, it also includes the wish list. So if you prefer a physical version, you can download that and print it out, or just keep it saved to your computer so that you can mark it up anytime you get a new tool. But the big question is, how do you choose? Consider the size of your mat and your workspace. If you're looking for a small mat that will sit by your machine for paper piecing, this six by eight inch size is the perfect choice. The blank side is perfect for paper piecing, or you can use the grid side to sub cut blocks. But say you're going to a class or a retreat where your space is kind of limited. A 12 by 18 inch mat with a 12 and a half inch ruler length fits perfectly in a suitcase and it's easier to transport. If your cutting mat is 18 by 24 inches, why not consider an 18 and a half inch length? The shorter length is easier to manipulate, it spans the cutting mat, and it's long enough to cut fat quarters, and it's more affordable. If you travel and sew, remember that kitchen counters are about 21 inches deep, so this would be a great combo. Also. Consider your height. Are you tall enough to apply pressure the entire length of a 24 and a half inch ruler? If you're vertically challenged, like me, a shorter length might be a better choice to ensure accurate and clean cuts. But if you have the 24 by 36 inch mat, this 24 and a half inch ruler length is a great choice. But what about the mat? I love the Creative Grids self-healing cutting mats, and I actually have them in all four of the sizes that I just showed you. All but the baby one are printed on both sides. One side features one inch grids with eighth inch markings over the entire surface. Creative Grids mats are known for their accuracy, but of course, if you would like to double check, place your Creative Grid rulers on your mat. If the markings align, which they will, feel free to cut using the markings on the mat as well as the markings on the ruler. The numbers are printed outside of the grid area, so they're always visible. And the popular one and a half inch cuts are highlighted with white stars, and the two and a half inch cuts have white squares, so there's no math required. And then the eighth, quarter, and third yard cuts are marked with solid lines for easy reference. The other side is designed to use with the Creative Grid Stripology series by Gudrun Erla. 
you simply line up the fabric and the ruler on the half inch horizontal grid lines. And since the stripology series are slotted, the additional markings aren't needed. But just a reminder, always use both hands when handling the Stripology XL ruler. It's really big. How many times have you worn grooves into one side of the mat while the other is in pristine condition? You can simply extend the life of your mat by squaring up blocks using trim tools, trimming while paper piecing, and so on, on the side you use least often. And as you can see, the mats are gray with turquoise lines for a reason. Black and white ruler markings show up beautifully on these colors. Do not choose a mat with black and white markings. They're just gonna interfere with the marks on most of the Creative Grids rulers. So, now that you have the right tools, let's check out Sonoma. This 52 by 72 inch quilt behind me in the middle looks like it was made with the jelly roll, but it is actually made with huge half square triangles created with 10 inch squares or layer cakes. The half square triangles are subcut into strips, so the angle piecing is already done. All you need is 30 10 inch squares and a background fabric. I use the Creative Grids 15 inch seam guide tool, which is long enough to span and mark the diagonal of a 10 inch block. You can either mark through the slotted center with any mechanical pencil and then sew a quarter inch on each side, or you can mark the sewing line by drawing on both outside edges. And it comes in a nine inch length, which spans the diagonal of a six and a half inch square. So, let me show you the pattern. The picture on the pattern actually shows a quilt with each medallion made from the same fabric. But since each medallion requires two 10 inch squares and not all layer cakes have duplicates, this sample is actually made with 30 totally different squares, which makes it a great scrap quilt. This would also make a fun graduation quilt done in school colors. I'm thinking scarlet and gray with a block O applicate over the center medallion. Go Bucks! We are located in Ohio after all, like Darren told you. And once again, you can finish it in as simple as a day. The Creative Grids 2.5 by 12.5 inch rectangle is my preferred choice for subcutting. There is a dash line at the quarter inch running the length of the ruler, which means if I place this dash line on the outside edge of a half square triangle block, the units will measure two and a quarter, so there's no math required. To make it even more mindless, you can attach these stickers by GE Designs. They are repositionable and can be used over and over again. I usually cut my binding strips at two and a quarter, so I use that line to cut those as well. Again, there's no math. And an added bonus, the Creative Grids mini log cabin and mini pineapple tool use one and a quarter inch strips. Place the white vertical line on the outside edge of a jelly roll to cut them in half vertically. In a matter of minutes, you'll have enough strips to piece over 50 mini blocks. And again, I use those stickers just so a little extra reminder of where I'm lining them up. Since these tools have you cut the strips wider than needed and trim after sewing and pressing, they don't have to be exact. Don't you just love fudge factors? So now it's time for another top tip. Creative Grids offers 15 different sizes of squares from the cute itty bitty two and a half to this 20 and a half inch. They all have the diagonal line, perfect for squaring up half square triangles. If you wanna square up blocks with whole inches, you're gonna use this corner of the ruler, half inches, 
you're going to use this side. For this Sonoma, for this Sonoma quilt, you need a creative grid square that is at least 10 inches to cut the square up, to cut and square up the half square triangles. So next up, we're going to talk about a t-shirt quilt. And t-shirt quilts, quilts are the ultimate scrap quilt. They're just cutting up their clothes. So the cut loose press pattern explains the entire process and how to stabilize it to help stabilize the t-shirts. And it tells you how to add different widths of sashing to each block so that they all finish the same size. For example, you can see this sashing is quite a bit larger than this one so that they finish at the same size. The t-shirts are stabilized with quilt tee fusible before they are trimmed to size. So that eliminates the stretch and rolling that occurs when working with knit fabrics. It will also stabilize sweatshirts, football jerseys, so feel free to combine them in the same quilt. Once everything is stabilized, they can be successfully combined with cotton fabrics. Since this is a fusible product, you may want to invest in a pressing sheet, a silicone sheet that protects your ironing surface. The blocks in this quilt finished a 14 and a half, so I use the 17 by 24 inch Gypsy Quilter Applefuse mat. As you can see, they come in different sizes because obviously this one isn't as big as I just said, but it was easier to show you guys. And the 14 inch Creative Grids squared up and fussy cut ruler is recommended for cutting out the stabilized t-shirts as well as trimming the sash blocks. This tool is marked with concentric squares with horizontal, vertical, and diagonal markings to help you center the t-shirt design. And holes are drilled a quarter inch away from each corner so you can mark the fabric and add the seam allowance. This series of rulers is available in five sizes, ranging from six and a half to a 14 and a half, which is the one I'm showing you today. And you machine embroiderers will love this since it's the perfect choice for trimming embroidered designs. Now I'm going to show you the quilt in full here with some help of Penny so you can get a better idea. So again, you can see where there was sashing added to help square everything up so that it all is nice and aligned. So any questions? Yep. Do we have any questions so far, Cindy? Um, we do have one. They wanted to know what the diagonal mat, the diagonal lines on the mat are used for. To cut 45 and 60 degree angles. I have the smaller mat. I can show it a little bit better. So you have your 45 and 60 degree angles. So now let's talk about Scrappy. This four patch bow tie quilt has over 300 fabrics in it. But since it's a controlled scrap quilt, it works. Controlled scrap quilts utilize similar fabrics, in this case, country colors. So it's a little bit easier on your eyes. There are no brights, there's no metallics or juvenile prints in this one. The entire quilt is actually made with four patches. Five inch squares are cut, sewn, then cut in half with that Creative Grids two and a half inch ruler we talked about earlier. And there is the technique explained in the pattern. The center square, which I kind of have covered up with the ruler, but the center square is made with the Gypsy Quilter freezer paper. And it is a great choice because it comes in eight and a half by 11 inch sheets. So it can be run through your home printer and it eliminates all that tracing. 
but it does also come in a larger size if you need it. The bow ties are trimmed to three and a half inches after they are appliqued by hand or machine, and then the freezer paper is removed. The Creative Grits three and a half inch by six and a half inch is a great choice. You just place the white line that's on the ruler on the center seam line, and then you just trim. So now let's give you a better look at the bow ties quilt in full. So now it's time for another top tip. Instead of using a square when trimming small blocks, use a rectangle. You have that extra space, so it's going to keep your fingers away from your rotary blade, which we've all been there. We kind of need that. It's, it's a good thing. So then our rectangles actually come in one and a half through 12 and a half inches in widths. Those are the most often cut square sizes. So we had you guys in mind. Parts on the half square is to my right here. And this one is 75 by 91 inches. And it's created using a half square triangle method that is included in the instructions for the Creative Grids 4-in-1 half square triangle tool. Using this technique, eight half square triangles can be created from a set of 10 inch squares. The diagonal lines were drawn with that 15 inch seam guide that we used in the Sonoma quilt that I showed you earlier. Don't you just love it when a tool becomes a go-to? And a silver, silver clover chalker liner is a great marking tool because it makes a very fine line that washes right out and it shows up on both dark and light fabrics. Once again, the hearts are created using a freezer paper applique technique and once the hearts are appliqued, the fabric is carefully trimmed a quarter inch inside the applique heart so that the darker four patch fabric does not shadow through the lighter heart fabric. Then you just simply dip the black in water to dissolve the glue and remove the freezer paper. Plus, if additional hearts are needed, the border is wide enough to accommodate them. Now it's time for another top tip. If you want to turn this into an autograph quilt, you have two options. You can turn the fabric over the freezer paper hearts and have the guests sign the hearts before they're attached to the quilt. The freezer paper stabilizes the fabric so guests can write and sign it just like a piece of paper. I personally prefer a number eight Pigma pen. Or your other option is you can totally finish the quilt, including the quilting. The freezer paper will have been removed, but they can still sign it. But keep this in mind, if someone makes a mistake, there's no correcting it now. It's just going to become a part of the story. Now this one is Charmed Hearts. This pattern was written for charms, but it was actually created with the pieces trimmed away from this pattern right there, we were just talking about the hearts on the half square. So again, remember, we talked about trimming out a quarter inch, and this is what you're left with. This cute, adorable, ready to go heart. So then we just took it and used it to make this one, which could be a great wall hang to display with this quilt since they coordinate over my favorite, a baby quilt. And if you like both quilts, it's the ultimate scrap quilt. You're using scraps that are already pieced. Next up is Sparkler. This is the perfect baby quilt at 36 inches square. The backing does not have to be pieced and it takes a one and a quarter yards of fabric right off the bolt. This quilt is made with the Scrap Crazy 6 template set, which consists of four templates with pre-engineered corners, so all the pieces line up when you're sewing. And all the pieces for a block can be cut from a 10 inch square, 
So it's a great way to use up those leftover layer cakes. And simply by cutting template B from all the same fabric, you get a secondary pinwheel. You could do the same with template D, which is smaller, and then you're getting a smaller pinwheel. And those secondary designs hide the individual blocks, so it looks like you worked really hard, but you didn't have to. Once again, no sashing and mortars, which require yardage, and it goes together in just an afternoon. Do we have any more questions, Cindy? Not yet. We're just getting a ton of comments that they love the quilts. Awesome. So this quilt was made with scraps of Paula Nadelstern's fabric, which gives it a more sophisticated look. She is known for her kaleidoscope type prints and stripes. Since this block is a crazy quilt, you don't have to worry about cutting them all out so that the prints are perfectly square. So it's a great way to use up your scraps of stripes and plaids. The pattern includes instructions for cutting the individual templates from strip sets, so it's a great resource if you decide to increase or decrease the size of the quilt. Time for another top tip. There are actually three versions of these template sets. The other two are the Scrap Crazy 8 and the Scrap Crazier 8, and they both make 8 inch finished blocks. The template shapes in each are completely different. For a scrappier look, you can combine blocks created with both template sets. Since these templates fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, all of the pieces must be cut with the fabric right side up. If you cut out those pieces from a folded piece of fabric, you will have a mirror image piece that won't work in your jigsaw puzzle. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> now this one, Lightning Flash, is a true scrap quilt. It uses over 100 different fabrics. The pieces were cut from leftover 5 inch squares with one of my favorite tools. The Creative Grid Straight Out of Line Ruler. This tool cuts squares from 4 to 10 inches in every half inch in between. Once again, all of the squares must be cut with the fabric right side up so that the angles fit back together to create the square. When you cut the squares in half, both halves are the exact same size. But since you're only sewing one seam with these angled units, the sewn blocks will be a rectangle. And by adding that strip of cheddar, the block can be trimmed into a square. And since they're trimmed a size after sewing that angled seam, you have a half inch budge factor. So perfect isn't required. And since none of the angled seams line up with each other in the finished quilt, the blocks don't have to be trimmed perfectly and there is less bulk. And there's a top tip that goes along with this. The blocks were trimmed with the Creative Grids four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangle. If you work a lot with five inch charms, you will love this tool. Since it's four and a half inches wide, it is the perfect size to square up half square triangles made with those five inch charms. It's easy to manipulate and it fits inside an eight and a half by 11 inch notebook. But if a total scrappy quilt like Lightning Flash is just too much for your eyes to handle, check out Paddle Wheel. 
the five inch squares for this quilt were cut out at the exact same time as Lightning Flash. But by using the same background fabric for each block, it tones the look of the entire quilt down. Now if you cut those five inch squares horizontally and vertically and sew those pieces into a four patch, you get an entirely different look that gives the illusion of curves. The center seams are perfect right angles, so they go together easily. None of the angle seams match from block to block, so there's a built-in fudge factor. How many times do we have to say it? We love built-in fudge factors. We're not perfect, I'm certainly not. So now let's show you this one. Chessa? Yes. Someone would like to know if the either that quilt or the quilt you showed prior would work with layer cakes. Yeah, you could because a layer cake can be four or five inch squares. And so you could just take your layer cakes, cut them into the five inch squares, you would get for every five inch square, you get one block. So you can so do a charm pack. Easily, around. yeah. Out of a out of a layer cake pack, you would have enough to do 160 blocks. 160 blocks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, for more information on any of the Creative Grids tools, visit the Creative Grids USA website. This website has videos for the tools, and if you lose your instructions, you can find a copy there as well. The patterns and books that support each Creative Grids project, product are shown, but make sure you check back often because we add new patterns regularly. Just call the store and ask them to order your favorites. Also, make sure you follow and like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram to stay up to date with the newest products. That's it for now. Are there any other questions? Yes, a customer would like a recommendation for patterns for beginners. This four patch is one of the first quilts I ever did when I started. I made it for my brother and my sister-in-law for their wedding and housewarming present, and I think it is a great beginner because again you got those two and a half inch strips with those five and a half inch strips and it just it you make a bunch of those and they just all go together and it was so quick and I mean I learned a lot and it, like I said it came together so quick and it for me it was one of the perfect ones to begin with when I was learning all of everything so again that's the double four patch throw that's right here that's going to be on the first page of the sheet that Darren has for you guys. T-shirt quilts are also a great beginner quilt. It's how I've sucked a lot of my friends into quilting because their kids are graduating. They wanted a t-shirt quilt. And uh, so they can iron and press. And then once you show them how to trim down the blocks, they get used to rotary cutting. And pretty soon you've got a quilter. So that's a good uh, solution too. A lot of the cut loose press are simple patterns. There's um, almost 400 of them now. And since they just fit on two sides of one sheet, they are pretty simple. So those, almost all of them are good for beginners. Mm -hmm. The Sonoma is a good beginner one. Yeah, I love that. Nothing we showed you was hard today. They're all yeah. pretty simple. And there is a video on Sonoma too. Yes, I had a A YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And the, the oh, patterns, we you only saw quilts today, but we have minis, we have table runners, we have king size ones. So for any size you're looking to do as well, Cutlass Press has those patterns. What was the name of the larger scrap ruler? Uh, Crazier 8 or Scrap Crazy 8. So like we talked about, they're, they both finish at 8 inches, but if you can see this one has five pieces, and this one only has three. But one of those pieces you subcut, so it makes four pieces in the finished block. Learning so much today. Yeah. Can you open those up so they can see that the instructions are very there concise? There are step-by-step -step instructions to walk you through every single step. And actually, Crazier 8 comes with a free pattern, so it's a great way to test it out. They think that one in the middle, Sonoma, is a table runner. Can you um, open the bottom a little bit to show them that it's a quilt? 
Yeah, and it's actually, how big is that? Well, 52 by uh, 70-something. It's a nice size throw. It's 52 by 72. So it's actually that three times across in the pattern. We tried to make it nice and snug so that we didn't have any shadowing going on. Yeah, we go three across. And then you could applique something where these pretty machine quilting designs are too if you wanted. Do the, car, the patterns come as a set or individually? They come individually, but again, they're the two-sided. In the ones that have like the applique, it comes with it right on the back there. So front and back. And they're reasonably priced, so very affordable. Yes. Penny Cam, I think this would be a good question for you guys. The question is the 8 by 20 per, 8 by 24 inch ruler slips when she is cutting with it. And here is a big one here I can show you. Um, you know, when you're working with a larger piece of acrylic like this, when you're cutting, as you're cutting, walk your fingers up so you're putting pressure right on the edges you're cutting. Because if you put pressure right here, it may slip because you don't have enough um, pressure on the ruler to make the grip um, work as well, yeah, to activate the grip. So if I'm moving my hand up as I'm cutting, um, you shouldn't have that issue. Another good thing is uh, Gypsy Quilter makes the handles that fit on here. Yes, I and that I applies easy, that applies even pressure to the whole tool. And so that makes it easier too to control it and manipulate it and move it around. And I actually have oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, see. So this and uh, this has um, plastic on it now, so I'm not sure if it'll work, but see this clip here? That makes the suction cups work. And then I can put my hand on the whole thing and it'll move. Yeah, this one's not wrapped, so yeah. do it on this one. So you just line it up, you push your levels down, and it's, now like this table is a little bit high, you wouldn't really cut on a table as high. Right, so, especially if you're short. Yeah, like I'd have to go on my tippy toes to reach this, and that's not safe. So that's the But with this too, it's keeping your fingers out of the way of the blade, so it makes it safer too. Yeah. And see, by she's putting her whole hand on it like this, so you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it, but it, it keeps the ruler in place. So if you're having problems with slipping, and I am too, the more I age, you know, the um, I don't have as much strength in my uh -huh. hands, so that works great. Any other questions? They want to know the names of the heart patterns. Um, hearts on the half square is this one, and charmed hearts is the little one. That is made from the cutouts of the bigger hearts in this one. Yeah. So and in the double four patch throw, they want to know how many fabrics are in there. Uh, I, I think it's 18 fat quarters. That sounds right. Because um, I used 18 fat quarters. I used my leftovers to make a matching pillow. Yeah. And I personally always get a little bit more fabric than is required because we all make mistakes. If the ruler slipped, it's good just to have the extra. Because then, like, I just ended up making a matching pillow, which was another CLP pattern that I used, another cut loose press pillow pattern. And if we can hold this one up too, a lot of times when I have scraps, instead of buying additional fabric for binding, I don't know if any of you noticed on this, but see, this is a scrappy binding. I took all of my country prints and just connected them and made the binding. So it always doesn't have to be one fabric, especially when you're doing a scrap quilt. You wouldn't even know. They all match so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was free. And it was free. What gets better than that? <laughs> I bought that fabric at one point, but hey. <laughs> when it's out of your stash, it's free. <laughs> Makes room for more fabric. That's right. <laughs> uh, they're curious of what our website is. It is www dot creative grids usa you got to put that usa on the end there dot com 
Is there any specific interfacing to use with the cotton lycra or t-shirt material? Uh, you need, it's a nylon trico, so it's easy knit if you are buying uh, the Pelon version, Bosal has a version too, and Gypsy Quilter has the um, t-shirt, well, yeah, the quilty fuse. Yeah. But it's a very lightweight. There are other companies that have them out, but it makes the t-shirts very stiff. You don't want that. You want the nylon trico, they use a lingerie too, so it's a very lightweight. You can't even tell it's in the quilt. How many rulers do we have? Ooh. About 140. About 140. A lot. For all sorts of things, you've got the basic rectangles and squares that we showed you today. There are specialty ones to make your log cabins, your pineapple. All the triangles. All the triangles. There. So you can see them all on the wish list. They are organized by category, actually. So we got the strip rulers, the specialty rulers, machine quilting, all sorts of good stuff. What does the duo mean on the log cabin rulers? It's only on the one. The log cabin duo is on the 12 inch because you can it's either, 10 inch. Huh? 10 inch. It's on that 10 inch. Oh, well, the log cabin 12 inch has it too because you can do a 6 and a 12 inch block. It doesn't that. say duo though, I don't think. Well, go ahead. We'll yeah. Talk about more. Well, on the log cabins, we have a 12 inch that will do um, a, either a 6 inch block or a 12 inch block. And on the 10 inch log cabin, you can do um, 10 inch blocks, but you could stop and do, you know, four, six, eight, and 10. On that one, you have an option of doing half inch logs or one inch logs or a combination of both. Yeah, so the, the smaller ones we call skinny, skinny log cabins. And the patterns always uh, call that out and tell you exactly which features you're using on the ruler. Mm -hmm. But it's a good bang for your buck because you're getting the option to make multiple by just simply having one ruler. Yeah. Can you tell them where they can download the wish list? Uh, yes. If you go to creativegridsusa.com and you scroll to the footer of the page, it will tell you there's a product listing and you can click on that and it'll bring up the PDF, which in, if you're on your computer, probably the top right corner, you'll have the option to download it. Um, but when you open it up in that view, that just by clicking on it, it's interactive. So you can check off the ones that you already have actually and then download it. Tina is looking for the Creative Grid ruler that has the holes so you can form a circle. Any suggestion? Uh, that's that's the six. It's MT1 and MT5, right? That yeah. has the circle. So it would, oh, yeah. It's uh, the quick trim ruler, and there's two sizes. One is three and a half by 12 and a half inches. They were designed by here in Montgomery, and the other one is MT5. Is, and that's four and a half by 24 and a half, right? Yeah. And they have holes drilled down the middle so you can use it like a compass and draw circles to make like tree skirts or napkins or something like that. And I'm sure if Darren doesn't have it, he will buy it right now for you. Yes. <laughs> what was the ruler called that was used for the second to last quilt? Um, okay, it would be the straight, out of, the straight out of line. It's the straight out of line no. tool and that is item number CGRKA3. So this one that has options to make for four to 10 inch with every half inch in between. And why don't we show them that quilt again? This one's called Lightning Flash. Do you have rulers for long arbors? Yes. Angela Walters has designed uh, nine different tools for us. And they're all available and she has videos to support all of them. Are there conversion charts if you want to make queen size or king sized quilts? It would be up to the individual pattern. Some patterns have it available in different sizes and tell you how many blocks and yardage requirements. They all don't because it takes a lot of math and a lot of figuring. So uh, look at the individual patterns to see. Or go to your local quilt shop because that's what they're there for. They can help you. Can you show the patterns again? They're a little bit out of order now, but here I'll show it to you. Again. So this one was Sonoma. So again, just front and back, you can see how it shows you to put the black together. 
if that was this one here in the middle. The t-shirt quilt, again, you're just cutting up their clothes. You pretty much already have the fabric that you need, so that's awesome. You're not spending really anything. And by the way, when you're doing t-shirt quilts, I always see mothers and they cringe because the t-shirts have paint all over them or they're worn out. Those are their favorite memories. Use those quilts because you're putting stabilizer behind it. It doesn't matter if it had little holes or something because they tore it when they were, you know, making... It's the memory. Yeah, it's a house, you know, for humanity or whatever. doesn't matter. The four patch bow ties. Again, perfect example. On the back, it's showing you how the blocks are made. It walks you through it step by step, and if it's a certain instruction that's in the instructions for the ruler itself, and you have lost those instructions, those are available on the Creative Bridge USA website too, just a reminder about that, because I've lost my instructions. And there's the two that go with the Scrap Crazy Six. Oh, that Scrap Crazy we were talking about. You have sparklers. This one is that 36 inch square, which would be a great baby quilt. And then the Go Crazy, which is great for using your plaids and your flannels. And then here are the two flats. And then you got Lightning Flash and Paddle Wheel. Again, I'm going to reference the sheet that Darren has on their website. It has everything I talked about today, plus some companions that we think are great, like those stickers we were talking about. So everything for reference in case you forget, it's all right here and Darren has that for you guys. Jessica, can you tell them about the Feathers Crest website too? That they can go and look at all 396 patterns and Darren can order whatever they want. Yeah, so if you go to www, w, three w's there, <laughs> cutloosepress.com, you can Sort newest to oldest. If you already know Cut Loose Press, you know something new just came out. You can sort by the designer. And it has all the information there as well about what the size is, what ruler is required. Just so you know what you're getting into before you really buy it and have or have dare and get it. And then you get it from him. Um, same thing on our social media, our Facebook and our, our Instagram. Uh, we'll go a little bit more into depth about Nightem and have some good tips on the descriptions for just some suggestions. What batting do you use? Um, I use batting by the bolts because I helped develop it. It's a cotton batting that comes on rolls for the stores that is 60 inches wide. So it works for almost all of these throws. And if I'm doing a throw, I design it around that. Because uh, you used to have to buy like a batting that was 90 inches wide and then you wasted 30 inches of it mm -hmm. on every quilt. So the batting by the bolt is more affordable. It comes on a 15 yard bolt to the shops. It's 100% cotton and it's like warm and natural, but it's in a more usable, friendly size. Mm -hmm. When you buy your rulers, does it come with pattern ideas? There are a couple, like the one Crazy or Eight that I was talking about that does include a free pattern, but they do not all come with that. No, most of them do not, but there are cut loose products cut loose press patterns that are less than $4 that usually support all the rulers. Uh, when we come out with a new ruler, we make sure there are patterns and companions to support it. Yeah, they're, they're patterns, they're, they're ready to go when the ruler is released so you're not waiting to buy anything. Does Creative Grids have a ruler storage product? Uh, we have a, uh, it's not by Creative Grids, but we do have the ruler safe that is a metal box that you can store uh, multiple rulers in. Yeah, there's rectangle and squares. Yeah. Different sizes. And um, I actually, for the specialty tools, I have a file cabinet in my sewing room with the Pendaflex fold, you know, uh, file folders. Mm -hmm. And so I put the instructions in there, the cut loose press will fit in there. And if it's a ruler that's under nine by 12, I just hang them in there and put the specialty tool right in that folder. So I always have everything together for that particular mm -hmm. ruler because I don't have to have them out on my cutting counter. They're just taking up space unless I'm working on a specific quilt. Oh, she looks me. Okay. <laughs> but there's no questions left, <laughs> right? Did we answer all your questions? Somebody asked who she was talking to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so so yeah, I'm Penny. Yeah, I'm Penny with the yeah, double pair of eyes. So <laughs> yeah, does anybody else have any questions? For the storage, I actually have a shelf. Mm -hmm. And I just do them from biggest to smallest because 
I want yeah, I want to see them. I want to see my money all day. You want to separate them a little bit because you don't want the grip right yeah to be right on top of each other to you know that scratches them. So that's why the ones I don't use all of the time mm -hmm. that I put um, in the Pendaflex folders, and that works great for me. Yeah, it keeps them protected. That's good. This is your opportunity. We can probably answer any question you have. So go for it, ladies. Try us. Yeah. We'll yeah, try Sandy. Like, wasn't there a game where you used to stump the yeah, stump the host? <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, and lovely Jim McDonald actually bought brought us a roller safe to show. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Which means he's actually watching us now. Can you repeat the Cut Loose Press uh, website, please? Yes. The Cut Loose Cut Loose Press website, and maybe Darren can flash it on the bottom of the screen for you guys is www.cutloosepress, just one word, dot com. And here is one of the ruler safes that we talk about. They're great when you're traveling and going to retreats and things. And they come in squares and rectangles. And a variety of colors, too. You can get pink, purple, yeah. both gold. But it has this foam lining to it, so it helps protect the rulers and, and Velcro. And this will hold a surprising amount of rulers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty big. It'll hold close to your biggest square. Yeah, this I think it does that. Cam, does this do up to 16 and a half inch squares? Or yeah, we've got half? rectangle and we've got square in yeah. that. And we it will do, um, I think you're right, I think it is 16 and a half is the largest square you can Yeah, have. so the only one that won't work are the 18 and 20, you know, to put in this ruler safe to carry the class. But usually if you're going someplace like that or a retreat, you're not going to take those big rulers because you're not going to have space to no, use them yeah. anyway. But look how fashionable you could be. Oh, yeah, so fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> but like we talked about, the smaller 12 by 8, 12 by 18 inch mat, that would go great in your suitcase. So that's yeah. also a good way to store it, just pad it up some. Yeah. And I have those in the bottom of my suitcase. I have a mat and the rulers and stuff in the bottom of my suitcase. Judy would like to know if you ladies own all the rulers. Uh, I don't own, I'm actually on the design team, so I don't own all of them. Uh, but I own probably 70 or 80 of them. I don't need, for instance, all the different sizes of rectangles and squares. But um, I have a lot of them. And I test the rulers too. Kim and I test all the rulers as they're being made and designed, etc. So I have a lot of the prototypes. But yeah. And I get to have fun with them when they're done. I probably have gotten up close to 40 now. Yeah. And we have them. She works here and so in the office they're available so that um, you know they can learn and use them too. But um, almost, I have almost every specialty ruler and every triangle in the different, you know, we have them from... Uh, 10 inch, 15 inch, 22 and a half inch, etc. for the triangles and I have all of those different angles too. Some of them come in different lengths so I may not have every length but I have every angle. There's a lot. They want to know where to find the videos. So Creative Grids has, Creative Grids USA has a YouTube channel where we post uh, all the videos. Um, they're also available on the creativegridsusa.com website. If you find the ruler that you are wanting to see a video for, under the big image there are like those thumbnails and you'll be able to click on the video there and it'll open up into the screen and then you'll be able to watch it. Some have a couple, some have one or two, but there's a couple different places you can get them. I always tell people too to search for the ruler on the YouTube channel, not just by Creative Grids, because we do videos on them on how to use it, but there are other people that use our rulers too and post videos. And so the information you may want may be better in theirs or they did it with a particular pattern that you're working on. So watch them all because we all have a different angle and a different way that we use them. Harriet didn't get the name of the website, so I will repeat both of them. The Cut Loose Press Patterns. You are going to go to look at them and see the sizes and everything to www.cutloosepress.com. And then Creative Grids, you're going to go www.creativegridsusa, that USA is important, .com. Can the batting be used for microwavable items? It can't have any uh, scrim on it or coating, and so you have to have special batting for that. It has to be just 100% natural. It'll say it on the product. We have, um, Gypsy Quilter has bowl Bulls cozies and things, and issues. that batting has been specifically approved to be used in a microwave. I would hesitate just getting something off the shelf 
and um, it's because you don't know yeah, yeah. if they've added chemicals to it or something to needle punch it. And remember to use 100% cotton thread when yes. you're doing that. Yes, yeah, because it could melt. And cotton fabric. A watcher's current ruler is easy to slice with a rotary cutter. Are the cut um, <laughs> the CGR rulers able to withstand the cutters without being sliced? And you can, I'm not going to say you can't ever nick them because we have had people that just rammed it right into the side. Um, but with general use, ours are not going to do that. There are different qualities of acrylic and we use the best quality available. So, you know, and not everything... Specific. Yes, not everything is created, not all acrylic is created equal, and uh, so, you know, some is better than others, and we use the best quality we can. Anything else, guys? Nancy, right. it is cutloosepress.com, with no spaces, www.cut loosepress.com you guys that was wonderful to see all of your samples and um thank you for for doing that i think that there probably will still be a few more questions i have a question for you what's up um i was wondering how long has creative grids been around oh since the 90s was, about probably 1990. Do I stump the? Uh, the a second to think. You won't yeah, stop. it okay. was originally oh, it. started by a woman in the United Kingdom, and oh. um, and then we uh, got in partnership with them. So it's probably been about thirty years now. Oh wow, that's kind of interesting to know that you have over one hundred and fifty rulers. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and we're not Irish, and our grandfather didn't start it, but we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my brother Ken, um, he he rapidly put them all on our website, um, just so that Thank everybody you, knows that they're <laughs> yep they're in different categories to try to break it down. They put videos on there and um, as much useful information for anybody yet. Just so you know and that you are all... uh, willing to order anything they want. If they see it on the wish list or something, you'll get it in for them, right? Yes. Yep. I'm pretty <laughs> much. I'm <laughs> Nothing like putting sure. you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> will <laughs> order anything you want. <laughs> yes. Yep. And any of them. I, I thought he had put them all on there. So hopefully they're all at, all on our website, moldqueen.com. Every um, product that you guys have on the wish list is currently on our website. Okay. I think we're good. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> any and, other questions? Uh, because I think Any they last? want to move on to someone else. No, we, we still have some time. We don't start the next one until 12, 12 o'clock. We have an hour. So they're not kicking us out. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like one of the vaudeville things. They were going to come in with a cane and take us off stage. <laughs> yeah. Here, play the closing music. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, it, it's always cool to see samples you guys have. Such great quilts that were made with your rulers. And, and actually, uh, just to let you know, I made most of these quilts, uh, but some of them are 10 and 12 years old. And when you're talking about, when I say a quilt lasts about 15 years, I made this one probably 10 years ago, and we use it every day. So when I do something like this, I just went and grabbed it off the kids' beds, off of the couches and stuff. Um, and this is what they look like when they've been washed and used regularly. Because I think people want to see that you get the feel like grandma's old quilts. You know, when they're washed and stuff. And my kids love them. The more they're washed, the more they love them because they just get soft and cuddly. So, I'm you know, we didn't show you any new quilts today. These are just the scrap quilts that... You know, because of the topic. Which are great basic beginner ones with the basic rectangles and they're great beginner yeah. quilts. Like that's why I started with that one. <laughs> yeah, to learn how to do half square triangles, etc. So pretty simple things. Yeah. We've we've done a couple of uh, live demos in the store during our fun club. And when people see how easy they are to use, we would always sell out of them. <laughs> yeah. They are so easy to use. Once you learn it, then it sticks in your your mind and you just pull it out and use it whenever you need it. Hey, just get and that's, zone. It's wonderful that you guys offer the instructions with each one. Yeah, and, and if video. you, um, if your customers um, like Creative Grids, 
on Facebook. That's also the first place we put the rulers, the patterns, and all of that, the new patterns that support the rulers. And uh, guys, support your local quilt shop. So if you see something on there, just call Darren and they'll order it for you. You know, yep. so all of that stuff is available, but we want you to support their shop. Yeah, we don't Thank stop you. coming out with things just because of a pet or specialty rule or anything's older. They, yeah. they always stay active and there's always new things coming out. So if you're looking for something, for instance, if you have the Scrap Crazy uh, template set and you're looking for a quilt, go to the website and see because we add new patterns constantly. And so um, you may find a different use for that tool that you hadn't considered that you really liked. We try, I call them one trick ponies. We don't do one trick ponies. Um, I want you to be able to use that tool over and over again in a multitude of ways. I don't want you to buy this ruler and you're going to use it for one quilt and then it's going to go in a drawer and you're never going to touch it again. That's not our goal. Um, you know, and we have... Uh, because of this event, we, we always carried creative grid rulers, but now you should see our wall. We have, I think, uh, top 50 or 75 rulers hanging on our wall right now. That's awesome. Um, but there are that a lot a more. a picture of it, and we'll put it on Creative Grids USA Facebook page. Okay. Because other shops like to see how stores are displaying them and stuff, because it is a lot of merchandise. So, what, you know, what is the best way to display it, et cetera? You know, some but of them. we love to share those kind of things. Some of them, like your, you know, the rectangle ones or um, square ones, you might already have something like it in your arsenal, but you don't have anything like the with the grippers on it. I mean, the way that these cling to your fabric. Um, so any of the quilter or the Creative Grid rulers will have that. And I don't think I've ever had anybody say that wore off, which is kind of cool. Yeah, no, it's not going. Going anywhere. I knew I was hooked on creative grids when I was sewing at home and went upstairs to get a ruler because the one downstairs didn't have grip on it. You went all the way up the stairs. Yeah, I went all the way up the stairs. And so at my age, that's like, okay, this is, yeah, uh, this is dedication to the product. And so I went up and got the other ones. And then I took all my other rulers and donated them to a project that was making, you know, books for Linus or whatever because I knew I'm never going to use them again. So, um, and that's another thing too. When you are starting to work with creative grids if you haven't already um stick to a, a certain brand because the markings are all going to be the same and like ours have the half inch on most of the rulers and if you're doing that and then switch to another brand that doesn't have that you can get confused and make miscuts so it's not good to you know mix all kinds of companies in and uh because it just adds to the confusion and if I have people coming to sew at my house and they're bringing all different brands and all different... You pick them out? And rotary cutters and stuff. No, I have enough at my house. They just use mine. <laughs> yeah. You need to come and spend a weekend at my house. I do. Just, so. I do. <laughs> Which ruler or rulers are the most versatile? Uh, I would say that um, my personal favorites, if I'm working with somebody, the Stripology XL is very versatile. And this is by Gudrun Erla. She has tons of video and supports and groups and everything for it and pattern support. Uh, the other nice thing about this is as I age, see there's slots in here. And so I'm not going to be able to slip when I'm cutting. And there's grip behind every single one of those slots so it doesn't move at all. And this is big enough to cut an entire fat quarter without moving it. So I can cut 14 one and a half inch strips or eight two and a half inch strips without ever moving the tool. And because of the slots, they're gonna be the exact same width every time. So um, as I age, you know, I thought, I wonder if I was your age and started with something like this, where I didn't have to put the pressure on the ruler and stuff, if I wouldn't have uh, the carpal tunnel issues and things I do now. Yeah. Um, so this is a good one. Uh, the six and a half by 24 and a half is our most popular selling rectangle. That's what I, say. I love a good rectangle because you can, I mean, you can use it to cut big and little. My yeah. go-to is a rectangle. And some like the eight and a half inch width. I like the six and a half. But as I'm aging, I tend to be using smaller rulers because I can control them better. And you were saying you're shorter. And um, yeah. you're actually barefoot, so you're not that short. I'm shrinking, though. <laughs> and so um, with that, you need to be able to go the entire length of the ruler to cut. Now for me to get to the end of the 24 and a half inch ruler, I'm not cutting with the same strength I am here right. that I was in the beginning that I could 10 or 20 years, years ago. That slipping. Yeah, so um, now I like this or the 18 and a half inch version. Yeah, my cutting table is a lot shorter than that. <laughs> so and I can this, reach better. The 6 and a half and 12 and a half inch square are really good too. 
So if you're starting out, those are the basics. Does anybody else have any questions? Any questions out there before we we part ways? Unfortunately, that's the worst part. I love coming into <laughs> these, but then we do have to uh, to part ways at some point. But hopefully, people will ask questions. Um, our next event doesn't start until twelve o'clock, so we do have some time. If anybody. It could Try be a question. Darren couldn't stump her. Try. I know. I, yeah. I was so close. I thought I would have won that <laughs> prize. But. And it could be on anything. It could be on um, how Chessa gets her hair like that. <laughs> if you have any questions on notions in general or Gypsy Quilter products and all of that kind of stuff, um, I write the blog for Checker, which is the largest distributor in the world of quilting supplies. So I, I could help you with a lot of those answers too. And um, I also test a lot of the Gypsy Quilter products. So it doesn't necessarily have to be creative grids. We can expand to if you have questions on any of that kind of thing. And in reference to my hair, yeah. I got a big personality. I got big hair. <laughs> you need to get a hair light like Hope Yoder. She was on before and she has a light just for her hair. <laughs> oh, um, where do I put that in the budget? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously it's not in our budget. <laughs> we did um, also with the, doing the Gypsy Quilter um, event a couple, like I think it was two months ago, but it could have been last month. It I think it was February. two months ago. Yeah. Um, we, we pretty much have all of the gypsy quilter stuff from the seat cushions to the grippers. Um, when you were talking about the, the gripper, Jared quickly put them into the creative grids section of our event page um, in case somebody saw that, that long gypsy gripper, um, which is just right there on molequeen.com. It would be the second event there. And my brother has broken it down into um, all the different categories so you can either click on the individual categories on our website, or you can scroll down um, past those and just look at the individual rulers. Um, if you download the PDF, which Jerry will go back to the top, um, the little link right there on our website, that's the PDF. Hopefully that is coming out clear. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you print that PDF off, it'll have every ruler discussed. Um, you can replay this video because it's going to be stuck on YouTube forever. Um, and you can watch it at any time. You can play it back to find which ruler was discussed with which quilt. Um, and just know you can just circle or check mark it and go to mulkqueen.com and order it. Any order over $49 gets free shipping. Isn't deal. that wonderful? Oh, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do that one sitting. And yep. somebody asked, um, can this ruler be used for regular pattern drafting or just regular wardrobe sewing? I'm not sure which ruler they're talking about. Um, this is the one we were just talking about, so maybe that's it. And um, you can use it to cut any strips and long pieces, etc. Uh, clothing, usually you need specific tools. I'm, but quilt patterns for clothing that you usually see in a quilt shop are started with squares and rectangles and they give you the cutout for the armholes and stuff. But if you um, are going to a drafting school, for instance, for like Kent State for fashion design, we don't have those rulers. That's not our expertise. Okay? We have the French curve rulers and stuff like that. For that. Yes, yes. And do you carry those? You know, I think that um, we're finding more and more people asking about sewing specific rulers. So we are, if enough people ask, we will yeah. start carrying more and more sewing rulers. And we've thought about getting into that too because um, people are starting to ask for that with Project One Way and stuff and yeah. people your age are starting to sew clothing. So uh, we're, we're checking into it too, but at this point we don't have them yet. What is your preferred rotary cutter? Um, that is up for debate. I like the ones uh, there are several like the Splash by uh, Ulfa that have the one-click blade change. Mm -hmm. I like those. I don't like the ones where I have to take a picture of it on my phone because I don't know where the washer goes and where the screw goes and where the, you know, all of that stuff. And uh, so I like the 
one-click version. I also like, um, I'm left-handed. Most people that I sew with, including my daughter, are right-handed. So I like the ones that I can just, you know, flip over and yeah. that work for left and right-handed users both. So. I use the Ofla as well. I have it in all sorts of color. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on my mood. Any other questions? Do you, do you know um, who who comes up with the ideas for these rulers? Um, we come up with a lot of them in house, and it's just like you said with sewing, because people will send us questions and say, "Do you have a ruler that does this or whatever?" And we'll research it and go into it, and we call it doing due diligence. We'll look and see if anything is available and if uh, there's a gap in the market that needs that. Uh, a lot of times, designers come with come to us and say. You know, I wanted to make this quilt, I couldn't find it, so they uh, have an idea for a tool. Um, in some cases, like Krista Moser uh, that did our 60 degree diamond. In the she, mini. Yeah, in the mini diamond. Um, she uh, sent in a bunch of patterns for, you know, that checker was going to carry, and they were all 60 degrees, and they were just gorgeous patterns. And so I just called her out of the blue and said, you know, would you like to, we need a 60 degree diamond ruler and would you like to do it with us because you've already done all of these quilts. And um, so we've had a great relationship ever since. So it just depends. Is there a mini stripology? There yes, there three is. There three in the series. Yes, there's a mini stripology that will trim blocks up to six and a half inches. And then there is a stripology squared that will trim blocks up to 12 and a half inches. And then this one, which is the stripology XL, if you notice these lines here, it combines the stripology squared with the width so that you can cut an entire fat quarter out of it. So you're getting like two rulers in one for this one. But um, Gudrun does a whole series of pattern called Lil's and the Lil's are all using the six and a half inch stripology squared. And I was surprised how much I use that because um, you know, I don't make a lot of smaller, mm -hmm. uh, smaller things like that. And it's so easy to grab to subcut because when you're subcutting and there's seams involved, if I have strip sets, when I lay that down, the weight and these hold them in place so they don't shift as you're cutting. So I now that's one of my go-to tools. I use it a lot. We have um, um, we have a lot. There's what, what is Irma? I know Irma. She's saying thanks for all of the information. Yeah, you guys have. Lots of information for us, lots of cool uh, quilts to look at. So I hope that people will rewind or watch this again after this weekend just to make sure of all the rulers and take advantage of our free shipping. And yeah, because we debated this. We weren't sure how familiar your customers were with Creative Grids. And so I didn't want to get into a lot of the specialty tools because I wanted to focus so they could see the mat, see the ruler, see how the sizes works together and everything on all the basics. And, um, and then you can get into all of the specialty ones. So um, you have to start with a good base. Yeah, you have to start with a good base before we get into all of the others. Yeah. Uh, there asked, somebody asked if there are sewing classes yet. Uh, Darren, you had said you're doing uh, demos and things on some of these on the specialty tools. Uh, we were just talking today at lunch about, uh, we have videos that show how to make a block, but it's pretty much down and dirty uh, because uh, we live in um, Amish country, really, or close to Amish country <laughs> in Ohio, and a lot of people still have dial-up connections. And so we've kept them short and sweet. And now we're talking about doing a whole series of like me actually teaching how to use the rulers. And then if that all comes to fruition, which we're hoping it will over the summer, Darren will be able to offer those classes and he can just send out the video of me doing it or someone on his staff can watch me doing it and learn how to do it and, and teach his own people. So that oh, yeah. those um, are definitely something that we're gonna work on over the summer. We would sure love that. Yeah, it's got, the summer here in Arizona feels like it's already here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Send some of it our way. Yeah, we were almost at 100 degrees the other day. Oh, don't oh, keep that. Lord. Keep that. Yeah. I taught there once in the summer, and it was 118. I thought, these people are crazy. <laughs> so, But I've also taught there in the winter when it's absolutely beautiful. My nephew was saying that he used to play football in that, in that 100 and. 
20 degrees. Uh, Dead of summer. Like I played, I practiced football at 125 degrees. No. Nothing like that. I feel sorry for those kids out there in the, <laughs> yeah. in the park. Even in Ohio, practice. when it doesn't get that hot, when they have two a days and they're out there, you know, practicing for six hours a day, it's like, oh my God. I get hot watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't even watch. <laughs> It's yeah, but you can just see the sweat coming off of them. Yeah. I think they're probably losing five or ten pounds just to, you know on each practice. So, any other questions? So, um, if we miss any questions, um, you can always email us. Um, you can email Jer, uh, Jer at mulqueen.com, and if we can't answer it, um, if you have a question that maybe would stump um, the great educators that we have here, um, we will. If we can't answer it, we'll get the answer from them for you. Um, and, you know, thank you again, um, uh, Checker Distributing. The, they're the team company behind all of this and uh, Creative Grid, Gypsy Quilter. I'll have to just find out what's next. What can we do with you guys next? Well, we'll. Uh, you know, one thing to ask um, can you ask your people if there is a specific ruler that they would like us to do a class on, um, whether it's a scrap crazy or a log cabin or something like that? Because we're working on the order of those now and how they should be done. So if they have any suggestions and ones they really want to do, we could kind of move those up on the schedule. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yep. Okay. Um, I think that you can see the comments. Will they be able to see the comments after? So go ahead and comment what. Uh, ruler you would like to see a class on if, if, um, if you don't mind and um, I'll let you know what the consensus is and um, yeah we can work that, from there we thank you so right. much well, for Kirby this log cabin. Kirby Log Cabin yeah and I can cabin. tell you right now that Kirby Log Cabin is because uh, I used to travel and teach before the quarantine um, about 150 days a year and I'm not doing that anymore and so because we can now everybody's figured out how to do everything electronically but the Kirby Log Cabin, we would do a log cabin class before the Kirby Log Cabin because uh, they build on each other. And so there's a certain order that I teach them to make it easier for everyone instead of starting on one that uh, the Kirby Log Cabin, everybody can do it, but it's a little more complicated. And if you know how to do the traditional log cabin, it's much faster. Well, it's a no brainer. A good after base. That. Yeah, you need that good base. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're making soup. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this with us, and it um, will be something that we'll have, and we'll be able to play back and check out all of those cool quilts again. And so, just know that you're going to be replayed over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> but thank okay, you so thank much you. for this. We'll see you guys you. Uh, again soon, and um, just appreciate everything. Thank you. That was wonderful, right, Jer? I think that um, I love when they're laughing and having a good time showing that's what this is all about. We, we want you guys at home. Hopefully you guys are having a great time. Um, we love showing uh, companies that we deal with here in the store day in and day out. Um, I think that today and tomorrow's group of uh, educators is some of the best that we've come up with. Yes, sir. Yeah. You want to grab that box on that chair over there real quick. Okay. Oh, you got something? Yeah. Um, Let me just move over here. So this box? Darren's grabbing this nice little kit that we have here. It's uh, it's about this quilt behind me, the Love Notes, uh, made by Kimberbell. It comes in a, a full kit. Um, if you want to, you can move that head down camera over the table. Oh, yeah? Um, but while I do that, I'm going to, while Darren does that, I'm going to show you guys. Well, I, um, I think it shows better on the wall. That's actually everything that you get in this kit. I'm just going to show them. Um, it's just, if you go to our website at love notes or molequeen.com and then type in love notes. Sorry. It's also under, if you scroll down, there's molequeen demo item. Oh, okay. Um, but right here across the top, you'll see all, all of the love notes stuff. So wait till um, you see the price. That's what's going to be extra special. Right here, you get the full uh, kit for the quilt for a total of $60. $199 kit. Originally $200, now on sale for $60. So you can go ahead and add that to your cart. Um, and then 
Darren's just going to show you kind of everything that comes inside of it. So if I switch to this guy there. I can't see the, oh, I can see it. Look at that. There you go. So you get the embellishment kit, which is all the little cool pieces that are added on there. Um, you'll get, when this first came out, we mailed out one of these every week to all of our guests that purchased it. Um, now, since it's not a mystery quilt anymore, you get all of your love notes together in one kit and all of the fabric, Kimberbell fabric to uh, make that quilt. The only thing it's missing is the backing, but I'm sure you guys have a beautiful backing that would work well on that. We're just um, closing it out um, and we're passing it on the special for our live viewers um, as a, a thank you for watching us. Um, so take advantage of that while you can. And I want to let you know that on the Creative Grid rulers that we had just talked about, every one of them uh, is on our site at the very lowest price that we're allowed to sell them at. So they are um, our event special, but um, just know that um, we are going to put a gift in with every purchase. Um, so all purchases that go on this week will um, have a special little gift inside. So if you don't mind taking advantage while you can, because um, it'll be a, a while supplies last kind of thing on our free gifts. And um, so creative grids, we have all of them, even ones that weren't probably not shown um, on that uh, um, uh, presentation. And for some reason, Jer has extremely zoomed in <laughs> close, a close up. Wait, what side is better? This side? No. That's, That's how you yeah you find out which side's better. So you just <laughs> angle yourself in the big camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you moved it back. <laughs> so that's always good to find out your best side live on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Um, oh, we need to pick that winner, or you need to announce the winner from the last one, and then we'll take a quick break. And you guys don't want to miss our next segment, um, but we we need to take a break so you guys have a chance to go to our website to um, add stuff to your cart. Please know that we do have some of the rulers in stock, but not uh, overload uh, of them. So um, we will be placing orders. We only show stuff that is in stock. We're trying to be very good about that and not get into a back order situation. So if you order this weekend, your order will be, um, we'll get them in right away from uh, Checker and we will uh, then ship it out right away to you. So please give us about seven to ten uh, days to get it maybe 14 days at the most on these rulers and we have a winner we have our 4k graphics shooting across the screen there <laughs> the high budget graphics our high budget graphics are uh, uh non-stop it looks like um it looks like i'm caught in a storm <laughs> so cheryl heilman congratulations so that was uh for um for uh sharing and commenting done um and we have a couple of winners that we'll announce a little bit later. Um, we have winners for um, people that had shared um, our email. I don't know if you remember seeing that email. And I do thank you for that. And then we have um, a gift card to announce here in a little bit uh, for people that have subscribed to our YouTube channel. Which, by the way, if you don't mind, um, if you're on Facebook, to make sure you shoot over to our YouTube channel and. Um, Hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That bell is so important that you hit that. If you have subscribed but didn't hit the bell, um, you can always go back and make sure that bell is highlighted. So every time we go live. Um, so they can see me. Yep, you can see Jer. Um, That's all they want. It was cute as a button. Um, you know, we, uh, we, uh, we'll, we want to start doing just pop-in videos on YouTube and give away stuff um, so our goal is to start going live on youtube more often um, so if you do subscribe and hit that bell your phone or your device will say that we're live it'll just come up real quick on your your phone and then it goes away so if you don't want to watch us you don't have to but at least you're notified because who doesn't want to win something Me. oh you don't well because you're the one that's paying for all of the prizes so all right. That's probably why. Uh, someone was asking about the mystery word. We already did post it. Um, I might, I might go ahead and just, I do. 
that. That's do it one more time. It's real quick, and then it's going to go away. But <laughs> just know if you miss any of the mystery, <laughs> that's really fast. <laughs> So you're gonna have to pause it. <laughs> you're gonna have to play it back and pause it. But um, we're gonna do a mystery word during every live presentation. Our next one, I'm very excited. It's EQ, uh, which is the electric quilt company. Um, we've carried their products for lots of years. EQ five, I think, and then went to six and seven. Now it's on EQ eight. Um, I think that everybody should have it if you're into quilting. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't have a close-up shot of Darren. Um, <laughs> um, no, EQ is such a, an awesome program. Um, and I love how it works on a Mac or a PC. So it doesn't matter which um, side you're on. As far as your laptop goes, um, it works on everything. And so um, they're going to be on in how long, Jerry? I don't even know what time it is. You got about... 25 minutes. 25 minutes. So does... Uh, oh, yeah. Will you go to Creative Grid? Oh, we already did the Creative Grid one. Yeah. Okay. We did. Yep. Um, I can do it again. To show how to shop, just let's, in case. Let's do it. Ryan Van Ort said, nice close-up. Yes. The close-up is very unnecessary, just so you all know. And I, don't, I don't know. Brian, do you think... Um, does anyone want to oh. help me win this argument? I think it's necessary. What does everyone think? The, also, see where Jared's at. Right when you click moldqueen.com, you can get a link to our YouTube right there. If you, is that what this is right here? If you're watching on Facebook, um, which we love Facebook as well, um, YouTube seems to be a little bit easier to find the playbacks. And um, so if you wanted to rewatch, please, if you don't mind, to uh, continue to share the videos if you enjoy this, um, to let your friends know about it, because um, they can't win the prizes. Um, you you guys are the ones that are going to win prizes because it's only given away during the live. Um, and But they can always rewatch it to take advantage of specials or just learn about our product. Are you laying on an ironing board today? You know, we were too away from having to lay on that ironing board. Yes. I am. He, so, he did that on purpose. He actually ordered more so that way... Once all of the orders came there, he ordered more. So but we should bring it in. We'll bring it in. Um, Jared actually. I I <laughs> laid on it. Jared did lay on. I am a I'm a sizable fellow. Jared is uh, more than 150 pounds. Yeah, and the oh, if you guess Jared's <laughs> yeah, guess, <laughs> guess Jared's weight. Um, no, it goes it goes up to 320 pounds. Oh wow, yeah. Put a small child on it. Yes, so you are a large one. not that much. So, <laughs> But thank you for your concern on me laying on the ironing board, but we will bring it in later to show it. We also uh, have those Uber lights. We're going to show those real quick. We got a mystery thing in these that we want to show you. Um, we have something right here that we still want to show you um, that is quite cool. Um, so we have a lot of little in-between demos that we're going to get to. Um, and the Kimberbell kit is only $60, which is really cool. While they last, you get a $200 kit. Um, if you actually, go to our page again, if you don't mind, and um, go to the home page of moldqueen.com. I believe all of this individual stuff that we're sharing should be all the way down at Moldqueen demoed products. So they're not an actual uh, one of the companies. Um, Maybe not. So I'll ask my brother Ken to pop that on there. And so um, when you come back after our break and you're interested in any of our kind of side deals like the Love Notes kit, you can always just search for Love Notes for now. If you want to take advantage of that $60 price uh, before they're gone, you can do that now. Free shipping at $49. So that um, sure does that, huh? And what else, Jared? My co-pilot, Jer, is um, ready to take a quick break so that people can peruse the website. And didn't, weren't you saying if we got like 500 orders that you'd get a tattoo of me on your chest? Yes. Yeah. So um, if we do get to the 500 orders, I'm going to get a tattoo of Jer on my chest, and we will show that um, in the year 2035. A picture of my face in cursive. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> going to do a, no, no tattoos here. Mom is possibly watching. Mom, I have no tattoos. 
That she knows of. That she knows of. I was going to get you a Sam. <laughs> All righty. All right, so we're going to take a break, stop this tomfoolery stuff here, and um, we'll be back at just before 12 with Electric Quilt Company. You don't want to miss it because it is amazing software. And then after that, it's J. Michelle Watts Designs. It's a Southwestern um, company of designs. It's not specifically, I just keep saying it's Southwestern because it's her, uh, most of her patterns are, have that feel. And I think our customers from all over the US will love it. Um, anybody that loves Southwestern, um, our fabric that we get in that's Southwestern always sells right away. So um, Michelle Watts will uh, join us at two. And then at four o'clock, our uh, finale of the day is the wonderful Handy Quilter Company. Um, we're going to talk about something that is brand new. We're not even allowed to sell it yet. Um, it doesn't really come out fully until May, but we are allowed to uh, quickly talk about it. And so we're excited about that. And for now, we will see you in about maybe.
Wow, that was pretty cool, that countdown there. Hi, everybody, we're back. Uh, Jared and I are here just excited. We're giggling like uh, school children about um, uh, electric quilt company coming on. Right, Jer? Yes, sir. We um, have a plethora of products that we're so excited to have you find out about. Cool encyclopedia, um, something that's been unveiled uh, recently. So we're gonna find out about that. Um, we've been carrying uh, electric quilt, uh, EQ is how we always refer to it um, for a long time now. And we've had many classes in the store in the past. Um, and one of our employees, hopefully she's out there. Um, I don't know for sure, but I have, um, she was so excited to get this program. Um, and I think that her personality and um, smartness of software is gonna be a great asset to our family business and maybe offering classes to anybody that purchases. So I'm excited for what's to come with our um, venture into the world of electric quilter. Um, we have Jenny and Janice coming on here with us. And we're so excited to um, talk to you all. Hi. Hello. 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 We are, um, we're having, yeah, I don't think that they're, you guys are <laughs> not allowed on at the same time. <laughs> not quite yet anyways. So we're so excited to uh, have the world of EQ shared with our, our customers. Um, and before we get started, I would love for um, our, our wonderful viewers, if you don't mind to comment, um, if you've ever heard of EQ, um, if you're a quilter, but also if you don't mind to share in your personal um, social media that EQ is on and you don't want to miss this. So if you share and say EQ is on, um, we are gonna do another prize uh, towards the end of this segment. And make sure if you're out there to um, uh, pay attention for the secret word, um, continuing our game. And hi there. Hi, <laughs> I'm here, here now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Jenny, um, we're uh, playing all sorts of games today, so we're excited for um, giving away prizes, and I'm so excited for your company. I hope that everybody will share that EQ is on and they don't want to miss it, all of their quilt friends. Um, and I hope so, so too. Uh, yeah. Where where are you at in the country? We are in Bowling Green, Ohio. Ohio. So we are actually just down the road from Checkers oh, that's in Ohio. Cool. Yeah. Uh, that is awesome. Yeah, that was cool to see. I, I think that this is a, a great um, add on to today's world of quilting. So thank you guys for being here. Um, I am going to ask everybody to ask questions, comment, share the feed, and I'm gonna kind of hide and let you take over and I'll be back in a little while. Sounds great. Hi everyone. I'm Jenny Novinsky from the Electric Quilt Company. And just to give you a little background about Electric Quilt, um, we are a quilting software company. We were founded by uh, Dean Newman and Penny McMorris. Dean was a um, math professor at Bowling Green State University. And Penny uh, used to host a PBS show on our local station for quilting. So they were looking for something that they could, a project that they could work on together. And that is how EQ was born. Um, I have been with EQ for almost 20 years. I started um, as a graphic design intern when I was in college and I never left. So I really love EQ. Um, I learned to design quilts on the computer before I knew how to sew them. Um, but I always, if I'm teaching classes, I tell people, you know, you can only look at beautiful quilts for so long before you want to make one yourself. So that's how I came into quilting. Um, one of my favorite parts of the job is sharing EQ with others. So that's what I'm here to do today. So uh, they're going to switch it so you can see EQ8 on my screen. So we're going to bring that up now. 
And I, when I bring up my screen, I can't see. So I hope you guys can see my EQ8 screen now. Okay, so this is the uh, welcome screen of EQ8. Um, what's nice about EQ is that the, uner the user interface is really um, friendly in that it helps you through the design process. So, you know, it tells you, you know, if you want to design quilts, look in this area. If you're looking to draw blocks, you can start here. Or if you want to work with fabrics, you can come over here. Um, there are three main work tables to EQ8, and you'll always see those work table buttons up here in the corner. So it's easy to navigate from work table to work table. Um, what I'm going to show you is how to build a basic design from scratch. So I'm clicking on the quilt work table button. And you can just work your way along the tabs here at the top of the screen. Here on the new quilt tab, you get to choose the basic um, layout for your quilt. So there's horizontal, on point, variable point, baby blocks, horizontal and vertical strip quilts, one patch layouts, uh, photo patchwork, and custom set. Custom set is really fun because that's like a blank canvas for you to work on. Um, and we'll, we'll show you a, a quilt design um, built on custom set in just a bit. But for this first one, I'm gonna work with a horizontal layout. And I'm just gonna work my way across these tabs at the top of my screen. So layout is next. And this is where we can set the basic information for the quilt. Um, it, as uh, I change these numbers, you'll see how that changes the layout here. So you can see I can make it really large or you know really small i'm going to go with five by five here and then i'm going to change the size of the blocks right now they're nine inch finished blocks i'm going to change it to 12 inch and if i know that i'm going to make a and you can see how that changes the layout here if i know i want to keep my blocks square i can check the box for keep width and height equal and i'm going to take it back down to 12 inches there uh, I'm not going to use sashing in this design, but if you like sashing between your blocks, you can add that as well. So you can see as I drag those sliders, how that adds sashing in between the blocks. I'm going to take it back down to zero though, because I don't want that for this quilt. And now I'm working my way back up to the top of the screen. So back up here at the borders tab, there are um, 20 some border styles to choose from. And you can see little um, icons for each of those up here at the top. And if I make my border a little bit wider, you can take a look at those border styles a little better. So I'm gonna set this to be a four inch wide border. And I'm gonna make this first border a points out style. So when I click this up here, you'll see I've got these points in my border and I can change how many points are there. So over here, I'm gonna change those to five and five. And now I'm gonna add another border. And this one I'm gonna leave at the long horizontal style. I'm gonna change that to be four inches too. And one more border, I'm gonna make this one a mitered style border. So that's over here. And I, I'd like to add one final border around my quilt that's a narrow mitered border to uh, mimic what the uh, binding would look like on my quilt. So I'm gonna make that real narrow here. And then I'm back up at the top of my screen and I'm gonna click the design tab. And here's where the uh, fun stuff happens in the quilt. This is where you get to start setting your blocks and coloring with fabrics and that sort of thing. So, um, EQ8 comes with over 6,000 blocks in the block library. So I wanna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna click the open library button. And here's just, I'll scroll through and let you get a little peek at some of the blocks here. There is everything from classic piece blocks to um, contemporary applique. Uh, see, let me scroll through a few more so you get a few more peeks. All the blocks that are in the library can be used in any size block space in a quilt. It will automatically print the patterns for your 
uh, blocks at whatever size you set them in, in the quilt. So I could, you know, if I'm making a mini quilt, I could print these at, you know, two inch size blocks. Or if I'm making uh, one big medallion center block, I can print the patterns for it at 30 inches. It, it does all that scaling for you. So now that we've gotten a little peek at the library, let's go back and work on this quilt. So I'm gonna click close on the block library. And I'm gonna work with this starry path block in this quilt. So I just select it over here on the left and then I can click on the quilt and it'll pop into place. If I hold down the control key or the command key on my keyboard and then click, it'll fill all the spaces at once for me. If I hold down the alt key, I can click and it'll fill every other block space for me. So now that I've got these blocks in place, I'm gonna use some of these solid colors to uh, fill in the borders around this quilt. So I'm gonna switch over to the fabric tools and grab my eyedropper and I'm gonna pick up some of these colors. And I can click and color one patch at a time or I can use my speed keys again if I get this um, lighter peach color if I hold down the control or command key, it'll color all those outer ones, all those outer triangles for me at once. You just quickly fill in the rest of this quilt here. And I tend to like to start with um, designing in solid colors. And then once I have a design that I really like, then I'll start um, playing with actual fabric choices. So right now I'm working with solids, but in just a little bit, I'm gonna show you how to uh, color your quilts with fabrics as well. A nice thing that I like to do at this point is to uh, turn off the patch lines. So the patch lines are these um, like dark, the black lines that are around each individual patch in the quilt. If I turn those off, you kind of get a better feel for what the quilt would look like when it's actually sewn. Because when you're sewing those fabrics together, you uh, wouldn't see those, those outlines around each individual patch. So if I like this quilt and I, and I think it's something that's worth saving, I can click the add to sketchbook button. And then what that does is adds that to the sketchbook for this project. The sketchbook holds all the bits and pieces of my quilt design. So let's take a look at what that it entails. I'm gonna click the view sketchbook button. And here you can see, I've been working with this starry path block for a while. I've been playing around with different designs. So these are the quilts that I've been working on so far with this block. Uh, here's um, a couple of different uh, medallion type quilts that I've designed with this block. So here, that starry path block is uh, about 30 inches, I think, on this quilt. Uh, you can always see the finish size of your quilt down here in the corner. So this quilt finishes at 70, 72 inches square. Um, let's see a couple other designs. Here's another one where this uses a, an on-point layout. So if I turn the patch lines back on, you can see that it uses the starry pass block and an octagon block. I'll turn those back off. You can also go really uh, modern with your designs. So here's another one that uses the starry pass block, but the block is super sized and rotated and cut off on the edges. Um, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but I'll zoom in here. This quilt also has uh, quilting stitches on it. So you can go as far as uh, planning your quilting uh, on, your, on your quilt to see what your stitches will look like when the quilt is completely finished. Show you. And then here, this quilt uses the custom set layout, which is that blank canvas that you can work on and set your blocks at any size, um, combine blocks of all different sizes and shapes into one layout. It doesn't, you're not popping blocks into a grid structure. So if I turn the patch lines back on, you'll kind of see how this is built a little better. So uh, I think this block here is 20 inches. There's some eight inch blocks, six inch. These little um, friendship star blocks are three inches square. 
and then all these rectangles are your background fabric that you could piece your blocks into. So I'm going to turn those patch lines back off. And just like there is a um, block library in EQ8, there's also a fabric library. So let's take a look at what the fabric library is like. The fabric library also has 6,000 fabrics in it, and um, they're organized uh, three different ways. Uh, you can look for fabrics based on color. So let me just scroll through a few of these colors. They're also organized by manufacturer basics. So you could come down here and if you really like the art gallery pure elements line of fabrics, you could grab those fabrics here and use those in your quilt designs. There is also a section for themes. So if you're looking for dots or plaid or stripes, you can uh, look for fabrics that way too. Uh, you also have the option to um, add your own, import your own fabrics into EQ8. So you could use a scanner or um, you can uh, take pictures of your fabric with your phone or your camera and import them that way. We also have free fabric of the month downloads on our website where you can add more fabrics that way. Um, and we have a stash product that you can purchase and add uh, thousands of fabrics to your library every time. So I'm going to come down here and grab a line from one of our stash downloads. Let's see, it's Andover Quantum. And I'm gonna select all the fabrics in that collection and add them to my sketchbook. And close here. And uh, there's always this default palette of fabrics that EQ starts with. And I'm gonna scroll down here and those new fabrics are added here at the end. And if you see this little, this arrow here, if I pop this out, you can see the selected fabric in a bigger swatch here. So I'm gonna use the paintbrush tool and I can color one patch at a time like this, or if I use the spray can tool, it will color all matching fabrics in a block at once. So I'm gonna change all of these light blue uh, patches at once like that. If I use the swap color tool, it will change all matching fabrics in the whole quilt at once. So I'm gonna change all the dark blues to this yellow fabric here just with one click. So give me just a second, I'm gonna color the rest of these. And a really fun thing to do, I think, at this point um, is to try out different background fabrics. When you're working with a quilt design that's got a lot of negative space like this one does, changing the background fabric can make a big difference. So uh, right now we've got a light color background. I'm going to switch it to a dark blue with just one click. And I that really changes the whole look of the quilt. And it's so nice to be able to to try out these different design ideas on the screen before you ever um, get to cutting fabric and, and actually sewing pieces together. So since I like this design, I'm gonna add it to my sketchbook and I am gonna switch to the print and export tab and show you some of the printing features of EQ. And just because I can't see if anybody is talking to me on screen or, or asking any questions, I thought I'd pause and, and ask the, the Mall Queen crew if there are any questions that I should answer yet at this point. No, I think, I think you're good so far. Sorry, Jared. Okay, great. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of flying blind here since I can't see you guys at all. No, you're good. I'll let you okay, know. Okay, great. Um, we'll answer your questions when you're done going across oh. Okay, great. Well, then let's say we are at the point where we are um, ready to make this quilt. So let's take a look at what you can print from EQ to get to your, your quilt designing, um, to the fun part, to the, to the sewing. So um, again, I worked my way across the tabs at the top. And so I'm on the print and export tab now. And we're going to take a look at the fabric yardage chart. So this is how you get to the yardage estimate for your quilt. 
you can choose the width of fabric that you're going to use. So um, it's set to the you know standard 44, 45 inch fabric, but you can choose a different width if you know you're using home deck fabric or something like that. Uh, or if you're always working with fat quarters, you could check the the box here to use fat quarters only in your yardage. You'll see that the seam allowance is set to your standard quarter inch. And so let's take a preview of what this looks like. So here is what the yardage chart looks like. And I'll zoom in so you can get a closer look at this. So here you see your fabric swatches and the number of patches that use this fabric and your yardage estimate. If you're using a fabric from the library or from one of our downloads, you'll also get to see the fabric name and the SKU number for that fabric. So you could print this out and take it to your local quilt shop and say, okay, this is how much fabric I need and uh, you can be on your way. So I'm gonna close the yardage chart here. And now I'm gonna show you what a rotary cutting chart looks like. So we're gonna use one of these little three inch um, friendship star blocks to look at the rotary cutting. So I've clicked on a block to select it and then I'm clicking rotary cutting. And here you see it has our block size set automatically for us because it's a three inch block. Our seam allowance is set here. And if I preview this, and let me zoom in so you get a closer look. Here at the top, you'll see the key block for the, the star. Uh, so the squares are A patches and the triangles are Bs. And if I scroll down here, oh, too far. Here is the cutting diagrams. So for the A patches, this means that you'll need to cut a strip of fabric that is one and a half inches wide. And from that strip, you can cut squares at one and a half. You'll need four dark blue squares and one uh, white square. For the B patches, you'll cut a strip of fabric that is one and seven eighths inch wide. You'll cut squares from that strip and then subcut them diagonally to make your triangles. You'll need four dark blue triangles and four white triangles. So that's um, an example of a rotary cutting chart. And I wanna show you one more um, printout. So I'm gonna click on one of the smaller friendship stars that's six inches, or I'm sorry, starry path blocks that is six inches. And let's take a look at the foundation pattern for that. Here you can see on the sections tab of the print window, how the block is sectioned. So this block uh, can be sewn in four sections. The blocks in the library are already sectioned and numbered for you, but if you wanna change that, you, can, you always have the option to change the sections. Uh, same goes for the numbering. It's already got each fabric patch numbered, but you can change that numbering if you want. So I'll click preview on that. And here's what the foundation pattern for this block looks like. Again, I'll zoom in so you get a little closer peek at it. So here's the A section. You'll see the numbered patches so you know the order to sew your patches. And the uh, dotted line here is your seam allowance around each section. So let's close that. And so this is a quick peek at the quilt work table of EQA and now I want to give you a little quick tour of the block work table. So again up here in the corner are our work table buttons. I'm going to click block work table and uh, you can draw blocks from scratch here. The nice thing is you can draw them once you know so right now my work table is set to six inches but if down the road I decide oh but I really want to use that block that I drew in a 12 inch block space EQ does the math and, and scales things for you. So you don't have to redraw that block. You just say, okay, this time print it at 12 inches rather than six inches. So I'm gonna go to my sketchbook and grab that starry path block. That's one of my favorites here. And I'm gonna double click on it and it's gonna edit it down to the work table for me. Now um, I can make real quick, easy changes to this block. Let's say I wanted to make a a simple variation of this block. I can use my pick tool to delete some of these lines, which are seams. So I'm deleting some seams out of this block. 
And then when I click the color tab, you'll see I have this simpler version of, of the story pass block. It only has four points instead of the eight that it had before. So I'm gonna add that to my sketchbook. Now reverse, I can add more seams to this block to make a different variation. So this time I'm gonna use my line tool to add some seams. and click my color tool or my color tab. And a little hard to see because those adjacent patches are colored the same, but if I change some patches, you'll see how those extra lines have changed the seams for me. So there's another variation of the, of the starry path block. Now, um, maybe, maybe you're not into drawing things from scratch, but you still think it'd be kind of fun to create some new blocks. You can do that with the create serendipity option here on the block work table. So I'm gonna click that and you have all these different serendipity options on the left. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of those. This first one is called clip and flip. And again, I'm using that starry path block, it's my favorite. Um, all the blocks here on the left are the ones that are saved in my sketchbook. So I can use any of those in this, in this feature. What clip and flip does is um, cuts out a quarter of the block and then rotates it and flips it around to, in the rest of the block to make new variations. So here's what it looks like originally. And if I click these other options down here, you'll see these new variations that are formed when you rotate that quarter around. So when I see something I like here, I add it to my sketchbook. Let me show you just a couple others. So it creates really interesting blocks and you didn't have to draw or, or worry about, you know, drafting anything yourself. So I've added a few of those clip and flip blocks to my sketchbook. I'm gonna close it. And I wanna show you one other serendipity option. This one is called Kaleidoscope. So for this one, it um, creates different tiles of your block, your selected block over here and uh, repeats it around eight times to create this new block. So again, you see something you like here in the middle and you can add it to your sketchbook. So this creates these different variations. I'm gonna add another one and I'll close that. And then if we take a peek at the sketchbook again, so here are all my blocks that I already had in there, but just here's that first variation that I made on this on the work table and look at how many new variations of that starry path block we made in just a couple of minutes here in this demo um, and just like we use those other blocks in a layout that were already in the in the library I can use these ones too so real quickly I'll just throw a couple of those in a new quilt I'm switching back to the quilt work table and I won't worry about any borders right now, but I'll just go back to my blocks. And I really love this one repeated. So, and so I've just thrown it in a, in a quilt design and now I can just play for hours with, you know, making new variations on the block work table, trying them out in different quilt designs. Um, so we've just shown you like the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with EQ8 here. So if you're interested in EQ8 and you're kind of wondering how, you know, I'm interested, but it looks like a lot. We have a lot of learning resources available for you. Um, just even right here within EQ8 itself. If I click the house button up here in the corner, that takes me right back to that first welcome screen. On the left, if you click learn, this puts a lot of learning resources right here at your fingertips. Um, if you click help articles, that will take you to our support site and you can search for, you know, specific tools, something, you know, like how do I use the paintbrush tool? You can find that here real easy on our support site. There's also a lot of free lessons on our support site that you can get to easily from here. There are video tutorials. Uh, the quick, quick start guide and the reference manual are also available for download um, from our support site. Um, and also, I did want to talk about our books a little bit. So if you can switch it back to my face. 
and I will, oh, there we go. All right, so I wanted to show you our the companion books that we have for EQ8, um, which Mole Queen has all of these. And uh, so the first one, if you can see it, is the EQ8 Lessons for Beginners. This is the book that we recommend for anybody who is brand new to EQ. Um, it takes you step by step through all the different work tables and screens of EQ. Um, what I love is that these are spiral bound. They're really nice to lay flat on your desk and work through. Another great thing about all of our books is that every, it, they're very well illustrated. There is a picture, and I don't know if you can see those very well, but there is a picture for just about every step that you're working through. So you can feel confident that you're seeing the right thing on your screen and you're clicking in the right areas of the software. Um, we have two other companion books. Uh, one is called Drawing Blocks, the EQ8 Drawing Blocks. So, you know, you just got a little taste of the block work table there in my demo. But if you are really interested in um, creating your own blocks from scratch, this is a fantastic book to get you started with that. You'll draw piece blocks, applique, um, you'll go into foundation piece blocks. So you'll, you'll learn all kinds of tips and tricks for drawing your own designs. Um, the last one I wanted to show you is the EQ8 Designing More Quilts book. This is fantastic because um, each chapter is written by a different EQ8 user. So you get um, EQ8 from a different perspective and each time that you work through one of the lessons. Um, we have users who have been um, using EQ8 for years and they have like very unique perspectives in using the software. Um, and so even if you don't necessarily want to sew the blocks that you make in um, the lessons, you will pick up so many interesting um, tips and tricks and that you can use in your own uh, designs. And I am seeing on the screen now that I can see it, do you need Windows on your computer to use EQ8? EQ8 is um, Windows compatible and Mac compatible, so that um, both operating systems and you can find this full system requirements. Um, on, I'm sure Mall Queen probably has it on their website and also on our website as well. So um, I think that just about wraps up my part of it. Does anybody else have any questions for me before I hand it over to Janice? Can you design a block, print it out to scan it and use it in conduction? Um, you can, because um, you could use your um, templates. If you print the templates, you can scan those. Use cut. Um, Janice knows more about those <laughs> digital cutters than I do, and I'm sure she's going to talk to you about those with um, Blockbase Plus. So I'll let her her go into that a little bit more. She knows those cutters better than I do. Um, can you search? You can search not by date though. So. Um, you could search by name, um, like if you were looking for a bear's paw block, you could type in bear and search the block library for those kind of names. Uh, you can also search based on um, construction method or, you know, blocks that only have rectangles and squares and that sort of thing. Does it have different applique designs? Yes, the block library does include um, applique designs. I showed just a little part of that, but there are, um, applique blocks and applique motifs. The difference there would be that applique blocks have a um, square background to them. Motifs are just the patches themselves, so they can kind of float over top of your quilt. Okay, is that it? Should we hand it over to Janice to talk about Block Base Plus now? Oh, can the block be changed to paper? Piece? Yes. For as, as it's applicable to paper piecing. You can you can print the, the foundation pattern for a block. Anything else for me? Is it upgradable? Well, EQ8 is our our newest version. If you own EQ7, you we do have upgrades available from EQ7 to EQ8. Uh, 
All right. Great Hi, Janice. <laughs> Great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I will head over to that. Janice now and yeah. she will talk to you about Block Base Plus. Yeah, and I can't answer that scan and cut question for you. Um, definitely, if you print out the templates um, from EQ8, you can then scan them in with your scan and cut to create cuttable files with the digital cutter. Um, and I know someone else was asking about SVG files. EQ8 doesn't export SVG, uh, but you can still export those templates and then use um, an SVG generating program like Inkscape or Adobe products um, to be able to um, turn those into SVG files for other digital cutters. Um, but if you're excited about SVG, hold on, I will get to that in just a minute. You're going to really like Blockbase, so I can promise you that. Um, my name is Janice Frisch. I work for the Electric Coat Company as well. Um, I am fairly new to the company. Um, I joined just last year, um, but I've been using Electric Coat products since I started quilting over 20 years ago. Uh, I think I started with EQ4, um, and now I'm obviously using EQ8. Uh, so this is a dream job, and I'm really, really enjoying working for the company. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about two of our newest products uh, that Mole Queen is also carrying. Um, the first is Barbara Brackman's Encyclopedia of Peace Quilt Patterns. Uh, and the second is our newest software called Blackbase Plus. So let's talk about Barbara's book first. So Barbara Brackman, if you don't know her, is a quilt historian. Um, she writes lots of books um, about making historically inspired quilts. She's written lots of books about quilt history. And one of her main things is that she's been documenting quilt block patterns for over 40 years. Uh, this started for her as a project to try and find the names for every quilt block pattern that she could find. And what she quickly realized was that just wasn't possible. Um, quilt pattern names vary by region um, and time. And so the right name is for a black pattern is whatever you want to call it. Um, it's going to be different from place to place. But in the process of trying to find the elusive right name, she amassed a large database um, of note cards and they documented quilt patterns where they had been published and what they were called by those publications. So she created a book out of that initially. The first edition was a notebook uh, that she created herself, literally three ring notebook with the pages tucked in. Um, she could add to it as she found more. The second edition was published by the American Culture Society and it went out of date over 10 years ago. And it's very expensive to get it on the secondhand market. Um, but the third edition is brand new and the Electric Coat Company just published this in November and it looks like this. So we're really, really excited about it. Um, this uh, is fully modernized. It's in full color. If you have this second edition of Barbara's book, uh, it's just in black and white. But this one, full color illustrations throughout. I'm not used to the opposite thing going on here. Um, a black and white draw line drawing, and then a full color illustration, and then information on where it was published and what the um, publications call those pattern names. There's over 4,000 blocks in this book. Um, and there's 161 new ones that were not in the second edition. So she's continuing to research and find more blocks as she goes. This is an essential reference tool for any quilter. Um, I do quilt history and I also quilt and this is the first place I go whenever I decide I want to make something new. So you can use it a lot of different ways. You can flip through it uh, and find inspiration for your next quilt or you can look up patterns by name. There's a very detailed pattern name index in the back. So if you decide, oh, I want a quilt that's airplane blocks. Um, you look up airplane in the index, it will tell you where all the blocks with airplane in the name are, and you can go look at them and decide if you want to make one of them, if they fit what you're looking for. Or you can grab one and then you can modify it and draw it in EQ8 and have a good time with it. Um, you can also use, she's got a step-by-step -step, um, instructions in the front, where if you have maybe a historical quilt, and you're trying to figure out what the block name is, you can actually go through the step-by-step -step instructions based on the seam, major seam lines of the quilt. And it will direct you to the right section of the book and you can see if you can find your block there. Then you can find out some more information about where it was published and what the name of that block was. So it's really fun. You can use it, use it lots of different ways. Um, now, while it's called the Encyclopedia of Peace Quilt Patterns, it doesn't contain any patterns. It's just the encyclopedia aspect. So it's just, whoop, we do have fun quilt pictures in it and as well. Um, 
So it's just these line drawings. There's no information on how to make any of these blocks or, and you'd have to draft them yourself. And that's where our new software block base plus comes in. It's the companion software to this book. Now you don't have to have both, but they work great together. So if you've got one, I highly recommend having the other. And block base plus is standalone software. So you don't have to have EQ8 to use it. Um, it works just fine on its own and it is for Mac and for PC. You have to have Windows 10 and then either any of the most three most recent Mac operating systems. So Big Sur, Catalina, and I forget what the other one is. I'm a PC user, sorry. Um, but those, it will work on all of those. If you do have EQ8, you can link BlockBase Plus to EQ8 and all the blocks will appear as a block library, kind of like Jenny was showing you earlier. Um, so you can add all those 4,000 blocks uh, to EQ8 to continue to use from. There's a little bit of overlap, but not a lot. Um, we don't have exact numbers, but some of the more basic blocks overlap, but the really complicated ones do not. Um, other exciting things from BlockBase Plus, you can print out just like with EQ8 templates, um, foundation patterns, rotary cutting charts, and reference images of the block at any size you want for all of them. Uh, and you can also export and print images and SVG files. So those of you with your digital cutters are gonna be excited about this. So I'd like to give you a little tour of BlockBase Plus as well, kind of like Jenny did with EQ8. So when we're ready, we can switch to my screen. And hopefully that will come up and we'll give it just a second so I can make sure it's there. So when you open up BlockBase Plus, um, this is what you're going to see. And there are three different kind of navigational panels here that we're going to be looking at. So the first one over here on the left, this is the block library and it's open by default and it has all the blocks arranged by categories and subcategories. And it will open category 10 by default, which are unequal nine patches with a small center block. You can see the subcategories that appear below that and clicking on a subcategory will show you different blocks within them. And these categories match all of the categories in Barbara Brackman's book. So if you're looking in a specific chapter in the book, you can come to BlockBase Plus and you can look at the category and check it out there. To the right, we have the block viewer and that's where all the blocks appear. And across the top, we have a number of different ways of changing your viewing options. So you can turn the patch lines on and off. And again, like Jenny said, those are the black lines showing where, where the patches are. So you can just get a sense of what these look like if you're going to quilt them. Uh, Colorway allows you to look at them just as black and white line drawings as they appear in the book. Gray scale if you don't want to be influenced by the colors or coloring. Um, and the coloring in these are um, based on the grayscale drawings that Barbara originally drew, uh, but they aren't necessarily the colors that were used in the publications, um, but they do focus on the light and dark colors. Um, we just had fun coloring the blocks for you. You can also change um, how big the blocks are on your display. So we have a large size, we have a default medium size, we have a small size, and we have a tiny size so you can see them all um, together as you want. Um, below the block library, we have the note card panel and you can adjust that up and down. And you'll see when you select different blocks, the information in the note card panel changes. So the Brackman ID number um, in the book, Barbara Brackman has given a number to every pattern that she has created. And the Brackman ID number is that number. So if you're in the book and you have the Brackman ID number, you can look it up by that in, in the database here. The default block size is the size that we drew it at, um, but you can change and print at any size. You have the category, the subcategory, and some characteristics um, that tell you why certain blocks are put into those categories. In the center column, you have the published names that are associated with this block. So this one was called the wedding ring and it was found, that information was found in the Kansas City Star. If you click on the published names, information will appear on the right that tells you where that particular block was published, when it was published, if we have a date, um, and what the shorthand abbreviation stands for, a little bit about the publication itself. Similarly, if you click on Old English Wedding Ring, um, this was also published in the Kansas City Star, so you'll see that the date disappears, but the information about that publication is still there. Now, if we go back over here to our left kind of navigation panel, so we have the block library. We also have a screen where you can search. 
um, and you click the little magnifying glass, it will bring up the search. There are four different ways to search for blocks in Blockbase. The first, as I mentioned, is by searching on that Brackman ID. Uh, so if you know the number that's associated with the block, you can type it in, click search, and it will come up. Um, the second is by published name. So there are two ways to search by published name. One, you can scroll down the list uh, and just find a name that sounds intriguing and say, ooh, what blocks were made by that? Here's one called Acorn, looks like an acorn. That's kind of fun. You can also type into the search a name. So let's say I'm looking for Ohio Star blocks. Um, type in Ohio Star, hit search or click enter and you get four blocks across the top and you'll see uh, this first one's called Ohio Star here, Ohio Star, Ohio Star, and Ohio Star. Now, I, so it can search for combination words. It can also search, you know, a broader range of words. So if I just want to search Ohio, you'll see that adds four additional blocks, but also we also still get those four Ohio Star blocks that we had from the beginning. You can also search by category. Uh, and this are, the blocks are all tagged internally. You can't see the tags, but they have information connected to them. Um, so you can search by skill level. You can search by blocks that we think are rotary cutting friendly, foundation paper piecing friendly, hand piecing friendly, um, time period, which is the date in which they were published. If there was a date associated with it, you can search by decade. You can search by design categories. Uh, including searching new to block base, which will show you all of the 161 blocks that are new to the book this time. Uh, and scrolling down, you can search by holidays, events, and themes as well. And then finally, you can search by source. So if you're interested in all the blocks that were published by the publication Aunt Jane, um, you can click on the name of the publication that will bring up all the blocks um, that had that. You can scroll down and see this one was called Wonder of the World by Aunt Jane, and you can read a bit more about Aunt Jane from there. So that's how you search. Um, the key feature of Blockbase is printing, um, but I also want to show you what this little last tab does. This is our favorites tab. And if you're going through and you're scrolling and you find a block you really like, you can click add to favorites. Ooh, I like this one too. I like this one as well. And then when you go to the favorites viewer, it will show you all the blocks that you have marked as your favorite. And if you decide later, oh, actually, I don't really like that one, you can remove it from favorites. Or if you're like, hmm, I want to make a quilt for my favorites, and I really like these blocks, if you click view in library, it will take you to that block where it is in the block library, and you can see everything else that's kind of related to it. So if you're looking to try to make something similar to that block you like, you can go back and forth very easily. So let's do a quick Brackman ID search for a block. And we're going to look for 765.01. Some of these have fun numbers because she found a new block after she had numbered them and had to create subcategories. So this is a fun little block here. And we're going to look at our print options. Uh, if you click the print button, this is going to print whatever block is selected. The first option we have is to print the block. Um, and you'll see you can change things like the size of the block, it defaults at the size we drew it. You can change how it looks when you print it out. Um, you can change whether it's mirrored on or off. You can include the Brackman ID. And when you're printing block, you can fit as many to the page as you want. So let's look what it looks like default. This is just a reference block. So I find it really helpful when I'm sewing to be able to print these out. Um, and then I can look at it and I go, oh yeah, patch A is supposed to be yellow, patch B is supposed to be orange. I know where everything goes. Now, if I want to really play with this, I can say custom size and say, oh, let's make these two inches. And if you want to make rectangular blocks, you just unlock the aspect ratio. And then I can change that to five, leave that at two, or I can just make sure it's square. And I can say print as many blocks as fit on this page and hit preview. And suddenly I can print out a whole bunch of them. And this is really fun if you want to make like wrapping paper. Um, you can also print an outline drawing and suddenly you have fun coloring pages to kind of come up with different ways of how you might want to color that block as well. So that's how we do the print block. The next one is going to be print foundation. We'll look at a different block for that. It's block 2707. So this is kind of a complicated block to put together. I think I'm going to want a foundation printed. Um, so I'm going to click the foundation pattern. 
um, and you'll get this dialog box here. And like in EQ8, you can actually make a number of adjustments um, to this. The first is I can adjust how the sections are put together. Um, so right now we're seeing it's got four sections, but let's say mm, I wanna put this together a little differently. Well, I can go through and I can select a different uh, connection. I hit group. I'll do group this section, this section, and this section. And now it's going to tell me how to put it together a little bit differently. If I go to piecing order, it go, it's named A, B, C, D. It's saying that's the order I want to put it together in. I can change that order and say, oh, I want to sew this one and this one together first, and then these two next. And then I go to numbering, and it will tell me the way that those are going to be ordered together. Um, looking at this, I can actually see I accidentally, by changing the sections, it's not foundation piecable. So I can change the numbers. Say, actually, I want to sew this one to this one first, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. The rest of these are fine, so I'm going to leave it as is. If I just click on another tab and then go back, you'll see it's accepted all of those and adjusted it for me. So we go to the print options. Um, I can, again, adjust the size of the block to anything that I want. I can take the seam allowance off if I want. I can have the seam allowance dashed or not dashed. I can mirror. It's on by default because that's making foundation paper piecing, but maybe you want to take it off. Um, and I can add a key block, which is going to tell me um, how to view or where everything goes. So if I click preview on that, we can see it's created this for me. So let's zoom in a little bit. So we can marquee zoom, which is just selecting and scanning. I also have a zoom in individually if I want to see one page, or if I want to see everything fit back on the screen. Now, the fun thing about this is I can actually adjust and rotate all the pieces. Um, so I want that large key block. And I also, if I hold down command, it will make that a little easier to click bit by bit. And I can fit all these pieces onto one page so I can save paper because we all want to save paper when we're printing that stuff out. So now I have my reference key block, which shows me where all of the patches go and a color version to look at as well. And then here are my different pieces all fit on the page. And the directions of the letters actually show you what way is up when you're piecing this together. Um, now, it won't remember from time to time if I've made all these changes, but I can personally save this by clicking Save to PDF. And then that will create a PDF on my computer that I can print out over and over again for as many blocks as I need. And it will always remember in the PDF how I changed everything and put it together. So that is our print foundation block option. Um, you can also print templates. And again, let's switch to a different block. 3735A. Again, she's got some of these subcategories. Um, and this is one of my personal favorite blocks. Again, when you do a search, you can click view in library, so then I can see everything else that falls in the same category of the block I just searched for. And if I go to print templates, um, so this is great for like English paper piecing and those kinds of things. Again, I can change the size of the block. I can change my seam allowance if I want it to be bigger or smaller. I can turn the seam allowance off entirely. I can mirror the templates um, and that key block. And here's what's really fun. I can print unique templates only. And if I do that, I just get one template for each of the designs. So let's zoom in a little bit so you can see it. So I got one template for patch A, which are the squares. I got one template for patch B, which are the triangles. We got one template for patch C, which are the diamonds. But if I go back and say, actually, I'm doing English paper piecing, uh, and I don't want any seam allowance on those at all because these are going to be my templates underneath, I then can click preview, and it's going to show me, oh, we've now created all four of those patches that you need, all of the triangles that you need, all of the diamonds that you need. And in addition to being able to move and rotate these, I can add a one inch scale square. And this allows you, when you do a printout, to make sure that your printer isn't accidentally scaling this smaller than it should be. Um, I can also copy and paste templates. Um, so here I've got one highlighted. I hit copy. I can hit paste. I can make more. I can say, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, and delete one. Um, and you can add lots of extras for all the blocks that you need in one printout by doing that. 
Now the last printout option is a rotary cutting chart. Um, and Blockface Plus is a plus because it's got some additional interesting information that we've added to it. So I can say detailed view instead of summary view. I can change my width of fabric. I'm going to make it 40 because I always wash my fabric and it shrinks. I say I want to make eight of these blocks. I'll hit preview. We'll zoom in again. And you'll see that with this, um, you get a little bit more information um, from Block Base Plus. So I need to cut strips that are two and a quarter wide that'll cut get cut down into a square. Um, but I'm gonna cut 32 patches. And of those 32 patches, I'm actually gonna need two strips based on the width of fabric that I entered to get 42 two and a quarter inch um, patches out of that. It tells you for each of those. So with the diamonds, it says, oh, I'm going to need four strips um, because you're sub cutting for quarter square triangles with uh, patch B, you're only going to need one strip. So this is really, really handy when you're trying to calculate for a larger quilt. Now you can't design blocks into quilt in block base. Um, you have to connect to EQ8 to be able to do that. But you can do some fun things. Um, one, you can zoom in if you want to see the block bigger. Um, and if I change that, you can see it bigger in any of the colorways that we have. You can also have this option to do a quilt layout. And this is going to give you seven different kind of preset layouts um, that lets you play through and kind of get inspired by the block. And this is just really fun because you get so many ideas clicking through this. And every time you click a different block, it looks so very different as well. Um, so that's just to kind of get you thinking on how you want to put things together. Now we also, as I mentioned, have an export option. You can export as a JPEG file or a PNG file. Those are image files that you can save um, to put on your website. Uh, those kinds of things. You see there's some basic um, options here, such as resolution, if you want a bigger or smaller image, how big you want that image to actually be, and do you want the patch lines to appear or not appear, um, and do you want it in grayscale or color. But for those of you with digital cutters, we also have the option to export SVG. Um, brand new to Blackface Plus is our first product to have this option. Uh, any size that you want. Um, I think it's capped at like 150 inches, which is a king size. Um, so if you wanted to do a whole block of this or a whole one block of this, you could. Um, resolution, because these 72 and 96 are the most common resolutions on programs that read. SVG files. And if you're not familiar with what an SVG file is, that's a scalable vector graphic. And it's what's read by digital cutting machines like your Cricut or your brother Scan and Cut. Um, it can be read by embroidery machines. It can be read by 3D printers. So you can do all sorts of cool stuff. If you've got a laser cutter, um, if you want to cut out and make cards using these blocks, it really is kind of a limitless potential. So you can export two different ways. You can export the block image. And when you do that, you'll just get a block that looks like this. Um, and the patches can then be pulled apart. So if you're doing uh, raw edge applique, you're going to want to export a block image. Or you can choose to export block templates. And that's going to create an export that looks like our template layout and includes a one inch scale square so you can make sure it's being imported correctly. Um, and you can export either the unique templates or all the templates and you can turn mirroring on or off. And then that can be read by your digital cutting machine. And we have um, help pages on our website for some of the most common um, digital cutting machines, as well as uh, 3D printers and the like there. And that kind of covers the things that you can do with Black Base Plus. So we can switch back to me and I can answer any questions that may have come up. So what questions can I answer for you about Black Base Plus? Can you download the software on more than one computer? Yes, for all of our digital products, you can download the software on more than one computer. Uh, the limit is you can have it activated on two computers at a time, um, and you can always deactivate a computer. Um, so if you have your computer crash for whatever reason, or you buy a new computer, you, we just deactivate it for you, or you can deactivate it, uh, and then you can move it over to the new computer. So you can have it on two computers at a time, but you have unlimited downloads and installations. Um, and I missed that other one that just popped across the bottom. Sorry about that. Can the blocks be created 
using a cherry quote, um, basically copyright or law. Yes, uh, we have copyright details on our web page. Um, all of the blocks that come with EQ8 are copyright free. Um, blocks that you design are your copyright. Um, sometimes if you buy add-ons, Blockbase Plus is a little bit um, of a sticky territory because some of them are um, published by publications that are still um, viable and in print. Um, but if you're going for a charity quote, really it's just you don't want to be making money on it. If you're going to um, raffle it, that might be a bit of a problem. Um, but if you're just making it to donate to a women's shelter or that kind of thing, there's there's no restrictions on that. They're all good for personal use. We have more details on our website if you want to drill down. And sometimes our add-ons are by designers and the designers retain their copyright. So easy but not. What else can I answer? Blockbase Plus doesn't have a fabric library. Um, so it's really meant as kind of an easy way to quickly print blocks. It's not really the design capabilities that EQ8 has. Uh, if you want to design with the blocks, then you do need to have EQ8 um, so that you can connect the two as a block library. And then you can um, recolor all the blocks as you want. Um, this is really meant to be able to print all the blocks in Barbara Brackman's book so that you don't have to draft them yourself. Uh, will Blackface software have free updates? Um, yes, we occasionally offer updates to the program. Um, oftentimes that's bug fixes. Occasionally there may be a new feature. Um, the updates are always free. Um, and if you're on our email list, you get notified um, of when to go get those. Um, upgrades are a different thing. Um, so if you're, like uh, Jenny said, if you're going from EQ7 to EQ8, that is a paid upgrade, um, but updates to the program to create, fix bugs or maybe add some new features are free from us. What else can I answer? I think we're running out of time too. So thank you for having us. Oh. You are welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. We're, we're hoping that um, that people, if you have any questions, um, I know, uh, people will comment they have it. Um, some people were like, they loved how detailed you guys were to go in <laughs> depth into it. We all use Always. and love our software too. So yeah, you could tell. Um, I don't know if it's too much, but I um, I was going to give everybody your home phone numbers in case they have any questions on how to, <laughs> you know, I can't do that. Actually, if, if you live chat with us on our on our website for, for tech support help, there's a very good chance you'll be talking to me or Janice. So oh, yeah, yeah our, our uh, live chat is um, the designers and the programmers. And so you're, you're oh, getting cool. the best help you can get. Yeah, I think it's way cool that um, how new this block base plus is and that we're able to uh, offer that and perfect timing. It just came out, right? Not too long ago, the block base plus? Only a month. It came out at the beginning of March. Um, and yes, other Janice, you can print out paper piecing instructions for all those block base plus blocks. Not all of them go together well that way, but um, if you want to try it, you can definitely print them. Um, I did also, uh, on our website, we have everything on sale. So it's like a crazy event special. So hopefully you'll take advantage of it. But I also did one that's called I Want It All. Um, I saw get... that. I think everybody should get that one. <laughs> so it's that's a little awesome. more discounted even. So you get the block base plus, you get the encyclopedia that goes wonderfully with it. And then you get EQH with all three of the books that are available. Um, that you can't really see because they're on my table, but there's uh, uh, drawing blocks, lessons for beginners, and designing quilts and more. So we, we put a package together with all of it, which Jer so kindly has on the... <laughs> um, if you go back a page, Jer, on that, to the individual items. Um, my brother, if you click on one of those, um, my brother can kind of organize them with uh, info below each individual item. Um, so there should be um, quick videos and stuff like that on our website. Um, and then so each one individually has that information, but he also put a, the I want it all. Um, 
So that one doesn't have all the videos, but you can go to each one individually to see. Uh, does EQ8 or Blockface ever go on sale? Um, believe it or not, Jer will scroll up to see the price of this one. I can't read it from this bar, Jer. I need I need my binocular glasses. The price is on sale from two thirty nine. It's now one fifty five. I don't know if we're allowed to say that with you on online with us, <laughs> but it's a really good price. price. <laughs> yeah. And so that's all at mulqueen.com. Hopefully, people will come up with some questions. If there's any other questions, we have some prizes still to give away. And, um, you know, what else, Jer? There's over here my DJ. But you can't come on this too at the same time, Jer. Oh, you can. Look at that. <laughs> I'm in close quarters with Darren. I just I can't do it. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> um, any other questions out there? We would love to get them answered. Otherwise, we're going to... I keep saying I don't like the part where we have to say goodbye. I like where we say hello. But maybe we can do something again down the road with um, some classes and stuff. Uh-oh, somebody just popped up. Somebody, Marcia, enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, you guys were great, and um, I've been around the software a long time, and I don't think I've ever had such a great presentation. So thank you for doing this. I thank you for having us. Take advantage of it and see how cool yeah. it is, how powerful the program is. I can do that, a lot. Guess, thank you so much for having us. Thank you, guys. So um, if people ask questions, I'll, I'll sure to relay them to you if I don't have the answer, which. I probably won't, so I'll, <laughs> I'll have to get with you, gals. Um, so with that, um, thank you so much for doing this. Until next time. Sounds right. good. Thank you. You. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. That was wonderful, wasn't it, Jer? Yes, sir, it was. Yep. We like um, these amazing companies, um, EQ8. Electric Quilter, they've been around for so long. They're, they're a strong company, um, continuously coming up with new ideas. Um, this Block Base Plus, um, the idea of that is amazing. The pricing is kind of unusual because a software program, like if you were to purchase an embroidery program, it's hundreds if not thousands of dollars. And right now you can buy this $239 EQ8 program for 150 something 155 155 so for $155 you get 6000 plus quilt block designs and i mean it's amazing uh, the whole idea of it um, and a good pairing with EQ8 would be the lessons for beginners book um, it's all on our website um, Jer will kind of guide us one more time to just go to molequeen.com um, on the home screen here, we'll click back there. Um, the first item is uh, YouTube. If you want to like uh, and subscribe to our channel, make sure you're notified whenever we go live. Um, and then we have uh, Hope Yoder, Creative Grid, and then the third one there is the Electric Quilt Company. If you just click on that, it shows you everything that was discussed here individually. Um, everything is on sale. You'll see the original price, and then you'll see the discounted price. Um, and uh, does that say twenty nine ninety nine? Yep, twenty nine ninety five for so, EQ eight lessons for beginners. Um, so just hold on for one moment. I need um, to fix that. <laughs> so the books are going to be twenty percent off. So um, I will ask Kenny to get that um, discounted right now. Jer is actually going to do that, I think, for us. Um, but right there on our website, you'll see the original price, and you'll see the new sale price for our event um, or you can buy it all so everything is individually discounted but if you feel that you enjoyed everything you saw it is also available we call it simply I want it all and it's available for you um, and to top it all off I'm hoping to um, find a an educator to do some continuous um, live stuff with EQ. 
to keep everybody um, excited and going with the product. Um, and the whole uh, idea of masks and COVID hopefully is on its way out so that we can get back together and do group classes. That would be um, amazing. I can't wait for that. It's hard to uh, do this with Jer <laughs> fixing the prices in the background. But he is, he's taking my screen away to fix everything, which is perfectly fine. But we will uh, announce the winner of you guys sharing our event of a $15 Mulqueen gift card, mulqueen.com gift card. Jer is finding the name. We have picked it. And the winner. Um, we need to get our 4K graphics going. Uh, that is uh, freezing up there, Jer. So you can't even see me behind all of the crazy um, uh, confetti, but the winner is Michelle Hamilton. She, um, Michelle Hamilton Cooper, you win um, a $15 bullqueen.com gift card for sharing our event and commenting. And did you just put the secret word on there? No. Nope. I think that um, just know if you are missing a secret word, you can uh, do a playback. Um, you can watch um, these events over. Um, if you are watching it on a, a replay, our prizes and giveaways are just during the live event. So we hope that um, you are here to join us. And remember, if you do the play the secret game word that we're doing, um, if you go to our home page of mulqueen.com, and then just scroll down to the bottom. That is where you enter the, um, the secret words to have your chance to win a $150 mulqueen.com card. Remember, you only need to know four of the secret words. Um, if you have more, that is awesome. We want to thank you for, for joining us and staying here with us. Um, and with that, Jared, I think that um, maybe we'll take a quick break, and we have some quick demos that we're going to do on what's here in front of me. We have um, some cool Mole Queen swag that we're going to talk about. Uh, we have some other fun items that um, I think you'll like. Uh, one of them is um, this, which uh, I was given yesterday to offer to you. I want to talk about what that is and what you could use it for. So um, what do you think, Jer? Um, before you go shopping, um, just give us maybe 10 minutes because some of the items I noticed aren't discounted and we want you to have um, every bit of your discount that you deserve. So just give us um, five to 10 minutes and we'll have our EQ section fully discounted. Um, and that is um, where my brother Ken will be reprimanded, right, Jer? So I'll give him a I'll give him a whooping. But I think he's going to be written up for not having this prepared ahead of time. I'm doing it right now. Don't worry. Yeah, no, we're we're fixing all the pricing so that you get your full discounts and please take advantage of it. Thank you for your support of our family business and know that we will get all first orders will go out right away because we do have stock. Um, if we as we go on, as we run out, it may take about seven to 14 days to get the orders to you. So please, please be patient with us. We will get it out as quickly as possible. And if you do purchase it from us, um, we will uh, notify you of um, some group classes that we'll do down the road. We have done in the past, and we need to get that going again. Um, what, what else, Chair? I think um, we're going to play a game um, in a little bit. Let's see. We have coming on at 2 o'clock is uh, Michelle Watts. I can't wait for you to see her, her design. And, um, and Jer's got a close-up of me. We have uh, Michelle Watts coming up here very soon. And then we have Handy Quilter coming on at 4. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so weird. Okay, Jer. There's Jer. And um, we had a lot of people take advantage of our special pricing on that quilt right behind you, Jer. 
I think there was a lot of that people. one. Yep. $199 when it first came out. Um, it did get reduced, but it's never been like this. We decided to find an item that we could drastically reduce for everybody out there. And right now it is $60. Do I get that price? Or yep. do I have to pay full price? The customer pays 60 and then you have to reimburse us all the rest of it. Oh, for the 199 Yes. Yeah. So I owe 139 for everyone that for everyone that purchases. So please buy those up. And you two can have love notes, right, Jer? What else? Yeah. So we just want to uh, give you guys a little break um, from our nonsense. I think Ashling Ashling has a little demo. What we'll bring her on in about 10, 15 minutes. Yep, my uh, niece, Jer's brother. I mean, sister. <laughs> uh, my brother. <laughs> Your brother. Yeah. Jer doesn't have. It's it's 20, 2021. You never know yeah, these but, days. So, <laughs> my niece. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we'll be on here to demo a cool little product. And the love notes, you can use a five by seven. Nice. It is a cool kit. It's, uh, that actual quilt came from Kimber Bell's office um, as a, um, a loaner quilt for us. And unfortunately, we have to mail it back to them. I think they should just let us keep it. But that's how it goes. All right, thank you all for being patient with us. Um, our next full event will be at uh, 2 o'clock. And then don't miss uh, our 4 o'clock event, which will be the grand finale for today, which is Tammy Quilter. Um, if you don't mind, I tell you tomorrow morning we'll start at 10. So it'll start a little later. Um, hopefully, some of you would have some sort of interest in uh, making money with your uh, passion of, uh, of embroidery. Was that a, I saw something just flash on the screen. Oh. There's flashing the over up on the screen. Last time. Um, we have the most versatile uh, travel machine coming on tomorrow as well with our favorite educator of Janome, um, Alba. Um, and then we have AccuQuilt, our sales rep, who has been um, so much fun dealing with for years now. Um, she is actually, for the first time, she's going to do an event with us. So I'm excited um, for everybody to meet Tammy our AccuQuilt um, sales rep. She also was the one that would put on all the, the major quilt shows, all the setting up the booths for AccuQuilt and getting that all organized. And then they said I flashed too fast. Well, our, I had it on I had it on the screen for about 30 seconds right. in the middle of that. So you'll need, you'll need to play it back. Do a five second one. I don't know about that. Five second one. I'll count it out. And then tomorrow, at four, you do not want to miss, and please tell your friends, anybody that has an embroidery machine, they should watch our four o'clock segment, the uh, creators of Edge to Edge Quilting in the Embroidery Hoop will be tomorrow at four, and um, there's no excuses for not watching that one. Um, it is amazing to be able to see um, Edge to Edge Quilting in your Embroidery Hoop. Don't tell the handy quilter people later that um, People can quilt in an embroidery machine. I won't. Instead of paying $200 for um, somebody to quilt your quilt for you, you can embroider your own quilt. Right, Ken? Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> I, so, was, I was hiding down underneath the banner and going, Oh, yeah. And someone said, Who's Jared sticking his tongue at? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to have a, a, a couple of demos before our two o'clock section. So hang in there. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. We're uh, we're taking a little break from all the com the companies that we're working with, and we're gonna do a little demo um, with these little pin cups, um, as well as a couple pin catchers, pin bowls, stuff like that. So um, this first one is gonna be a magnetic pin cup. I'm gonna show you right here. It's a 3D printed pin cup that locks into place down here at the bottom, but if you just twist it, it'll come free and then display your pins for you to use. So when you go down, you'll twist it back to lock it. That way you can set it down and the pins stay in one place and it's all put together nice and neat and you can go ahead and set that off to the side. They come in multiple colors, multiple sizes. So there's those for you. These ones go up to 53 millimeters or 2.1 inch pins. And then this one right here will go up to one and a half inches or 36 millimeters. So those are those two. They come in a variety of colors. They're all on our website under the live event specials. Um, so we have those guys to show you. Um, Can I show how to order those? Yeah. Well, it, after I show them these ones too. Okay. And then... We're switching positions here, everybody. <laughs> Darren, Darren's uh, behind the computer. It's normally my job, but now what I'm going to show you is go back to this one. Here, is, I've I've got this. You got it. Yep. Okay, so it's going to be a brother and a mole queen pin bowl. So it's a magnetic pin bowl. So you have your small little magnet underneath there. Um, nice to set on top of your machine or on your long arm. Um, the bottom does magnetize, so if you have somewhere steel to place it, um, you can go ahead and just set it down, and it's nice and Nice and neat. So, especially keep, for long armors. Yeah, and it, it'll magnetize to your machine itself. And then this last thing I'm going to grab for you is an extendable uh, pin catcher, magnetic wand that you can pick up stuff off the ground. Um, another neat thing about it is right in the front. If I go ahead and twist it, it's got a light. So, for all you quilters that uh that like staying up nice and late. And you have all your lights off you can go ahead and uh, turn that on to find the pins that you've dropped on the ground but it does pick up pins like that so you can uh magnetize whoops that's stuck on a pin cut there you go you can even take that plastic thing off at the end yep that's to protect your magnet and your light but you can leave that on um so these guys are all on sale on our website at molequeen.com darren's actually gonna uh click down at the bottom to share the screen. There you go. Now you use that computer to your left. Boy, how do you do all this, Jared? <laughs> so um, if you go to our website, the home page is going to bring you right to this, just molequeen.com. You'll go ahead and scroll down all the way to the bottom, passing everything that you're going to see today as well as tomorrow. And then Molequeen demonstrated products. If you go ahead and click on that, It'll bring you to this page. So the first thing you're going to see is some a little demo that you'll see later on. But the next, the middle thing right there is the pin cup. So uh, we have them on sale. I believe that's the larger one for twelve, or that's the smaller one for twelve eighty, and the larger one for sixteen dollars. Um, as you keep on scrolling down, you'll see like the Kimberbell love notes you can buy there. All of the three D printed cups there. Keep on going, Darren. And then you'll have our magnetic pin bowls, and then. LED lights that you guys will see later. So, but that's at the very bottom. If you go to molequeen.com, you can go ahead and click on uh, the Molequeen demonstrated products down at the bottom of the screen and um, get everything there. But one thing I want to mention is molequeen.com. You'll go ahead and click on that YouTube button there, Darren. Oops, go back. Go back real quick. Click on YouTube. And the first thing you're going to see pop up is the Confirm Channel subscription. So hit subscribe. It's going to have you sign in. But um, if you go ahead and do that, Dan, you see the see where it says video clips on there on the on the main computer. Yep. Click the one above. Up, up, up. One more. There you go. Now see if you like you comment and you subscribe as well as hit that bell to get notified um you'll get all of our notifications as far as uh <laughs> darren's finding all my hidden hidden tricks and everything on there but 
you'll uh you'll get notified anytime that we post a video anytime that we go live that way you never miss anything um and you always kind of you'll be in, in the loop but um yeah we would love it we'd appreciate it if you subscribed that way um you can watch any new videos any tips and tricks uh we will shortly be coming out with new um classes for the majority of the machines that we carry so brother juki fof Janomi. um <laughs> i'm sorry how did you stop it you have to click it again oh, okay <laughs> i wasn't even <laughs> um but yeah so if you brother juki fof Janomi, handy quilter as well as gamel um we will have classes for all of the above um and then that way you guys can look forward to those so um we will be live in about what 15 20 minutes with Michelle Watts. I should check the time. Yeah, about 20 minutes. So we'll be live with Michelle Watts in about 15 or 20 minutes. So go ahead and uh, we're going to take a break and we will be right back with you guys. I don't know how to let us go to a break, but Jared does. I can do that. All right. See you guys in a few.
Hello, everybody. We're back again for our two o'clock appointment. Um, I'm glad that we could um, get you all together. Um, I have been trying to call you. Um, I don't know if you know that or not, but um, we've been um, trying to call everybody to tell you that you're. Um, they're not answering. They're not answering still. Um, Hi, I've been trying to reach you about your. Your auto warranty, your your warranty is running out on your automobile, and we're just trying to get a hold of you. <laughs> just kidding. No, we're back for some more fun. Um, we're going to do a word scramble real quick. If if you're out there, join back on. Um, we're going to do um, this time. If you figure that word out that's scrambled up, go ahead and post it, and then a few moments later, we'll pick a random uh, winner. Um, of the people that get it right. We have been told that with some of the delays of people's uh, streaming ability that um, some people are answering it before they even get the question. So we want it fair to everybody. It's all about having fun. So if you guess that word, um, and it looks like some people have, I believe. Right, Jer? Did they get those right? They're getting it There's right. There's quite a few of you that have gotten it. So we'll we'll take um, uh, a random generator of the first, let's say, 10 or 15 people, and then Jared's going to pick the winner from that. Um, and uh, we still have some more announcements of prizes. Um, don't forget we'll have a secret word during this segment. Um, please let your friends know about this. Um, our next guest is... Um, just right next door to us in um, New Mexico, which is really cool. We love her patterns. We have them in the store. We've had them for quite a while. Um, and little did I know that one of our um, one of our embroidery companies, Anna's awesome applique, um, she has uh, worked with some of um, Michelle Watts' um, patterns and. Um, we love the colors that she uses. Um, you're going to see a, a wonderful trunk show. We're very excited for this. Um, we can welcome Michelle Watts. Good afternoon. How are y'all? We are doing wonderful. How are you? I'm good. Sitting here in beautiful New Mexico. What part of New Mexico are you? Uh, so I'm in Roswell, New Mexico, southeastern. Oh. So at least for about two more weeks, and then I will be a Texan. Oh. Uh, we, are, we are moving to Texas. And so, oh, wow. yeah, right in the middle of a big move. So, uh, Very nice. but yeah. Well, thank you for doing this. How, how did you get started into the whole world of uh, pattern making and quilting? Well, so it's kind of a funny story. Um, I got married, uh, was super bored. Uh, because my husband That'll worked all it. the time and uh, I decided I was going to take up quilting. So I, I started hand quilting for the public and I did that for about seven or eight years. And then I started designing with graph paper and designing my own stuff because there really wasn't anything Southwestern, which is what I loved. So there wasn't a whole lot out on the market um, that I could find. And so I decided to just nothing ventured, nothing gained, try it and see what happened. And 39 years later, here I am. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, we um, we love this style. And I know our, our customers will as well. So I'm excited to. That's one of my favorites. Is it? Yep. Um, yeah. You did a great job on it. Thank you. Um, but we will, we have everything on our website. My brother Ken worked hard about getting all these patterns there. So hopefully uh, people will take up our, our specials for this event from everything awesome. that you've created. And um, oh, uh, there's a little bit of confetti on the screen because Jer <laughs> has uh, picked the winner. We got high tech graphics over here. Um, but Cheryl Adams won the, uh, the word scramble and um, so just make sure that you email Jared to get your gift card emailed out to you. And without further ado, Michelle, I'm going to bow out here and we'll give you the Okay. Time. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh-oh. 
about windows. Well, hold on a sec. Can you guys see it? Hello? Yep, we can see you. We're coming back. Okay. Yep. Can you see the so, you can see the beauty of the Southwest? It's uh it's duplicating on that screen. Jared's gonna Jared's our IT master here and he'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, she's see exactly what you see right now. Okay. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to share with everybody this afternoon is um, 38 years of um, my designs um, using Beauty of the Southwest as my inspiration. Um, I grew up in Texas, but I have always loved the Southwest, the Native American designs, the really bold geometric shapes and styles. And so um, this is just a collection of some of the mini quilts that I've done um, using uh, Native American and Southwestern inspiration. So the first thing I use a lot of is color um, as inspiration. Michelle, I'm gonna yes. interrupt you real quick. All we see right now is your screen of the view of like the string. So okay, have to go hold on. Um, share screen. Go ahead and hit stop screen. Hit stop. Yep. Stop screen. Okay. And when, you, when you go to share screen, hit share. Yep. And then click exactly what you would like to share. But it's not showing me anything. So if I if I share my screen, I'll show you real quick. Well, so that, that's what that's what we were seeing. So you'll you'll have to select your PowerPoint. Well, my PowerPoint is open. Okay, so when you so, go to share screen, you'll have to click select, um, like you'll have, have to actually select your PowerPoint. It's just under share screen, so you just have to click the, there's really, I, I can't show you because it won't. Okay, can you see that? Uh, you're not sharing anything right yet. Yeah, it is sharing. It's just, it's for some reason not. Okay, I'm just going to close this. I'm going to cancel there. So now you can see me. Yeah. And I'm going to hit share screen. Okay. And share screen. It worked fine the other day. Yeah. yeah, I don't have anything to add on here. Um. So you don't see this at all? Nope. <laughs> okay, wait. wait. It's okay. We'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. It's uh, the joys of live yeah sorry well okay. the voice of live. we can do uh if you go to our website i'll just kind of show you guys how to get to um, michelle's designs so you go to molequeen.com go ahead and uh scroll down to um j michelle what to de designs um go ahead and click on that there and then as you're scrolling down, you can see all of her designs that are now on sale. Uh, Michelle, are you using a laptop? No. You're using two computer screens? 
I'm using one. Okay. So should we um, remove and then bring back in just to see? Yeah, let's see. Let me do this. I'm going to. You'll have to join back in on that same link. Okay, Michelle? Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. So what I'm seeing is what you were just seeing on my screen. So go ahead and go down and click on your PowerPoint. Okay. Can you now, see that? Full screen, yep, full screen that, and then you should be good to go. There you go. See that? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Okay. Hey, Thank guys. You. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, kind of like I said, I want to share with you 38 years of my uh, design work um, using Native American inspiration. And so I use a lot of different color ideas for a lot of my quilts. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of just being a photograph, a painting, um, that inspires me, the, the color combination. It may have nothing to do with the, the actual painting, but I just love the, the way the colors flow or look together. I also look at design elements. And so here you'll see um, some Mexican Talavera pottery, some Native American um, weaving design, some baskets. Um, You'll even see some tile work and some cinder blocks. And so all of these are different design elements that um, I, I look at and look for for new designs. I think everybody has to start somewhere. And so this is my very first quilt that I made in 1982 um, for my parents, um, made out of childhood uh, dresses. And so you can see that it is anything but perfect. Um, but I think it's really important to share um, as a designer and somebody who does this full time um, and makes a living from it. I think it's really important to share with people that I didn't just start this job a few years ago that I've been doing it and building my skills and, and learning um, for 32 years. And this was the very first quilt that I made. This is Spanish textile. And what I've done on a lot of these different slides is show people um, the inspiration, either whether it was a weaving or whatever, and then the finished quilt. And so on the right hand side, you can see that there is a um, Spanish weaving from the late 17, 1870s. And then you can see the finished quilt. Um, I love this quilt and the pattern has three different sizes in it. So it's um, got a miniature, a 60 by 72, and then a very large quilt. A lot of times whenever I quilt, um, because I do a lot of my own quilting, I wanna add texture. And so this is a close up of the Spanish textile. And I used an open zigzag stitch on my Janome sewing machine to do the machine quilting. And I just did it along all of the horizontal rows of that particular quilt. This is classic Serapi. You can see that on the right, there's a weaving design. And this is actually just a a painting or um, an artist image of a particular weaving design. And then you can see my finished quilt. Um, and a lot of times whenever I'm working with inspiration, Native American inspired weavings and things like that, I try real hard for the most part to use the same color palette that was used in the original um, inspiration piece. Occasionally, I will venture off one direction or another, but usually I don't venture off too far. The gold in this particular one um, was just a little bit out of um, what the other the color palette was, but um, I think it works very, very well. This is High Mesa, um, another Native American weaving design. You can see that I pick what I consider to be the most um, important design elements 
um, the ones that really stand out. And so, um, and I take liberties because I'm the designer. Um, I take liberties and will change it a little bit. So instead of it just being an up, down, up, down, I made it have several stair steps. And that was just to build the length within the quilt and not have so many repetitions over and over again. This is Eye Dazzler. Um, Eye Dazzler is um, inspired by an old weaving design. Um, it is only two blocks that are put together. Um, it's just how they are assembled that makes it um, look like a kind of a southwestern trip around the world is what it reminds me of. I used a decorative stitch for my machine quilting on this particular quilt. It was a feather stitch and I did it in diagonal um, on point squares. This is Desert Dance. And so Desert Dance and Eye Dazzler are the same layout. The only difference is um, Desert Dance has seven different colors, whereas Eye Dazzler only has two. So again, I used a decorative stitch for the machine quilting um, going down um, the center of each one of the squares. Old Navajo Sampler in one and two. This was inspired by the weaving that you see down in the lower right hand corner. I originally designed this as a block of the month. Um, and I put decided to put all 24 of my blocks together in one larger quilt instead of two smaller ones. Um, each one of these quilt blocks was inspired by a design element out of a bunch of different Native American weaving designs. And the reason I chose to lay it out the way that it's laid out is because of the way this particular weaving was put together. I just really loved the fact that it had some uh, unique colors. It had some green in it. It had a little bit of purple in it along with the reds and the terracottas. And so I really like the color combination also. Navajo Serapi was designed as a row of the month quilt. Um, instead of being a block of the month where you do a, just an individual block, I, I did a row. And so each one of the rows are 90 inches across. Um, and so when you finish a row every month at the end of 12 months, you have a, um, a full size quilt. You can see that the um, weaving design in the lower right hand corner was um, the inspiration. You can see that I've used several of the different design elements. Um, this one right here, the up and down stair step, um, kind of the arrowheads. Uh, and again, I took a little more liberty with this one as far as color combination and stuff, but you could do them in any, any particular color. Sonora, um, this one is inspired by an old Pendleton blanket design. Um, I've always loved the way the, Pendleton, the vintage Pendleton blankets were woven and they, the color changed and the values changed um, within each color. So this is a really, I think it's pretty modern, um, has a lot of negative space. Um, but this is a really cool quill. This is Sonora as a two color quilt and an extra border of background added to it. So you can see how dramatically it changes the look of the quilt with just using two fabrics. Um, again, a lot of negative space to do some really cool quilting and, and, and stuff. Then this is the small version. Basically, this is just the center part. Um, and this, this particular pattern is uh, charm pack friendly. All of these um, half square triangle blocks were made um, using a, a little charm pack. Uh, eye Dazzler Navajo weavings. And so you can see there's two different Eye Dazzler weavings here. Um, I really love this particular um, style of weaving. 
And so a couple of years ago, I created um, Red Mesa. This is Red Mesa. And that was inspired by those two weaving designs. Most of the time when I quilt stuff, especially the Native American um, weaving inspired pieces, I do a lot of straight line quilting in them. I don't usually do a lot of feather stitching and um, real decorative stitching in them. I prefer to stick with the very simple geometric straight lines on, on most of mine. This is Chief's Blanket. This was what first in a series of quilts that I made using half inch finished strips. Um, I had pretty much mastered one inch finished strips and so decided I was going to see how working on a smaller scale would be. And so this is Chief's Blanket. This was actually made um, using blocks. So there are nine blocks and then the blocks are sewn together um, and then a, a sashing piece put in it. Again, I used a narrow zigzag stitch in black and you can see it really well um, as the quilting on each vertical seam line. Burnt Water was the second half square, half inch finished strip quilt that I ever put together. And the majority of the time, whenever I work on new patterns and do design work, um, I use EQ uh, for all of my illustrations, but I still draw the beginning design on graph paper. And I think it's just pencil to paper, I enjoy that process. So because this is a symmetrical design and the majority of my designs are symmetrical, I only have to draw a quarter of it. And so here you can see one quarter of this particular quilt drawn. And up at the top of the um, drawing, you will see how many different rows it has in it and so then I just have to calculate the yardage on a quarter and then multiply it by um, multiply it by times four and then I get my yardage requirements in my supply list. Here's burnt water number two and this one has less pieces in it because it was put together a little bit differently. The first one was put together in vertical rows, half inch finished, up, going up and down. And so this one, I actually broke it up into horizontal rows. And then the horizontal rows were actually broken up into little vertical strips. So if there was an area where like right in here, you could put a big piece, meaning like a four by six inch piece. I did that instead of putting a whole bunch of little small pieces in it. This is burnt water number three. And the reason I did a third burnt water was because people were asking me for a pattern because they really liked the color combination, the way that it all, um, the, the, um, burnt water looked and so I decided to simplify the pattern or simplify the design but keep some of the really strong design elements and then um, make it make it into a pattern so this is a one inch finish scale um, versus the other one is a half inch finish scale but you can see how they look very very similar I use a lot of, um, I use the nine degree wedge ruler a lot in my design work. Um, I've been designing with the nine degree wedge ruler since 1989. And these are a couple of newer patterns that I have out using the nine degree wedge ruler. This particular project was inspired by an old pickle dish design. Um, it's a, a vintage design and I really wanted to just play with that. So the fan designs are actually pieced using a jelly roll. 
um, and then pieced using the nine degree wedge ruler. And then the little turquoise and white squares are machine applique. And in the dark navy blue one, the stars are machine applique and then the, the fans are still used, pieced using the nine degree wedge ruler. New Mexico Beauty is one of my newer ones. Um, and this uses, this is Jelly Roll Friendly and it is pieced using the nine degree wedge ruler. It's just pieced a little bit differently than the way the others are. Um, my idea was I wanted a Southwestern version of a Baltimore Beauty or a New York Beauty quilt um, with a little modern edge. And so uh, again, this is a Jelly Roll Friendly and they're, they're a lot of fun to put together. This is um, Imagine, um, this is my peace sign. So I did this quilt several years ago, um, I guess when there was a lot of turmoil, more tor turmoil in the world than there is today. Um, I had asked a bunch of friends to fill in the blank um, with the phrase, Imagine the World Blank. And so they wrote all of these different things in that filling in their space. And I hand embroidered those things onto this quilt. Um, so it was imagine the world without bullying, with no cancer, without racism. So um, without crime. Um, so this is a really, really important um, piece. I did it because I really wanted to um, just present a, a quilt that represented what a peaceful world might look like. All of the different fabrics that were used, there's 472 different fabrics. And I purposely put fabrics that weren't supposed to go together next to each other. And each one of the fabrics is actually a representation of individual people um, and so how we are all different um, but when you put us all together we make a nice beautiful world together. Arizona Highways um, was done as a shop hop quilt for a couple of guilds in Arizona several years ago. Um, again this is a row quilt so it was put together with um, horizontal rows and then quilted. This is Isleta. So this is a pretty old quilt. Um, it is inspired, you can see, by the little two-inch pot that is over in the um, lower corner. Um, the reason I, I bought this particular pot and um, Whenever I looked down in the case where it was, I could see just exactly what you guys are seeing. And I thought, wow, isn't that a cool design? Wouldn't that make a great quilt? So I bought the beautiful pot to add to my collection. And then um, I hand appliqued, hand embroidered, and hand quilted this particular quilt inspired by that little pot. This is Ancient Ones. So this was in, inspired by a old sand painting. Um, so these are Navajo Yay designs and um, they're machine appliqued and then machine quilted. Ancient Akama was inspired by um, some old pieces of broken pottery that I have that sit in a bowl here on my desk. So I pulled one of those pieces of pottery and started playing with the shape that was in it. And I created a single block um, based on that particular shape. And then I assembled those blocks, um, just twisting them and alternating them so that when they were put back together, um, it looked fractured. It looked like it had been broken. This is Santa Cruz. This is the cover of my book, The Quilted Cross. Um, 
All of the different cross designs were inspired by a variety of different Native American, Celtic, um, some of them were Mexican tin work, coins, um, uh, quill work, Native American quill work, um, some bead work. Some, so there were a really wide variety and you can see the original quilt was a large quilt. And then I picked three of my favorite blocks and just applique those on black background with black um, satin stitch. And it just gave it a lot uh, bolder, bolder design. And then because I also like to embroidery, these are all um, same exact crosses. They were just reduced in size. And then I picked a really wonderful background fabric and I, I embroidered these. Then I added some little um, of the little glue on crystals to kind of accent some of the areas. Native Abstracts 1. So this is, um, this was supposed to be number one of 12 and all 12 of them were gonna go together into a large quilt. And I think I'm five, four or five into it um, and just haven't figured out how to put them all together yet. But this was inspired by an old Kiowa hand-painted cylinder from the late 1800s. Um, I really was am drawn to these particular designs because they look very modern. Um, even though they were in the late 1800s. And so I really like this bold design. Butterfly Beauty was inspired. Um, so here's two different versions. The black and white one was inspired by a Zentangle piece of art that I did for my mom. Um, I sketched her a little butterfly and um, filled in all of the spaces of the wings with black and white um, drawing designs. And so I did a black and white quilt inspired by that. And then I used some of the brighter, uh, bigger, larger prints on the one up top um, just to show people how different um, a single pattern can look when you change the color, uh, color combinations. El Oso is my bear. Um, El Oso is, um, this was inspired by a turquoise bear fetish that I have sitting in my living room. And so uh, the bear is a symbol of strength. Um, the crosses in the corner represent the um, four directions, the northeast, south, and west. Um, the symbols represent strength. Um, rain, um, and the life cycle. So that's what these designs represent. This is the embroidery version of it. And again, because I like to hand embroidery, um, I will sometimes do um, the same project, both applique and embroidery. And this is a smaller version. In Flight is a hummingbird that was inspired by an Acoma um, pottery design that uh, a, a friend drew many, many years ago. And um, I was very blessed to have him allow me to create a pattern using one of his designs. So this is In Flight, uh, and it's a hummingbird. Faith, hope, and love um, are pretty, pretty um, forward, front forward. They um, represent faith, hope, and love. Uh, the colors not, not only represent faith, hope, and love, but also the designs that are cut out of the body of the women. Um, and then down below, you have faith, hope, and love represented kind of in a stained glass look, um, a little more modern. Um, so these are um, a lot of fun to make. And you can see that I've just um, quilt, quilted both of them very, very differently. Uh, the upper one I used just wavy lines and quilted 
just very um, linear lines. And then I uh, kind of did some um, echoing the white background area um, in the lower one. So I use a lot of Mexican Talavera plates for inspiration. I have a very nice collection of those that we use. And these were some of the plates that were inspiration for my Fiesta de Talavera pattern. And so here were a couple of the, just to kind of show you where I, how I look at a design and, and try to use what is it, what I consider to be important design elements. You can see that um, I've kind of used arrows to show you the design elements that I felt like were important that drew, you know, would draw you in and let you see the similarities between the pot and, and the actual um, quilt block. Um, so I used the, um, up here I used the little yellow thing, but I turned mine blue because I wanted in this particular quilt, I wanted a, a particular color to be in every single block and that was the navy blue and I, I wanted it to be in every block in, in similar areas. And here's Fiesta de Talavera. Um, this is mine that I did the, all of the design work. I did all of the machine applique on this particular one. And then a friend of mine, Rita Galaska, who's now retired from long arm quilting, uh, custom quilted it for me. And so this is the cream colored one and it doesn't show up very well, but within um, each one of the squares, there's two backgrounds. There's a background that's inside that navy blue and then there's another background that is outside of it. And so um, it, the, the photos don't really show you that, but when you get to see it close up, sometimes it, it, it shows. And here's a close up of some of the quilting on it. And then it also shows you how um, narrow of a zigzag stitch that I use for um, my machine applique. I do fuse all of my pieces. Um, I use soft fuse and then I cover my raw edges with a zigzag stitch so that they're completely finished. This is the back of Fiesta de Talavera um, and it was pieced using the nine degree wedge ruler and a bunch of the different background fabrics that were used in the front. Here's Fiesta de Talavera done in black. Uh, and it was appliqued and quilted by um, my friend Rita. And basically the only thing Rita did was she traded the navy blue for white and her my cream for black. And um, but the fabrics were um, almost identical fabrics. Love's Reflection um, is a single block that's just repeated over and over again. Several years ago, I had a friend ask me to design a pattern that would be a Southwestern double wedding ring quilt for her granddaughters. And, you know, my first thought was just make a double wedding ring quilt in Southwestern colors. But she didn't like that idea. So I sat down and I created a single block that when you sewed these single blocks together, you got what I consider to be the design elements of a double wedding ring quilt, which are the melons, um, the, the rings, and then the diamond shapes. You get those both in all of those design elements in this particular quilt. These are the inspiration for my Benita Trails um, quilt. I've been collecting Native American beadwork um, images and reference books for many, many years. And because I always wanted to make a quilt that was inspired by these particular designs. And so here are some of the ones that I used. And then here is um, the 
beadwork design that inspired the, the block. And so you can see that, again, I have to simplify and, and, and pick and choose what I consider to be important and then um, make, those, make those choices. So you can see I used the little four petal flowers. I used the six petal flower in the center, the four petal flower. Uh, loved the little tulips, loved the way the leaves were. So, um, so those were the, how I put that block together. And then here's the finished quilt. Uh, this was one of the very first quilts that I did that it was um, asymmetrical, meaning all of, you know, just all of the blocks were different sizes and then had to be assembled into some kind of order to where it fit within a square and could be a border put around it. Um, I really like the idea and I like the, the color combo. Um, Jackie Brown in Caddo Mills, Texas custom quilted this particular quilt for me and did such a phenomenal job. And because I like to hand embroidery, I took and reduced those particular blocks and did hand embroidery on all of the blocks. And then after I did the hand embroidery, I wasn't real pleased with, I, I thought it was kind of dull to be perfectly honest. So I went back and used Crayola crayons and colored in all of the areas um, where I had hand embroidered. And so it gave it a little soft muted um, color colorway. Um, and then I used some hand embroidery stitches to stitch the blocks together. So this is the same blocks, but with no sashing and they are hand embroidered and then colored with crayon. This is Riverstone. Uh, Riverstone was originally designed using a folded paper method of creating quilt blocks. Um, I do this a lot for um, stenciled quilts that I work on. And I had originally been playing with some very geometric designs. And I had folded a piece of paper, had drawn some designs on it, and then cut it apart. And so this was kind of the result of that, um, this is basically just one block that is repeated over and over again. Um, and so you can see the small quilt is only, um, well, it's four blocks. And then you look at the, the one in the lower right, and that's a whole bunch of the blocks put together. Um, so this is Riverstone. This is Pueblo Rhapsody. So Pueblo Rhapsody was one of the first quilts that I ever stenciled using Sheva paint sticks. Um, I had been introduced to Sheva paint sticks many years ago, and I had drawn this design and was going to applique it. And I decided that I had this new product, this new tool in my tool chest, uh, which were the Sheva paint sticks. So I built... Um, I built stencils from freezer paper and stenciled each one of the shapes in this and then sewed the pieces together. And so on the turquoise one, I'm going to go back, on the turquoise one, everywhere, everywhere it's black, it's been stenciled with Sheva paint stick on a turquoise fabric. There are 40 sections, and each one of the sections was stenciled individually and then sewn together. And then here it is in burnt sienna on a tan fabric. And then uh, Jackie Brown quilted this one for me. So um, I really love all of the different designs, and each one of these designs are uh, Native American pottery designs from Acoma, Isleta, Hamas, um, Hopi, um, Navajo. So these are all pottery design elements. Here's a close up of some of the quilting. Here's another one that has been stenciled. And so I used five different colors of the Sheva paint stick on a tan fabric. 
What's really nice about Sheva paint sticks and building it with a stencil is you get a nice, clean, crisp line. And these paints are designed for fabric. They don't change the hand of the fabric, so everything stays really, really soft and doesn't get stiff or hard. Um, so it is a, a product that I use quite often. And then here's a bunch of little miniature quilts that I've done using Sheva paint sticks. So all of these are stenciled. So more than likely, every single one of them that you, where you see color, um, that is the stenciled part. So like on the um, Drunkard's Path here in the center, the big one, everywhere it's blue, it's been stenciled onto a tan background, and then it was quilted with red thread. Uh, the winding ways, the purple and white one, everywhere it's purple, it's been stenciled onto a, a, a white fabric. So and again, it's just another tool in your toolbox that you can use to create quilts. Uh, here's a, one of my older wearable art pieces um, from 2003. This was inspired by um, a piece of Mexican Talavera uh, pottery. Uh, this was a, a full length coat uh, with a, a blouse and a pair of pants that went under it. Here is um, Ancient Hands Touched My Soul. Uh, so I was accepted into the 2005 Bernina Fashion Competition and I wanted my piece to represent the Southwest. And so each one of these designs are machine embroidery. Uh, they are pottery design elements done in black thread on silk charmeuse fabric. Um, so each block was done individually and then the blocks were um, assembled with a kind of a quilt as you go method. Uh, so this is the jacket. And then on the left side, those, these were my test pieces. Um, I, I actually did all my test of the digitized embroidery on regular cotton fabric before I attempted it on my silk chamoose fabric that I didn't want to ruin. So these are a new series of patterns. They've been out for several years, but I started doing a bunch of scrap quilt projects. And this is probably the most popular, Have a Heart. They're jelly roll friendly, a lot of fun to make. Um, the patterns all include two different sizes. So this is Have a Heart. This is a scrappy kind of love. This is four of hearts and you can see here how I have used a decorative stitch on my sewing machine, which is nothing but just a wavy line uh, and use the seam as my guide and um, straight lines across. So it was a really effective way to quilt it and a very quick way to machine quilt it. Here's a simplified version of piece and pieces. Uh, both uh, really bright, lots of different colors, and then red, white, and blue. Dot, dot, dash is kind of a little modern uh, quilt that I made. So the turquoise one is all scraps, uh, turquoise, and then I used one solid cream colored or off-white fabric for, for the white, and then the black and red one is just two fabrics. And so you can see how different they look just by um, fabric selection. Glory is just a series of interlocking crosses put together. This is one of my favorites. I've always wanted to take, um, I had a bunch of vintage jewelry and I've always wanted to make one of the vintage trees, you know, where you glue it all to uh, velvet and make a tree and hang on your wall. But I didn't want to destroy my, my jewelry. So I built this little Christmas tree, sewed buttons to it, and then I used wire Christmas ornament hooks to just hook my um, vintage jewelry onto my Christmas tree. And the little green one 
I made uh, a cut circles out of vintage Christmas cards, put numbers on the back of them, and so it becomes an advent calendar. Star bright. Uh, so this is just a simplified large star. Um, you see one of them has the, the one on the left has a scrappy background in cream, all kinds of cream colors and then some really bright big prints for the star. And then the red one, I did it just the opposite. Um, the background is all red scraps and then I used a single cream colored fabric for the star part. A prickly one um, so I originally designed this because I was gonna hang it on my wall and put Christmas decorations on it I was gonna sew little buttons on it little red buttons and and put it um, on the on my wall for Christmas um, I haven't done it yet but it is a great little pattern again I used a decorative stitch for some of my machine quilting I used a feather stitch in the cactus and then I just used a wavy line in the background and on this particular one, I picked a real funky background that had a lot of things going on. It was very muted, but it had a lot of a lot of different designs in it. So it made it look like it had lots more going on than just a solid background. Here are the two um, that my pattern testers did for me. Two totally different color combinations. So these are some new projects that I'm working on. They're textile totems. And so they're basically just little mini quilted sculptures um, for the wall. Um, so this is a new series of things that I'm, I'm working on and enjoying. Here's another little couple of them. And I think that's it. So I'm going to stop sharing. And can I answer any questions? Are you there? Hello. Hello. Well, that was totally inspiring. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I sure think that there was, uh, or I know there was a lot of comments that were very, very praising to you. Thank I hope, you. Um, somebody would uh, ask any questions. Oh, somebody did ask about the the size of the pins. I I noticed that question a while back. Do you know anything about? They asked what kind of pins that you use on a. What kind of pins? No, no it was for our. The demo that we did. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Yeah, don't just disregard okay. that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, our, our, uh, some people join later than others. I guess that was probably part of a, uh, the older skit. So Patty's asking, what is the skill level for these patterns? So some of the skill level on some of them would be a beginner, um, like uh, Sonora, um, would definitely be an, an easy one. Um, but then the ones like, um, I see that you have um, Midnight in Santa Fe, those, those are gonna be a little more challenging, but not saying that they can be done by a beginner, they're just gonna require a, a little more effort. How long does it take to make one of my quilts? Oh, uh, that's a, always a good question. I am, I am one of these that is, um, I, I keep a lot of records. And so I actually write down exactly how many hours um, on a piece of paper for every quilt that I've ever made ever since I started. Oh, wow. And so I have these journals of all of these pages in spiral notebooks of all of the quilts that I've ever made. And so, you know, for instance, the first burnt water that I ever did, um, took me about 182 hours to piece it together because it was individual pieces to each other. Um, then I made a second one and it, you know, it took 79 hours. And so, you know, it just, it, it kind of, kind of just depends, you know? So, 
The totems are interesting. What did you use to wrap the fabric to? Um, they're actually wrapped on wood. You could wrap them on styrofoam if you wanted, um, but I, I prefer wood. What is the name of the color medium you used? The color medium you used in your hand embroidered pieces. I'm not for sure what that question means. What do you mean on that, Teresa? Yeah. Teresa, well, she'll recomment. Uh, okay. So I'm sure there's going to be a few more. Um, Somebody, I, I forgot to tell people to get out their notepad to write down the ones that they take want. Take notes. <laughs> yeah, take notes. Hopefully um, people did. Just know that this is recorded and everybody could go back and rewatch so that you could uh, Good. find the, the name of um, the favorite pattern or patterns. I know that they are all on special right now, so it's a good time to to uh, stock up. So if anybody else has any questions, okay. So, okay. so, um, so Sheva, it's S-H-I-V-A and they're paint sticks. So they're Sheva paint sticks and they are an oil-based paint that you can use on fabric. Um, I've been using them since, I've been using them on fabric since 1989. Oh, wow. Any other questions I can answer? So do you have um, videos or anything like that that you um, have? Or if somebody has questions, are you, let's see. <laughs> Do they have information How many of my on patterns are machine embroidery? So um, I have allowed um, Anna with Anna's awesome appliques to digitize four or five, four different patterns of mine. And um, so she's done those. But the majority of my embroidery work that you saw is actually hand embroidery. Um, that's whenever I traveled and I, I was on the road traveling 180 days a year um, for almost 20 years. And so I sat a lot in the motel room. And so those were the things that I did sitting in hotel rooms in the evenings was I would do hand embroidery. So so that's something that um, I don't I don't do a whole lot of machine embroidery. Are your art quilts used for art and show only? Um, nope, I use, I have quilts on my beds. Um, I have uh, Midnight in Santa Fe is actually on a bed. Um, Fiesta de Talavera would definitely be something that I would only put on a wall because it's got a cream colored background. Um, but you can use them, you know. Um, I have a dog, so I have to be real careful. <laughs> That is quite a, uh, a, that's a lot of work that you've created over the years. I have, I have, I've been at it for a while, since 1982. Yeah. So that's a long time. Yeah. I started very young. <laughs> yes. I, I'm so glad you were willing to do this with us because. Thank I, you. I love, Thanks for having me. Love uh, getting your, your name's already out there, but like introducing to our customers if they haven't met you before they it is uh very inspiring thank you thank you well thanks for having me i appreciate it you're welcome and um if anybody stumps us with a question i will make sure i reach out to you to get okay. the answer for them all right terrific terrific well you guys have a wonderful day okay you too thank you so thank much you. you have a wonderful day well how cool is that what do you think, Jer? Which one are you going to make? Uh, I'm going to make the bear because we sell a kit for it. We yep, sell the uh, laser cut kit. Yep, oh, not that one. El Oso. Yeah, that is. Uh, you know what that means in Spanish, Jerry? What is it? El Oso. Yeah. That means the bear. Yep. Is it really? Cut. Yeah, seriously, it does. Oh, nice. Yeah. That was your uh, lesson for today. Um, El Oso in Spanish. 
Um, but we do have patterns in stock and some are not in stock at the moment, um, but they will come quickly. So if you don't mind, um, Jerry's going to show on our website, mulkqueen.com. Simply just uh, scroll down a couple. We have our YouTube um, and there's uh, the fourth class of today or event of today is um, Michelle Watts Designs. Go ahead and click on that and we have a lot of the patterns there pretty much uh, i believe ken has got all of them there just know that if you come in the store to pick one up we may not have it in stock so order it on our website and you can still choose curbside pickup if you would like um, and we will notify you as soon as it arrives and take advantage of the discounts um i think jerry for and I forgot, um, but we uh, are saying, no, 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 over there. So we will have to do, I think we have a lot of time before Handy Quilter comes live. Is that correct, Jer? Uh, exactly one hour. One hour. So we are going to do a couple of games, perhaps. Um, but that was wonderful. Um, I, I knew her patterns. Um, I knew of these patterns, but um, I didn't know the history and I didn't know the amount of patterns that she had. So that was quite nice to, to find out a little bit more about uh, Michelle Watt. Um, what do you think, Jerry? I think Does, do we have the machine embroidery pattern and the sewing pattern for Fiesta de Talvera? If you um, go ahead and drop me out, I will go look. Bear with me. I'll bring the microphone with me. Okay. So that you can hear me when I'm walking around the store. I would, I would mute yourself just in case. You, you might hear some stuff. You know, should I tell him what I was doing with this? No. Like what happened? No, don't tell him that. Yeah, Darren said not to tell you, but I might tell you. I, I was, uh, was taking a nap, and Darren, I woke up with Darren taping my head to this wall. See, right there on this side. My head was taped to the wall. Did we have a word? It's on the screen. Getting rid of it now. All right. How about we do another word scramble? Did we announce the winner for the Creative Grids? That giveaway, did we do that? Let me see. Yes. Yeah, we did. It was Cheryl Adams right there. You want to come back, Darren? You're right there. Oh, wow. I'm a lot closer. Um, so we do have this one by um, Anna's Awesome Applique. So for you embroiderers out there, it does come with the USB stick of the... Um... Oh, Darren's not my brother. He's he's actually my uncle. Don't give him that credit. This is the embroidery design of that one. We do have it. Um, if you search our website, because it won't be in that category, you'll just have to search Fiesta de Calavera. Irma said to make the bear for my home. Okay, Irma, I'll start on that tonight. That one, I'm not sure that's hers. Um, it was just in that area, so I just thought I would grab it. And I'm not sure that is hers either. But They were just all from this company on the bottom there, Anna's Awesome Applique. I know that Michelle gave her the, the okay to do some of um, her patterns in the... Uh, applique world in the hoop of your embroidery machine so um, if you need any help with anything we've talked about you can email us jer at moldqueen.com or darren at moldqueen.com um, cheryl adams make sure you email jer at moldqueen to claim your price you'll write your name down and then once you email um, we know who to email the gift card to for Thank you all for playing these games with us and um, joining.
joining us for this live event. We have, I guess, are we doing a game? Yeah. Time is it, Jer? I'll have one of those. Oh, okay. We used to have a... It's bingo time. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. We're not doing bingo this time. We're doing uh, word scramble. So unscramble that word. And did we already do that one? Nope. Um, that one's totally easy. I'm kidding. I don't even know what it is. And I was <laughs> when I came up with them. So I have the cheat sheet right here. Hopefully nobody's zooming into the cheat sheet. But we have um, anybody that puts their name on there real quick. We're going to get about 10 or 15 names so that more people have a chance. And then we'll randomly select the winner from, from those. We are uh, new at this. Um, this is a new game for us. And so we're finding that some people were just about to type an answer or even see the answer. And people are already commenting the answer. So there was a little bit of a delay. Um, so we're giving more people a chance. Um, so Jared's taken about 15 to 20 names and then using a random number generator. And we'll have a winner for that. And remember, our game, our, our secret words of the day, just go to molqueen.com and insert those in. We've been through four companies now, so you should have four possible names if you were here all day. But all we need is four. and You'll be entered to win a $150 shopping spree for fabric. And we are going to turn on our 4K graphics. And um, this is my favorite part. How could you not like that? I feel like I'm in a rainstorm. So Judy Vasey is the winner. Oh, wow. Congratulations, Judy. Go ahead and email me at jarrettmolequeen.com, and I'll get you your gift card sent to you. I wonder if that uh, confetti goes everywhere. Like, who's cleaning all that confetti up? Uh, Nana is. Nana. Nana. Oh, here's, Nana is bringing me hey, a, you, a will you wave. Will you walk in front and wave hi? Walk walk this way and wave hi. Nana brought me coffee and some a treat. Thank you, Nana. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah, are you sure you don't want to come on? Okay. Mom is good. You can enter the secret words whenever... You get four, or you can wait until after, but you can only enter once. And it's uh, we're going to draw the name on or the winner on Monday, so you have this weekend. Um, if you don't get a chance, because some people can't watch today, uh, they can't watch tomorrow. Um, so they, oh, the confetti's still going. Yeah, we got a party going on with that confetti. <laughs> Darren, should I? Uh, you want to explain what what this is right here? Yeah, what is that? You know what that is? That's um, a brand new nano light technology that um, a local, um, I think he's an engineer. Um, he is teaching us about LED lights. LED lights can um, kind of discolor your fabric. You want to make sure it's a clear light and not a um, yellow light. And so we have this new light that is very reasonably priced. It will allow you to um, plug it into your USB port on your computer or your machine or um, anywhere that there's a USB port and you can um, recharge it. Um, there is a lot of uses. Jerry will show you a couple more photos here in a second, but um, our, my favorite use for it is um, for a sewing machine. Uh, you can put it in cabinets. You can put it in your purse or Jared's purse. You can put it in Darren's purse. But, um, anywhere that you need extra light. Um, it is. It has a nano sticker on the back side of it. So um, I'm going to peel off one here in a second. Um, the cool and, thing is it's... Uh, it's actually charged by a USB, so you just plug it into either your computer or you plug it into your uh, like your charging block for your phones where your cables go into. And it has a nice little protector on there, but this is that nano cover Darren was talking about. So 
this will stick on and it's not going to fall off on you. Um, you can go ahead and cover that guy back up. Um, and then if you just tap that, it'll turn on the lights for you. You have multiple different modes. I'm going to switch to camera one, if that's OK. And what I'm going to do here is show you this little cool light. Um, I peeled the cover off so that it's sticky. And I can put it wherever I want. And then when I turn it on, I get extra light anywhere I want. If I'm done with that, or if I want to move it, I just move it to wherever I want it. Um, if it gets dirty, I just put it under the sink and wash that little sticker part, and it becomes sticky again. So it's some crazy nanotechnology that allows you to stick it anywhere you want and uh, re-stick it. So you can put your lights wherever you want. And the cool thing, except for there, because there's not enough, you have to have enough surface like here. Um, once it dies down, um, you just pull off your cap, plug it into your computer, and recharge it. And you know what else is cool about this, Jer? What's that, Darren? That it's like $12 or something like that. I think it is. You want, you want me to go and show them where to find it? Yep. So the, the deal is, um, this is made by a gentleman here in Mesa, Arizona. Um, he sells us other lights that are corded, where you have to actually plug it into an outlet. Um, but these, you do not have to. You just recharge it, and you stick it wherever you want. Sometimes you don't want to worry about wires on your machine to plug it in. This way you can have um, it on your machine, and then tomorrow you can put it in your closet to brighten up your, your closet or your drawer. Right, Jerry? Yeah. OK. So if you are interested in this and want to take advantage, oh, we only have 40. So that was a thing, um, that there's only 40 of these available. If you scroll down on our home page, to the Mole Queen demonstrated products. So Jared's scrolling down. So if you click that, um, it's that light right there. And it's actually less than $12 for our special here. Um, it's Nanolite by Solite, but it is um, it is pretty cool. You never have to worry about buying batteries. You um, just recharge it. You plug it on any machine. You can move it from one machine to another. Um, if it the sticker gets unsticky. You just um, wash it with mild soap and let it dry completely, and then it'll be re-sticky again. We were just excited about it, so we went ahead and said, we're going to take all 40 of them. Um, and so I hope you want to take advantage of that. Um, if you order it and you want to pick it up here in the store, just you can choose curbside pickup. But I wouldn't wait too long because um, I'm not sure how long that will last, especially at less than 12 bucks. And with that, um, we'll have a couple more of our own little quick demos, um, such as the machine that we put the light on. Um, a nice little workhorse sewing machine if anybody needs a, a small travel machine. We're one of the um, only stores in the country that has that particular machine in stock. Um, there's quickly setting up. Oh, you stay there, the Kenny. Camera. Stay there. It's, I've done it to Darren today. Just stay right where you are. There is um, fixing up a camera to switch to. And look at that. Look how dreamy that is of Ken. Oh. That's my brother, Ken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Jared, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. How's everybody? How are you? Oh, yeah. I hope you're enjoying the. I don't think they can hear you. Here, yeah. come, come say hi. Hey, um, I know that people were raving about Ken Serger, um, uh, if class that he did last event. Um, we're going to go ahead and Kenny has some ideas of what he's going to do. When did we do that? Was that a month ago? Sure, it's been a month already. Wow. Yeah. It seems um, like it's going by so fast these, these days. I have a few projects that I've uh, put together with uh, to do on the cover stitch machine. So 
next month we'll be go we'll go through uh, the Juki Janome and the brother cover stitch and um, I've got some leggings that we're making and t-shirts so um, with my daughter Lily is uh, um, getting together some artwork and we'll print some fabric and make cool. some leggings oh. and also um, if you guys don't mind to comment over there and say Ken please do some sort of a software demo I don't know if you know this, but Ken is a, a master digitizer and um, he needs to share that with, with the world. You know that, don't you? So, applique. Well, some, oh, yeah. yeah, Floriani, do some applique. I need to get my applique kits going again. Yep. Or in Brilliant software. We carry pretty much all softwares if anybody is interested in embroidery software. Um, but right now, Jer wants us to make sure that we um, turn it on. Turn it on. They're bright. It is a bright little light, and I don't know how many are left, but we need the little counter on the screen like QVC. <laughs> I don't know. We had 10,000 to start with, and we're down to 3,000 left. <laughs> no, on these, we, we only really only had, we had 40 as all of those. So um, We have a little bit of time. Um, we don't like to leave you standing too long without something going on. So we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back here very shortly. Um, we'll find a, another demo to do real quick. Um, it'll give you time to order this <laughs> back to Ken. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll give you time to order that light if you're interested. Um, and any of Michelle Watt's designs, um, they're all on our website, moldqueen.com. Uh, we don't like to... Um, go too crazy on how to order. We just want to make it easy for you if you are interested. I have an idea. Jer has an idea. I don't, I'm a little scared of his ideas. I think, I think it might be a good one. You know how people keep coming in like yeah. that, like Ken? He just he just barges in. Yeah. You could set that camera up that was on Ken yeah. and just have it facing the door. Yeah. Well, as soon as anyone comes in, they're just, I switch them right to the thing. Yeah. Want to do that? Yeah. Now, that'll, that'll keep them from coming in. Nana will like that. So when, when my mom comes in, um, she is um, she does not like to be on camera, nor do I, but I guess it um, is the, the way of the times right now is to try to get in front of that camera and share the love of our industry with everybody out there. So Jer is now aiming our extra camera at um, the front door. If you, it's like a security camera now. Yep. So yeah. that's there's a brother machine there ready for tomorrow morning. I'll, I'll go get Declan. No one's ever seen Declan. At at ten o'clock um, tomorrow morning is something called side hustle. That is a a social media term that is really going through um, the internet through Instagram and TikTok and all of these different social media sites. Um, uh, um. Hey, hey, Declan. <laughs> hey, come say hi. Hey, you're live on TV. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> that, that's uh, Declan is a um, another nephew. Hello, everyone. Declan is uh, 27 years old. <laughs> now Declan, um, he helps, he's Keith's uh, son and um, does a lot of the gamel uh, stuff, gamel setup and stalls. He can fix anything. <laughs> One of his claims to fame here is um, there, my brother Keith, like uh, the three boys, Ken, Keith, and myself, we've always kind of been around fixing machines since we were um, really short. Um, we've been fixing machines since we were probably in the 14, 15 year old age. Um, and Keith, who is one of the best at fixing gamels, he um, there's a gear in those that um, Keith would send back to Gamel the whole machine to have repaired. And wouldn't you know, once Declan started, Declan <laughs> knows how. Out. Yep, <laughs> Declan can fix it without uh, having to send him back. Um, so he is uh, one of those genius minds of repairs. So. We're definitely lucky to have him, and so are you, um, because he will sometimes be fixing 
uh, some of the, the big machines in the back. And he was raised by machines as well. Fun fact about Declan, he's actually a half mole queen, oh, yes. ha half mop. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> got the long hair. Yep. Don't disappoint them. <laughs> yep. Yep. Declan can fix anything on a car, too. So if any of you need automotive, and he's got a detail business on the side. <laughs> yep. Declan, oh. Declan's detailing on Instagram. Here's another Mole Queen. Come on over. Well, we're going to get, uh oh, you got, yeah, there she is. We're going to be doing more demos through the day if there's time, um, which I think there might be. This is all the third generation. Yep. <laughs> Except for me. I'm, I'm the old guy here now. That's pretty sad to think that I'm the old man now. Yeah. Not really. My, I mean, I mean, my dad's ancient. Yeah, your dad is much older than I am. Yeah. Don't mention that. No. So uh, thank you all for bearing with us until our next segment, um, which is at 4 o'clock with Handy Quilter. We'll see you guys in a few. But well, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to come back, right, to yep. do uh, a little game action and um, another demo of some sort. So hang in there.
Yep. Welcome back, guys. I have Ashling on the on the mic. So um, we're actually going to be doing just a quick little demo. You guys saw this last time. Last uh, was it last month that we had reliable? It was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we had a uh, reliable irons. They um, did a demo with their irons, which were the Maven, um, and then a couple uh, velocity velocity irons. Yep. Um, but now they also did a demo with their Uber lights. So um, these are flex lights. The nice thing is these guys can clamp on a table, bend any sort of which way, um, angle the lights. But the coolest part is they have, what is it, nine modes? I think so, yeah, and three nine, levels of three colors. Um, yeah, three, three brightnesses of three different colors. So you have um, different temperatures. Um, this one is kind of like a medium temperature. Then this one's going to be more of a daylight temperature. And then these are brightnesses. So you have like very dim super bright or medium bright and then super bright. So um, this one is a table lamp. So this one, or this is a clamp lamp. So it clamps on the side of your table. And then this one, um, this one right here is going to change or be a table lamp. So um, it comes with a table mount. So it just sits up on top of your table. Um, another uh, beautiful thing about these lamps is that they're actually charged by USB uh, or not charged, but they are, USB powered, so they come with a USB power brick, um, and you can actually just plug it directly into your sewing machine. So if you don't want cables running everywhere, you can have a short, uh, short and sweet one right next to your cable, um, and you can do it. You can basically have, um, there you go. You can have the, the light plug directly into your machine. So to kind of go along with the lights that we were showing earlier. Um, I believe that if I let Darren take over for a minute, I believe I can pull up a video of the app. Oh, yeah. So the cool thing is, they're only $49 on sale for this guy, um, the clamp style. And then I believe $79 is it for the other one? So $49 would get that price point to get free shipping, which is kind of nice. Um, or you can do curbside pickup if you're here locally. But it's just nice to be able to have the light that you need wherever you need it. Put it on the front side or the back side. You can really lighten up your area. Um, remember, there was all sorts of cool ideas of why people bought these lights. Book Lots lights, of, crafting, yeah. sewing. Um, Painting. You'll actually. I'm actually going to play the video right now. Oh, cool. So I just uploaded it. Oh, we got a video, do we? Yeah, the, the ad. Oh, wow. You ready? Yep. I love these ads. They're, they're funny. Hey, Dad. Ba, 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 ba. Dad, what? Step back. That's uh, better. I'm setting up my new Uber Light Flex. Look what it can do. Any ship you can imagine. That's awesome. It has USB connectivity. That's awesome. It has nine different light settings. Great. I forgot why you came in here. Whatever the question is, the answer is no. Dad, you're right about this lamp. What else about going into my office? Dad! You can sew in the dark. Oh, no! Dad! Got you something. May I? But you said the answer would be no. I can never really say no to you. Not 
Give me back my Uber right. Dad, wait. Alrighty. So that was a cool ad. That Super. I love their ads. Their, uh, their iron ads, their uh, the light ad. They're, they're phenomenal. They did a great job with those. Um, yep. we're, we're definitely into these lights. Uber light. LED, true color. Sleek. They don't get hot ever. Gonna show. show them where to find it real quick yeah. as well. So uh, mulkqueen.com, if you go to our website and scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says Mole Queen Demonstrated Products. Go ahead and click on that. And as you scroll down, you'll see everything that we've talked about so far personally. So um, we have our magnetic cups that we were talking about, all the different sizes. Um, then you have the telescoping magnet with light. So that was um, the little pin catcher. Then as you keep going down, you'll have the Kimberbell Love Notes, which is at just a arbitrarily low price um normally on sale for 200 dollars. we have it sold for 60 right now um and then the uber light flex which is the, the one with the table base that one's normally a hundred dollars we have it on sale for 79 dollars. and then the uber light flex with the clamp is going to be normally 70 dollars on sale for 49 so uh, take advantage of those if while you can um those ones we have limited stock of and then another cool couple things is to go along with those so lights that we showed you, the uh, ones with the nano tape and everything like that. I think um, there was only. I think those are sold out, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing is you can buy um, neck lights, so wearable lights, and then um, they're touch controlled computer lights or um, sewing machine lights. So you can uh, go ahead and click on one of these guys. You can watch videos on them. Um, Right here on how to install them but these are basically lights that um, they stick underneath your machine and they're more of a permanent fixture um, but the cool thing about them is that when you um, when you want different levels of brightness you can actually just tap the the light on there so um, what do you oh you're showing that you know i accidentally on camera one i accidentally dropped some pins on accident if you don't mind can you see the pins? No, not at all. Um, they're actually right here. Oh, uh, somebody moved my Ash, camera. Ash, move the camera down. So, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I accidentally dropped all my pins. But oh, I do have this cool telescopic um, uh, picker upper. And you know what is even better on it? Is that it, it says um, whole queen selling on it. Everyone loves Mole Queen. So it has a little light on it. Pick up your pins on the ground. Very long extension. <laughs> and they're uh, on sale. So um, just so you know, we're, we're just uh, biding time. Yeah, we're, we're kind of keeping you guys busy. We have about uh, what, 10 minutes or so until our next guest. My, uh, my most anticipated one for the weekend, actually. Um, my, they're... Their company I'm kind of near and dear with, so um, we, I look forward to that. That's Handy Quilter. What I would love is I'm actually going to give away the biggest gift card that we're giving away today. So we've been giving away $25 or $15 gift cards. I want to give away a $25 gift card. Oh, really? Yeah, 25 Wow. So this is... Uh, you know, Jerry, you can do whatever because it's coming out of your pay. Right. Well, I know, I know that, but I was just being, I was just being uh, frugal. The 25 is a nice so, gift card there, Jared. Thank you. Let's do this. If you share this video and comment done, um, when you're sharing it, let your friends know that there's a new unveiling. Um, kind of. It's not completely official, but Handy Quilter is uh, yeah, they're May, unveiling. May 1st. They're un yeah, so May 1st is when they actually fully come out with it. But um, there's going to be a kind of a little teaser today. So... Um, today will be the first time you'll you'll see this this product, and it's going to be kind of a little teaser. How do you I, share this video? You share the video. So uh, if you're on if you're on YouTube, you can go ahead and hit the um, share button down at the bottom. It's a little arrow with a little curved arrow. You go ahead and click that, um, what do you and then that? you can either share it to like an, you can email it to your friends, text it out, or um, if you're on Facebook, you can go ahead and share by um, 
you click the share button and you can share to groups, you can share to different pages, you can share to your actual news feed, um, items of that such. So that way you can kind of get it out there and help, have your friends get interested in what you're interested in. So, um, and then I will pick a winner here in the next 20 minutes. We do appreciate you guys for sharing. If we, we, um, we love doing this. Jar and I are, are uh, into it. Um, we like finding the companies to go live with us, and we want to keep doing it. So we appreciate all your help with the sharing and the support. I hope you guys enjoy these. I, we, we get a lot of comments that people are enjoying the companies and learning about companies like Michelle Watt. I wonder what you guys thought of her. That was quite cool. And Electric Quilter, I, you know, we haven't um, really dabbled with Electric Quilter for a while. It's kind of sad. We, we love a product, and because we carry so much stuff, it's hard to kind of just make a circle right back to the companies and um, just so that you can share the love with all of these companies. And I'm going to answer a couple questions real quick. Uh, Janice, the answer to your question is no. What is Janice? Um, that was just a question for, it was a technical question on the machine. Um, she asked if she unplugs the back handlebars when she's quilting from the front. I said, no. Uh, you just leave them all plugged in. You don't have to do anything like that. Um, then, let's see. I had Jackie, um, little Jackie that used to work with us. She asked if we're out of the, the table lights, and I said, no, we're not. These lights were not. A, the only one we're out of are those little nano lights. The little nano lights. So the, the little circular lights that Darren and I were messing around with earlier. Um, the kit for LO. So let me look real quick. I'm not 100% sure where. We used to have one. Totally um, out of those lights, just so you know, Jared, there might be one or two left. So don't give up on the lights if you guys are interested in it. No, we don't. We don't have the laser cut kit for Eloso anymore. We haven't, uh, unfortunately, done anything um, along the lines of cutting kits. We've just been busy in other avenues, so we need to get back on that. Um, let's see. Any other questions before we embark well, there, on this? New there's a question. Um, I see it right there. You went past it. It says, uh, "Oh, it just says Darren is my favorite Mole Queen uh, employee." Um, he should be employee of the year. Well, that's really nice. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, I'm having a hard time finding that. Oh, you just passed it again. No, it's, you don't have your glasses on. It says Jer. All right. Let's, let's ask, let's ask, uh, we're going to split the fields. <laughs> I, I already know the answer. Um, I know that all of you out there already know the answer to this question as well. Um, so, uh, um, you know, you don't really have to answer it if you don't want to, but if you feel like you want to comment, um, by all means, go ahead and comment. Who's your favorite mole queen and why is it me and not Darren? You know, it, it's kind of sad when, um, when you're helpless, you don't have the power of the keyboard over here. Um, Jer's actually got the, the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> will we get more nano lights in the future? Yes, we will. Um, uh, we actually ended up buying their entire stock of what they had. Yep. Um, so they're manufacturing more, and we will get them out. Ken, that wasn't even an option. Nancy. So um, Brian said we're both pretty awesome. Oh, but I think I know Brian's answer. I think that's Keith. Oh yeah. So um, we hope that you guys do um, share the love with our Glendale location and our Tempe location, as well as here in, in Mesa, whenever you uh, do that. There's my favorite. Yeah. Have you seen him deliver a long arm? I, I haven't. You know, I'm six foot six, um, and I, I thought I had long arms, but Jer, who is tiny, you know, he is... <laughs> He's not as long as me, but oh wait, my hands are longer. I'm a foot behind you. <laughs> oh yeah. Jer has a, a wider he has longer arms. So I understand why he delivers the long arms for us. <laughs> if anybody um purchases a long arm this uh from this event, um we're gonna have some specials for you. I just wanna warn you ahead of time that our website we are not allowed 
to advertise the special pricing. So you will have to email us. Um, if you don't mind to email either myself, um, Darren at MolkQueen.com, but ultimately, Jer, he's going to be the one that's delivering um, the uh, machine if you decide to um, opt for in-home setup and delivery. Um, Jer is the one that will come and do that. And if you'd like to pre-order those Nanolites, you can go ahead and email me at jer at MolkQueen.com. I'll go ahead and uh, post these guys up right here. I'm going to bring them over. Then is asking where you should see the stack of. <laughs> yeah, come come show the camera the stack of the lights real quick. So my my mom. Keep going. A little more, a little more. There you are. There you go. So hold it up so higher. Hold it up. Look at that. Look at that stack of just the nano lights. Mom, mom is asking where the nano lights are. Um, the gentleman actually lives in Mesa, works in Mesa, and my brother Ken said, "Get him over here. They bought us out already." And so, thank you, Nana. But they're not here yet. Uh, they will be very, very soon. And then the last question I'm going to answer real quick is, uh, oh, okay, one, two more questions. The difference between the pin cups price is one is 1.2 inches of pin, like they hold, or sorry, one and a half inch pins versus uh, 2.1 inches. Are uh, you talking about these? Yes. This is Jared's favorite color. So you just do that and your pins come up. <laughs> Brian said you're six foot five. And then six foot seven with the glasses on your head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and my then, shoes are tall. Uh, the last question is re replays. So um, the videos will all be they'll be available today, um, and it's one long video. Um, but you can you can view that right on our YouTube channel. Um, and you can watch it on our Facebook, but it's much easier to find it on our YouTube channel. Yeah, and then uh, come the next week or so, we'll probably have them split up into four two-hour segments as opposed to one eight-hour. Or at this rate, it's going to be a 10-hour segment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, they don't kick us off because we've been live since uh, 8 30 this morning. We'll have to warn Johnny on that. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's almost time. Is it, Jer? I, I think. I can see Johnny just sitting there wait, waiting patiently. He's laughing at all of our jokes. Yep. You know, we're here all weekend. Like, yeah. Yep. Um, should, Jokes galore. You think we should do stand up? No, I don't think we'd make it. You think? I think so. <laughs> like the we could be like Penn and Teller, except we both don't shut up. Yeah, and we don't do magic tricks. No, and we're not funny. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so right now we have um, a special guest coming on from one of our favorite companies. Um, all the way from Utah is Johnny. How's Johnny, how are you doing? Hey, good. Who am I talking to? This is Darren. We have Darren and Jer, and Jer over there. Okay. Yep. Jer, how you been? Not too bad. Yourself? Good. Jer's a frequent uh, visitor here at Handy Quilter. Yep. Yep. We want to make sure uh, before we sell a product that we know the ins and outs and can support our customers. So we have a wonderful educator in Lynn Miller and Jer for the service and uh, installs. So... A, yeah, he's been here a few times. Yeah. He drives there. It's a, a pretty long drive. Yeah, about 1,400 miles round trip. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So you guys have been doing this since 8.30 this morning? Uh, actually, I, I started at 8 with you guys for your practice. Oh, yeah. goodness gracious. That's a long day, yeah. Jer. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of um, technology, making sure that we can hear people and all of that. So Jared does a great job kind of testing with everybody so uh, that nice. nothing goes wrong and so far we we've had a little bit of an echo in that but it all has worked out well so that's kind of nice oh good 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 i just want to let everybody know that um that we have some specials that we can't really discuss pricing live um, we can't advertise it on our website so you have to email us with your phone number and we will call you with the specials or come on in to the store um, we are here and um, but in a little bit after we're going to go away for a little bit give the show to you johnny and then when we come back um, i'll let people know about some of the special gifts that they get with the purchase of one of these machines okay so it's all me huh yes, sir. it's all you now all right well if you have any questions any questions come in i don't know if i can see them on the screen so feel free to bump in jump in and ask them for them, ask them to me but first we're going to start off with the capri 
Capri is our kind of newest stand stationary machine. We used to go call these sit down and stand up. We've kind of gone away from that and going with stationary and a movable carriage. Because obviously with this one, the Capri now comes on what we call the Insight table. And it is adjustable, so you can sit down or you can stand if you need to. I'm on a stool because it's the height that we have it at, but that height is adjustable. And it's a great machine. Like I said, it's one of our newest machines. And the great thing about this is the Insight table. Uh, I have a ruler on here. I'm going to show you some ruler work on it in a minute. I just kind of get that ruler out of the way though. Okay, there we go. The Insight table, the way that works is it has two optical sensors under here. Your fabric, we suggest you cutting your backing fabric and batting just a little bit bigger than your project. And these two optical sen sensors actually read the movement of the fabric across the table. So it's very ingenious, very revolutionary. Uh, technology that Handy Quilter has come out with for this. Available, comes standard with the Capri and also the uh, Sweet 16. If you want to get, if you have that and it is true stitch compatible, you can get an upgrade table, inside table for that. So we're just going to show you stitching on the Capri. Again, this is an 18 inch throat space. You can see right there, like that is, you know, tons of room there for your projects. It also has uh, table leaps that can uh, go on either side. So this one is against the wall, so I can't raise it up right now, but <laughs> trust me, it's awesome. So like I said, I'm just gonna show you stitching a little bit. Uh, this is a little project I work on. I don't generally do small projects. I do giant projects, but this is a little sampler that I uh, put together with some spare uh, fabrics I had and parts and pieces that I had. And I'm just going to stitch out a little bit using a ruler. I really like the uh, ability to use a ruler with the stationary machine. I think it is nice to way to control my stitches. I don't love, I'm more used to moving my arms like this and not moving the fabric. So I really like this option of having this, uh, the rulers, being able to use the rulers like this. This is, this ruler here I'm using is one of our matchstick ruler, matchstick quilting rulers. And it's, I love the way it works. Just cause you can put nice straight lines on that quilt. I'm gonna finish with my needle down though. There we go. Hope they can see that uh, stitching there on the camera. That ruler just makes it nice and easy to get nice straight lines on there. I also love that stationary machine. I have it stopping with the needle down and I can see exactly where that needle is gonna go. So it just gives a nice, really able to control my project here on the quilt top. And again, moving that quilt is controlling my stitch length uh, across the table. I mean, moving my quilt across the table is controlling my stitch length. I said that kind of backwards, so sorry. I know that the stationary machines are really popular with our art quilters. Uh, we have some fantastic quilters that use our stationary machines who are predominantly our quilters. And I think they love that because of the way that they can just maneuver that fabric really easily, have full control over where that needle is going to stop. I definitely love it for that reason. It's super easy to use. And like I said, with that stitch quality, the same stitch quality that you're used to from a handy quilter machine, we try to make sure that is across the board in all of our machines, definitely. So that's one thing I really love about Handy Quilter. Uh, Darren, our CEO, he is definitely obsessed with stitch quality and making sure that we get beautiful stitches every time, every machine.
way this ruler works, there's a tiny little gap in there. I just have to move the ruler slightly and then go up and up and down following it. And uh, I did this on a full size quilt and just really love the texture that it gives. And I'm just doing it in the white spaces just so I can make all those colored triangles really pop. I'm using um, a bottom line thread, which is a very fine thread. And I use that kind of blue hue just to kind of, it doesn't really even show on there, but it kind of gives it a blue tint to my white fabric. I love the way that looks on there. You know, it's so nice to be able to just control exactly where that needle's going to stop. And uh, again, with all of our machines, you have an option of stopping needle up or needle down. So I'm stopping with the needle down so I can maneuver my ruler around it and make sure it's not going to go out of the way. Let's take a closer look at that. So you can see, get a close up of that, Kayla. No, all right. Nice, all right. So should we move over to the Moxie? Show the Moxie a little bit. The next machine we wanted to show was the Moxie. This is our newest machine on our lineup. I'm gonna sit down here because this frame was so low. Um, our Again, our newest machine, it's a 15 inch throat space. And we really wanted to make long arm quilting accessible to everyone. So many people have a desire to finish their own quilts. And that is Handy Quilters tagline, helping you finish your quilts, helping more people finish their quilts. And that's really the, guiding principle that we go by here. And one of the things that I love is that I can finish my own quilts because I have the, the long arm available. So coming out with this low cost, this uh, lower cost machine, lower cost frame, everything is included. When you buy the Moxie, the frame is included. I think that's always important to check uh, when you're checking pricing, is the frame gonna be included with that? So the Moxie, when you get a pricing quote, that frame is included. Again, it's a 15 inch stroke space. Very intuitive use. Uh, it has handlebar controls. Uh, one thing that's great I love about it as well is the feet. All of the feet work on any of our machines. So if you invest money in a different foot and you decide to upgrade to a different machine, all of those feet are going to go are compatible with that machine. So they're compatible with the Moxie, compatible with the Capri. Um, on both of these, I have the what we call the Sure Foot. So it's a little bit of a higher profile for using rulers. And I was gonna just show you, I'm just gonna do some stitching in the ditch on this one, and then showing some uh, other stitching coming back just using rulers. I really like rulers because I can get a nice, uh, more exact quilting personally. I'm not the best at free motion quilting. I don't practice as often as I should. And that's, I'll work on that, okay? Chair, okay, I'll work on that. I'm just going to show you stitching a little bit on this. Am I going this way? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Again, I'm stopping with the needle down. And I'm just going to try to stay right in that ditch. I put some bright green thread on here. That is not optimal for trying to hide your stitching, but I wanted to match the machine and match the quilt. Obviously I have some crazy bright colors on here. Uh, speaking of finishing quilts, this is 
a top that I made well, probably five years ago. And I've had it hanging on my wall just as a unfinished wall hanging. But I uh, thought today and thought it'd be really cool to do some stitching on there and really finish it into a finished quilt. Yes. Maybe, uh, disembodied voice for, for a second. This is Josh from Handy Quilter as well. Thank you. We did have some questions that were coming from folks. Oh, go ahead. Can you tell us a little bit more about the size of the frame, like the footprint of the machine? Definitely. So the Moxie comes standard on an eight foot frame, and it is expandable to a ten foot. Now people ask, can I do? Can I go fourteen on that? No, we don't want you to go fourteen feet because of the expanse. And the arms we're kind of limiting it to 10. Uh, I like to tell people they can put it at six feet as well. So if you bought the eight foot with a 10 foot extension, you could just set up at six feet. And I think that is really popular. Whenever we mention that, it's very popular. Uh, we get a lot of good responses for that from that. Depth wise, I think it's about five, five, six feet. Um, we have it kind of pushed out from the wall here because we're trying to get a good be able to show you you know the stitching and stuff so i think you could probably get away with about five feet again this one's set up at eight feet this way eight feet wide Good. do you have another question yeah people are asking what other feet the moxie is compatible with all of our feet we have so many and i should have had them all right here so i could say here's our feet uh we do have some of them right here let's see sorry to step out of camera there So the uh, Moxie comes standard uh, with two feet. We have what we call our ruler foot. That one is just for everyday quilting. Uh, let's see. Okay, sorry. I didn't know if you were trying to show me or not. Um, so this is the this is the standard foot that comes. And then we also have an open toe foot. I don't have one in here. Uh, sorry. We also have our couching feet set. If you guys haven't seen couching, I should show you. If anyone is wanting for couching, then we should bust them out here on something. Uh, our couching feet, the glide foot, that is what we recommend for if you're gonna be doing uh, edge to edge quilting or quilting with lots of piecing. This glide foot is nice to just bump over all those seams. That's one of our most popular feet. We also have the echo feet. And that's really nice for echoing around. If you have a ruler, you can echo using the ruler. If you have like piecing that you want to echo around, the echo feet are nice for that. We have this one was a, as another newer one. That is our um, micro quilting foot. So the micro foot. And that's really nice for micro quilting. And everyone, like when we were developing this, people are people came in and saw it on the machine and they said, hey, I think your foot's broken. But no, that is actually the foot. It allows you to see right directly at the needle and see what's going on with that. And then we also have the square feet. Uh, that's really nice for you get piecing, uh, binding, echoing around something square. Those are really popular as well. I don't know if I'm hitting them all. We also have the felting foot. And that was set up on another machine. And if you haven't seen that, that's amazing as well. Greta, another question I have about the process that you go through to load your quilts onto the frame. If you can kind of explain to folks. Like Definitely. I just did that twice here in the last hour to put to get ready for you guys. So we always uh, we we call it the one two three system. We always start with our backing here uh, pinned on the pinned on the leaders. You can see one thing I was going to mention. Well, all of our machines, all the frame machines, come with Velcro leaders. So if you put it on wrong, you got to take it off quickly. It's easy just to take the Velcro off and put Velcro it back on. I, I pinned to the back. This is actually set in what we call low position. So I wanted to be able to see over the edge of my quilt here. And I can actually pull that all the way forward 
and I can easily get my ruler, if I want to be doing ruler work like this, I can easily maneuver the ruler around with a machine like that. So that's what we call low position here on the Moxie frame. On other frames, we call it clear view. Uh, and then I load, then I roll the top onto this front bar. So my backing is on the back bar of this one. The front is on this, I mean, sorry, the top is on this front bar. And then I pinned the back to this back bar. And then I just laid the batting down first and then the top up over the top of it and then just stitched, uh, Stitch down the top onto my backing. Great. So, from like the difference between a uh, stationary machine like the Capri that we were showing earlier mm -hmm. to a frame, uh, a machine on a, a movable frame, uh -huh. um, tell us a little bit about that different experience that you get. So, I think I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but on a stationary machine, you're moving the fabric like this. We do a little dance, right? So, you're actually moving the fabric on the table. On this machine, you're moving the machine itself. So you're guiding the machine, or if you ha we have a computerized system, so uh, your computerized system can mount on the top of this machine and drive it by computer. So this is the Moxie. Uh, I think we can kind of hint that we do have uh, we do have computerized system coming out for that. Some Pro Stitcher, a version of Pro Stitcher coming out. <laughs> She's going to give a little. A teaser there. So we have a version of Pro Stitcher coming out specifically for the Moxie and the Loft Frame. It'll be compatible with this Loft Frame, and uh, but the 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 experience is slightly different. Moving the carriage or moving the moving the machine or moving the fabric, and I think it translates pretty easily. Like I, I practice mostly moving the machine, but when I have a when I get in the groove of moving the fabric, it translates pretty well. Any other questions, sir? I think that's it for now. Uh, somebody did say they wanted to see a little bit more ruler work. I'm going to stitch more rulers then. How's that? I'm excited to kind of work on this uh, quilt, I'll be honest. So, can you explain what you just did there? With the well, I had, I had stretched my thread out. So I didn't want it to get kind of caught up. So I just pulled up the bobbin thread and clipped it off. And now I'm just going to do that same thing again. So I got to do a needle up down, move the machine aside, pull up my bobbin thread. You can't really see them. They're both very fine threads. And then do a needle up down again. And this machine has what we call a walking stitch. So if I just hold that needle up down, uh, if I hold it down for a minute, like for a few seconds, it'll just start taking a stitch. We call that a walking stitch. And that's something, another feature that all of our machines have. Um, so again, I have this, what we call the shirt foot that just has a higher profile on there. It's nice to keep those rulers so you don't run over that, that uh, ruler with your foot. You can see that pretty well, right? So I'm just gonna come down this way and I'm gonna go, I just wanted to show, oh, this is the Versa tool. I wanna to show a couple of different rulers. This is the Versa tool, has all kinds of fun things on there. It has a ditch, it has a curve, it has a V, it has a more shallow inside curve. I was gonna try using that V, let's see. I didn't practice this before, but I think we can make it work. I just want to do a V coming down here. Okay, like so. Ah. Yes, good question. We have a ruler base. So if you're going to if you're going to do ruler work, you'll need we always recommend at least two things. Well, three things. You'll need a ruler. All of our rulers are what we call high shank. So rulers can come in different uh, heights. Ours are all high shank rulers. You'll need a ruler base. So this attaches to the machine and I can't pull it out right now to show you, but it attaches to the machine 
and gives you a nice flat surface to rest your ruler on. And then you'll need the sure foot. So that's what we rec always recommend for ruler work. Three things, a sure foot, which has a higher profile, a ruler base, and exactly and a ruler. And Handy Quilter, we have a lot of really amazing rulers. If you're gonna just get one, I would say start with a VersaTool. It has so many fun things you can do on it. Can you see my stitching there? Can you see my little Vs I did? Oh yeah, awesome. Okay, any other questions, sir, Doc? Well, uh, maybe it'd be worth mentioning, um, somebody was asking what makes a handy quilter machine different, and the, the regulated stitching that you get on the mods, you might be, it might be worth talking about that and the quilting experience you get. I, I, uh, man, that is a really good question because I, I'm very passionate about handy quilter. I love my handy quilter. And I do love Handy Quilter. I, re I really, like I mentioned earlier, our our president, Darren, he is, I would say, almost obsessive about stitch quality. And if you stitch on a Handy Quilter machine, they all have the same stitch regulation. Um, some of them have more stitches per inch or more options. But even the Moxie, the Capri, they both have built-in stitch regulation now that I think is second to none, basically. And you're just gonna get a nice, beautiful stitch. Like this one I have set at 12 stitches per inch. When I move the machine, it stitches at 12 stitches per inch. So. Yeah, so for somebody who's not familiar with that stitch regulation, uh -huh. like, how is that different than stitching on a domestic machine? So some, there are some domestic machines that have stitch regulation, but if you're moving, if you're, if you're on your domestic machine, and you're moving the fabric, you are the stitch regulator. So the stitches are as long as you're moving your, um, as, as fast as you're moving your fabric. I have a quilt at home that was quilted with out stitch regulation and there's in and out of little tiny points, there's little tiny stitches and in long curves, there are some larger stitches that my grandma would call toenail catchers because they're so long that you could catch your toenail when you're getting in bed. but I, you're not going to find that with your handy cooler machine. We, uh, we did have people asking about the included accessories. Oh! So the Moxie, all Moxies come with the accessory kit. Thank you for asking. So, in the Moxie accessory kit, I what is great about this is it was made for it was made for everyone anyone can get this i feel like and has the opportunity to you can set this up yourself if you don't have the help of jared mull queens i'm sure he will help you but if people didn't they have so many great things to help you we have a um this is the car the card that comes on top own every stitch that's what we really are pushed like uh passionate about is that you can own every stitch of your quilt now to set up the frame we've partnered with a app called the built app b-i-l-t you it shows you step by step how to set up that frame and it goes you it goes through okay now you need these screws you need 12 of these screws here's where they go so that is an amazing feature we have the quick reference card it shows you how to load how to uh, thread your quilt, thread your machine, sorry, how to thread your machine, how to get started, what to use, what needles to use. And then it goes through and shows you how to use the uh, screen and the functions on the screen. So this screen here, it's not touch screen. It's controlled with these handles. It has handlebar controls and it's very intuitive. I'll be honest, when I first saw it and third, first heard about it, I was a little bit nervous, but after using it, it's, it's like I said, it's very intuitive. It's easy to use. It's easy to, to uh, maneuver between the different screens. That's great. One thing it also comes with is the Moxie How to Quilt Kit. This is the only machine that we include this with. So it has threads. We have we send you a thread sample of superior threads to try what try out, see what you like. It also has a yard of fabric and this is handy quilter grid fabric so you can load 
something on the back, put some batting down, load some of this grid fabric on there. And then it has, sorry, also has a channel lock. This is so you can put uh, lock one of your wheels on the back and then do a channel lock, do a plumb line like I have on, on this quilt. And then it has, this is great. So we, uh, the educators here in the studio, we developed this. It is how to get started quilting. Now it's time to quilt. So we teach you, we show you step by step. Okay, try, start first with E's and L's. Practice your cursive on the long arm. Then try a stipple. Then add stipple and a star. Then add stipple and a heart. So a lot of great, a lot of great tools right there for any beginning person on long arm that they can try that out themselves. And I'll be honest, one of the one of the biggest challenges of taking the leap to a long arm, it's a, it is a learning pro there's a learning curve. I uh, when I was younger, I bought a different machine and I didn't have anyone to help. I took a class at the store, but I was kind of on my own and I ended up selling it because I just wasn't have a, having a good experience. I didn't allow myself that I didn't allow myself that learning curve, but I also was pretty much alone. And I think that's one thing that we can be sure to, that with Handy Quilter and great dealers like Mole Queens is you're not going to be on your own. You're going to have training. You're going to have uh, instruction and support. That's one of the biggest things that we can always count on is with Handy Quilter and our dealers is the support. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, that was great. Uh, Thanks. People were also asking about pentagrams. Oh, uh, yes. The yes. Oh, I didn't show everything that came in the kit. Sorry. It comes with other stuff too. All you need. But pantographs. Oh, it comes with pins too. Pins to uh, pin your leaders on. So, yes, pantographs can be done on the Moxie. Thank you, sir. Pantographs can be done on the Moxie. I. Oh, I don't have one right here. Um, so, we have a quilt from the back kit that comes with a laser on the back. Uh, tabletops you need you need uh, tabletops for your frame those don't come standard on the frame and then you need to pantograph this one has a 15 inch throat space we're suggesting you do about a 10 inch pantograph um to make sure you have the throat space for that and you can just put that pantograph on the back do you want to grab one no okay all right so yeah, it's completely accessible for panographs, including from the back. Right. Uh, somebody was they wanted to understand what support, uh, like if they bought uh, Moxie, uh -huh. what support they would get. Um, do they come to us directly? Do they go to all queens? Like how? So how so support is always going to be your first line of uh, defense. Your first person you reach out to is your dealer. So Mole Queens are a great dealer. Like like you heard maybe earlier. They've come to us for training. Anyone that is, becomes a handy quilter dealer, they send two people at least for training. Uh, one for sales, one for tech uh, tech training. Jer has been to our tech training, I believe our advanced tech as well. And uh, that, so that's who you're going to reach out to first. And if they, if you need further in further help, we're here, handy quilter. We have phones that are staffed eight to five Monday through Friday, and to answer any questions. And I think also of note is our education. Handy Quilter definitely has a strong focus on education. That's what I do as an educator. We have our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, our Instagram, where we post instruction, instructional videos. And we have uh, all of our instruction posted from the last like 10 years that you can find on YouTube, our YouTube channel. Okay, any other questions? Um, somebody did uh, was asking about the different sizes in the frames. So um, the different sizes of the frames. What's the basic, what's the smallest frame? Okay, so our smallest frame is the little foot frame, and we don't have one close. That's our little foot frame. That is a five foot frame, and so you can do about a four foot, four and a half foot wide quilt on that. And then next up from that, we have the loft frame which I mentioned earlier, comes at eight foot with a 10 foot extension. And it can be shortened to a six foot frame. And then our studio and our gallery frames both are a uh, 10 or 12 or 14 foot. Great. 
uh, we want to show a little bit of uh, give people a little peek at the Amara with uh, those pictures. Yes, let's move over there. So this is another little project that I had. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, I'm just going to start fresh. So this is some orphan blocks that I had. I decided to sew them together into like a little table topper. And I'm showing you what we uh, now have in our newest. Well, this is Amar with our Pro Stitcher. And our newest feature on there is what we call the triangle skew. So I'm going to set up an area first. Moxie? Yes, so the Moxie is our, like I said, it's about 15 inch throat space. The Amara is a 20 inch throat space. So it's a little bit bigger, um, comes on a, a, like I said, a 10 or 12 foot frame. And uh, a lot of, uh, it's, it's uh, bigger. Anything else? Um, like, uh, are there other features, uh, other experiences, or other things that they'll get uh, with an Amara compared to a Moxie? Um, yeah, it's it has more features. So it has more um, stitches per inch. It has a basting stitch. It has programmable handlebars. So these handlebars can be controlled to can, uh, can program. Sorry, program to do specific functions. And it does come with a touch screen. This one has our Pro Stitcher tablet on it. So it is Pro Stitcher compatible. And uh, yeah, there. I'm going to set up an area. Uh, this is, I'm going to do a triangle area. And because I have all these triangle blocks, and I just wanted to try out this uh, cool triangle skew that we have now i'm just going to rotate that uh rotate first and then i'm just going to hit skew i don't know if you can see in there and then i'm going to hit run Like you're, you're using a computerized system, right? Now. Yeah, so this is, yeah, this is a computerized system as opposed to rulers. And we usually set up an area of what we want to stitch out. And then we put, we choose a design. I chose a kind of a curved cross hatch to fit in that uh, triangle. And then you just hit run and it stitches out for you. So I pulled up my thread and... Hands Look, Ma, no hands. Oh, you can see the stitching there pretty well, right? So I'm using some gold thread. Kind of want to get that gold thread to pop on there. So what are the uh, what are the advantages of having a pro stitcher on your machine? What does it allow you to do um, maybe differently than you can do on a regular? I like it because of the exactness. I mean, I'm not a total perfectionist, but I like it because of I can get an exact de design of what I want in that block. Uh, I I don't I haven't taken the time to be a good free motion quilter. Um, but because I can use the pro stitcher to do that work for me and to stitch it out. I like also be able to finish a quilt quickly. So a lot of people, they'll invest in the pro stitcher and they'll be able to use that to start a business and quilt for others. Um, I know people that they have one machine that runs a pro stitcher and they have the other machine where they can, uh, they can do their custom work and be able to stitch for themselves on their other machine. 
I know people that have the Pro Stitcher on one machine and they have the Capri as their sit down machine, their stationary machine, and they can use both. So where do you get, um, like, how do you get designs on the Pro Stitcher system? Great question. So we have, it actually comes loaded with about a thousand designs now. And if you want additional designs, you can purchase them online, uh, what different websites, and then you just put them on a jump drive, put that jump drive in the back of the computer and load it onto the machine. And it's easy as loading, putting a file on a jump drive and taking it to your machine. It's a very simple process. Are you able to uh, make your own designs? Like if you're that kind of person who has an idea or want to do something custom for a you? Yes. Pro yeah, so we just came out with Pro Stitcher Designer uh, about a year ago, I guess. Poster Designer is a program that you can edit or create your own designs. So if I purchased a design and I wanted to change it a little bit, I could take it into Pro Stitcher Designer, make a small change to it, and then just port it back to my Pro Stitcher and quilt it out. If I wanted to draw my own design, so Josh has uh, very talented in uh, Adobe programs, Adobe. <laughs> Adobe program. What program do you use? Adobe Illustrator, thanks. So Josh is really talented at Adobe Illustrator. He draws in Illustrator, puts it in Designer, tweaks a little bit, adds stitches, and then he just stitches out on his own quilt. I have done that a little bit. So I did a quilt for a friend recently and she had pieced a bunch of hearts. And so I took that, uh, I took the heart that she'd pieced, I drew them, well, I copied them on Pro Stitcher first, and I took them into Pro Stitcher Designer, and I just did a nice design that would kind of complement the pieces that she did. And I took it back to Pro Stitcher and stitched it out. So that's one thing that's great is Pro Stitcher Designer. Yeah, um, Sammy was asking, uh, what machine you would recommend to someone who is uh, new to quilting? Uh, that is a great question. If you were just new to quilting and you wanted to quilt your own quilts, I recommend spending as much as you can. So the, the reason we came out with a Moxie is as a nice entry level machine. We call it our gateway drug. So if you want to get hooked on long arm quilting, the Moxie is a beautiful place to start because it has, like I said, it has all the functions and features as all of our machines has, but at a lower price point. If you can spend as much as an Amara, then I would say go for the Amara. If you want to uh, really invest in your future quilting, the Forte, the Infinity with Pro Stitcher, those are definitely beautiful options. But the Amara, this is our number one selling machine. We sell the most of these because it's so easy to use, compact, beautiful. Uh, we sell the most of those. Somebody was asking which systems, uh, which machines are compatible with Pro Stitcher. So Pro Stitcher, I, as our full featured Pro Stitcher, we have the Amara, the Forte, the Infinity, and the Simply 16. Uh, our newer Pro Stitcher coming out soon is going to be compatible with the Moxie and the Simply 16. I have a, a question. Okay. Um, uh, Teresa, who was asking about the different throat sizes, uh -huh. the machines that we've talked about mm -hmm. so far. Can you kind of explain the Capri, the Moxie, the Amara? So throat sizes? Throat sizes. Okay, I'm going to move, Kayla. So as we mentioned, the Amara has a 20-inch throat space. Does that mean I can quilt all those 20 inches? Well, not quite. So we have the take-up bar here. And then as you quilt, your quilt's going to get wrapped up around on that bar. And so you're going to lose a little bit about of that space. So same thing with the Moxie. As we go this way, the Moxie has a 15 inch throat space, but same thing because of the, the bar system that we have, you're going to lose a little bit about space, but there again, we're very mindful of that. We want you to get the most out of your experience. And these are very well designed to small spaces, but you're still going to get, you know, 10, 12 inches of throat space on there. Definitely more than your average uh, domestic machine. Right. And then. The Capri, the Capri has the 18 inch throat space. And 
that one, there's no bar. So you're not going to lose anything. But uh, I think, okay, I'm going to be honest here. I've never quilted a machine on a domestic machine. I never even thought about it. I had, I bought a Bernina and that, you know, when I was younger and I thought that thing is so small, how am I going to get my queen size quilt through there? So I've never even tried it. I always, I just went instantly to the long arm. But again, when I was younger, I saw the first time I saw a long arm, I was in love. I just knew that that's what I wanted to have in my life. So uh, this, but taking the Capri, look at that throat space there, how much, you know, even if you had your king size quilt, it would definitely fit in there. And how, when somebody is quilting like a, a larger quilt, uh -huh. uh, on a stationary machine like the Capri, yeah. how do they manage that? Like, how does the process work? Uh, most people baste it. Uh, there's pin basting or spray basting. I probably would spray baste, but again, I, I'm not an expert at that part. So you baste your sandwich together. So this one we did, we did on a different machine and you have your top basted to the batting, basted to the backing, and then you just roll it up, manage it that way. We do have, like I said, these side table, these side arms, I can't show you, but we have side arms that can go on either side to, to uh, support that much quilt if you're doing a larger quilt. And you just move it around on your table there. Fantastic. Thank Did you. you. That? Any other questions? Just checking to see what else uh, people were asking. Oh, I'm so loving the questions. Things. Keep going. Um, what was that? About crow stitching. Right? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. So Pro Stitcher works with all of our, let's see, all of our past machines. So the Avante, the Fusion, the, so the HQ16. So any of our movable carriage machines, definitely. What about the Capri? The Capri, no. It's for the movable carriage. That's right. Great. Is there any other things on the Amara that you were um, going to show? Any features that are personal favorites of yours? Well, aside from the Pro Stitcher, let's see. Oh, and uh, sorry, I'm going to throw that. Somebody asked about that, that, that quilt with the buffalo. Oh, let's talk about the quilts really quick. So, speaking of the Capri. Uh, this quilt here, the Buffalo quilt, was made by Ashley Ruder. She's one of our um, a handy quilter employee. She works in our oh our show events. department events. Yeah, she's our event coordinator. Thank you. And, and did she do that on one of the machines that we were talking about? Yeah, she did it on this very Capri. So she pieced it, and it wasn't her first quilt that she quilted because she did her first one on one of the. Um, other machines, I think on the Forte, but she wanted to finish this quilt all by herself. So if you can zoom in on some of that quilting on the, in the gray part, she did all of that. She did a stencil on there and you can shoot, do, you can see she did something a little different on the Buffalo and then the hide end, the hind end of the Buffalo and then on the background. And she did that all herself, all on the Capri. So that's why we have it hanging there. Let's go to the left a little bit. and. This quilt here is by Kim Sandberg. She's one of our educators, and she did this all on Pro Stitcher. So Kim is our Pro Stitcher guru. She loves the Pro Stitcher, and she'll do everything on the Pro Stitcher she can. So she digitized inside of that, and then she digitized. Uh, I think she cropped out the rest of that to go around, but you can see all those perfect circles. Doing that by hand would be really tricky. So that's what the beauty of the Pro Stitcher is. And then if you'll swing over to the other one, I was gonna show you the other one, the other uh, quilt. So this is another quilt by Kim Sandberg that uh, designed the quilting pattern she designed herself. It was published in a, a magazine a couple of years ago. And then again, quilted all in the Pro Stitcher. And uh, she is the Pro Stitcher guru for sure. Fantastic. Any other questions? Let me check the feed to see if there are any other questions out there. Uh, 
Uh huh. System. Um, the Amara that we're showing here doesn't come uh, standard with the processor. Um, and you can add it on afterwards. Yeah. So the Amara, well, basically all of our machines, the, the processor is an add on. So the Amara comes standard with a, sc a smaller screen, and adding the quilt to the back kit is an addition. Um, but it comes with these. What I love some of the features of this: the movable handlebars. So all of our the handlebars on the Amara Forte and Infinity. I should show you on this one. Sorry, I'll show you on this one, Kayla. So you can see better. So these are all articulating. Oh, I got a Lucy Lefty Lucy there. What the heck? Of course, when I try to show it. Okay, well. Trust me on that one. <laughs> it's really tight in there. So these are all fully articulating. Left and right are individually articulating, so I can adjust the left and right individually. These, that's really great for micro quilting. I can move the, a lot of people like to move the handlebars down here like this if they're doing micro quilting. And uh, if you, it's nice to be able to move if you're doing a lot of free motion quilting. To be able to maneuver those a little bit different to give your arms and your back a different angle, just nice. So again, those are standard on our Amara Forte and Infinity. Was there another question? I was going to set up another uh, triangle to stitch in this other. Decide to get a pro stitcher system for their machine. Uh, does it? Do, how does it change the quilting experience for them? Like I said, I I like it because it's so exact. I can do. I can I can program it to do exactly what's in my mind. So a quilt, the full the full size quilt that I made with these blocks, I had in my mind that I wanted the quilting to be uh like drops of rain splattering out from like when you saw rain on a pond or something so i had these all these triangles and i wanted quilting that would be softer and curvier and so i programmed i found a design that was a spiral i programmed each spiral individually and each each one was a different size but also each one was perfectly round because it was a computer maneuvering it so that's what I really liked was that I could find that exactness and and put those spirals exactly where I wanted and not have to worry about you know trying to finagle a ruler or I don't know uh, moving it on in my own machine I could get perfect circles. So I think it's people who really like to uh, Kim really likes it to to have perfection I guess but I, it's not about being perfect. It's just about having exactly what's in your mind. I think that's what I like about it. Um, does it allow you to, do you think it's a faster quilting experience? when you're? Oh, it's pretty fast, yeah. There are some designs I really love because I can get them, I can uh, quilt the whole quilt in a couple hours, you know. I can quilt the king size quilt in four or five hours and get it out the door. Or get it on my bed, literally. Any more questions? Um, do you want to uh, show another little sneak peek for people who have joined us a little bit later of that machine that's in the background over there? The background here? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to show, but this is a Moxie, and this is a, a, a new pro stitcher we have coming out. Uh, Mold Queens, I believe, can take a down payment or a deposit on that. If you're interested, uh, we're not selling it yet. We haven't formally announced it. We're definitely announcing it. We're definitely wanting people to know that. Yeah, giving our friends a little, a little <laughs> bit of a sneak yes. here of what is going to be coming. Yeah. So if people are interested in a Moxie, they should definitely get one. If you have a Moxie already and you're interested in adding uh, computerized quilting to your system, it runs. it's designed specifically for the loft frame. And 
Yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're super excited about it. Um, so the um, the Amara that you have here yes. is, is on a unique frame. Oh. The Amara usually comes on our Studio 2 frame. It's the same size bars as this, but this is a, what we call our education frame. So we have... Oh, well, right now we have about 12 or 14 Amaras in this room. Uh, we usually have 20. And these are like, like we have an education frame. These are the same frames that travel with our trucks and van events. So if you ever have a chance to go to an event at Mole Queens, oh, I think they have a hands on event coming up, right? I don't know if Jared can chime in, but they, I, I hear tell that Mole Queens has a hands on event coming up. So if you're interested in learning more about that, get in touch with Mole Queens. Um, so we I'm have, back. oh, hey, I hear Jer, like an angel. I'm, I was hiding. I was hiding behind the computer. But yes, you are right. We, um, It's going to be the week, basically an exact month from now. Um, okay. And if you are in any way interested in the um, Handy Quilter products, any of their machines, their pro stitchers, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're all on sale right now. Um, if you email me at jarrettmolqueen.com, um, but we can also get you a deal um, on the, the class. So it's a two-day event, um, hands-on mm -hmm. event with um, the Amaras, actually. Amaras with Pro Stitchers. So yeah. um, that's definitely and something that's to G-E-R. Yep. Right? Yeah, it's the, it's the weird weirdest way anyone's ever seen Jared spelled. No, it's all right. G E R. <laughs> but I put it up on the screen and then I'll let you have the floor again. All right. Yeah, I just want to make sure we mentioned that. So those hands on events are amazing. If you're at all interested in trying these out, it's a great way to get your hands on a machine and just have some fun. I don't know who the educator with that is, but we have amazing educators that travel around uh, with our vans and trucks and you can have a great experience with that. So go give one a try. Okay, do we have another question? Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I'm, yeah, I'm really loving this design in that, uh, in that space that we created. All of our feet on our machines, the feet, well, the ruler foot and the sure foot, the sure foot is a quarter inch away from the needle. And so I can position that ruler so as quilters. We know a quarter inch pretty well. I can position that ruler about a quarter inch away from the, from the edge of my fabric. And you guys, I'm going to be honest again. I don't have my glass. I mean, I have my glasses on. If I didn't have my glasses, I could probably see a little better, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, as the machine moves and starts stitching, when I move the machine, when I hit stop, it stops with the needle down. Again, easy for me to uh, maneuver, move that move that ruler around. This again is the the VersaTool ruler, and oops, I want to keep running, keep going. I was going to lay a little edge of uh, triangles down and then figure out what else I could do after that. Yeah, so. Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. Can you see that there pretty well? Oh, yeah. That's a good shot. I really like that line thread on there, too. I'm actually kind of excited to get this thing, uh, some quilting on it, because it's been sitting in the uh, pit of despair, uh, a.k.a. my sewing room or some storage box or whatever. And now I've come to the end, and what should I do here? Hey, how if we do a little curve? Let me do a little curve. And then I could just come back and do something along there. 
I'm going to try something in this. Uh, don't do that way, though. I'm going to do something different in this little in this little uh, row here. And maybe I will try a curve. So we're going to butt that up against there. I just want to go right to the top of there. And again, like I'm just going to try to eyeball. Uh, I'm eyeballing a quarter of an inch because I, because I can. Somebody was asking if channel locks come standard on the Moxie. We send you one channel lock, which is all you need. Yeah, so that comes in that accessory kit. The, the channel lock is in the accessory kit. I don't have it here, but it just, it, just, it goes on the wheel and you can put it on horizontal or vertical and it just prevents the wheel from moving. And those are available for all of our machines. If you don't have channel locks, you can buy, we have channel locks available for all of our machines, but they do come standard, yes, with the Moxie accessory kit. And what about the, uh, the electromagnetic channel locks? The electromagnetic channel locks, those are not available for the Moxie at this point. We do have them for other machines. And those are a really cool system that you can add a bar to your frame, add a bar to your, add a piece to your machine, and then you just push a button. You don't have any on in here. You just push a button and it locks it either like horizontal or vertical. And uh, what about ProStitcher? Pro ProStitcher Pro -Stitcher has channel locks included. So you just hit a button and it locks it either, again, either horizontal or vertical. You can also stitch diagonally automatically with channel, with the ProStitcher. So you can put in, uh, we have a move feature and it just moves in uh, eight different directions, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. Fantastic. Do you want to take a minute and just do a, a quick overview? Walk us through the three machines that we've talked about today. Oh, I would love to. What makes them different from each other? Or is there a combination of each of them? Yes, so I love the Capri for anyone who has been quilting on their domestic machine. They're used to maneuvering the fabric and they're comfortable doing that. Uh, it's a great way to transition to a long or a long arm machine, a long arm machine. A uh, lot more throat space. Again, you can do sitting down or standing up. It's just a great way to transition from that experience of domestic quilting when you've been moving your, you're used to moving that fabric on the on the tabletop, and it's easy to move, easy to transfer over to the capri. That muscle memory is easy to transfer. And I think it is worth noting this very small footprint. Oh yeah, definitely. It's definitely one of our most popular. Uh, our, our popular machine for you to have a smaller footprint. You don't have a lot of space for a machine. This is, I think, like 36 by 42 or something. It's not It's not big. And, again, the stitch regulation is definitely worth noting. So stitch regulation is the inside table. You're, it's reading the movement of the fabric on the table. So as you move, that controls your stitch regulation. And, again, the same stitch, stitch regulation that all of our machines are famous for so are popular for we have uh, this this one is, that goes down to four stitches per inch and up to about 20. Great. and the next most space conscious frame uh, system that we have the next most space conscious frame system we have would be the little foot frame that is a five foot hooping system frame and then the addition of the little buddy as well so we have the little buddy that turns that five foot frame into a pole system. So you add a pole to the front and back and you can roll a, roll a quilt on there. But again, that you're limited to five feet on that one. The next one from that would be the Moxie. That is our, again, our newest machine on the uh, market. This is the loft frame and it comes standard at eight foot. It can be built out to 10 foot as well. Or I have mentioned that if you wanted to put it at six feet, you could get the eight foot and the 10 foot extension. And you have a four foot section and a two foot section. You have a six foot frame and you're able to do about a five foot wide quilt. Five foot, five times 12 is what, Josh? More math than I can do in my Five show. times 12. Nope, no one's going to answer me. I don't have my, my phone handy, so but you can find... 
<laughs> you can do a five foot. Five foot. <laughs> I say never ask me math questions on the air. That is a no, no. Okay. I, and I then. Explain the, the size of the frames for. Oh, yeah. So the Amara. The Amara, Forte, and Infinity come on a either 10 foot or 12 foot frame. Those are op those are optional. And then you can also get a two foot extension to make it 14. Uh, usually the Infinity and Forte are popular at, our, at 14 feet because that's a pretty big space. And somebody was asking which machines work with the, uh, with the little buddy. The little buddy you can actually do Oh man, you can do the Moxie, you can do the Simply 16, you actually can do the Amara as well. So we have people that they love the features of the Amara. I had a customer recently, she loves the features of the Amara. She didn't have the space, so she had the Amara on the little foot frame. So Amara, Moxie, little foot. I mean, Amara, Moxie, Simply. Right, and the little buddy is an attachment. Yeah, the little buddy is, it adds a pull system like this here to your little foot frame. So the little foot frame is what we call a hoop system. It, you, you base your quilts and put, load it like you would an embroidery hoop. The little buddy adds two poles, one on either side, so you can roll quilts if you want to. Fantastic. Okay. Any closing thoughts, Johnny, um, before we- We are super grateful we could do this today. We are big fans of Mole Queen. Uh, like I said, they've been here for training. I've met Jer a few times. I fed him lunch multiple times. Uh, great people. We're happy that they could be here. Happy we could be here for them. Fantastic. Jer, you uh, There we go. Is that Darren? Hello. That's Darren. All right. Hey, Darren. Hey, that was wonderful. Anything else? Product. Anything else I, I can think add? Oh, hold on, Darren. I found these. Oh, sorry. What are those? A bunch of awards from Handy Quilter. Hold on. Oh, hold on. There's I'm more. Sorry. Oh, well, they have oh, awards. Huh? Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys. I want to thank the Academy yeah, for here. all these awards. <laughs> How do I do, Jer? I think you have to just stand there and hope they don't fall. <laughs> There's so many of them. No, we we do we so, do love Handy Quilter. That's for sure. What um, what awards do you have there, Jer? Um, so we have this one right here is the HQ Way Award, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of where we kind of embody the the views of Handy Quilter and what they look for in their mm -hmm. dealers. Um, yeah. And then the Handy Quilter Top Twenty Five Volume Retailer. So um, nice. They have these. They have the inserts now. Yep. They, for 2019, 20. So we um, we basically sell as far as a quantity. We sell um, a you. large majority of. You're selling a lot of handy quilters, what you're trying to say. Yep. Yeah. And the HQA award is an awesome distinction. That should be noted. So hey Johnny, I think that we had more questions during this segment than all of our segments today, which is pretty amazing. Oh yeah. good. I hope I answered I them well. See if there's yep. So um that Moxie um I know the the normal price is forty nine ninety five. I can't tell you the sale price, but but I can if you email me at jar at oh. com. Oh, cool. And send email me your phone Jer. number. But, like, honestly, if I, you know, if I would have had a machine available at $5,000 for a long arm, that is bonkers to me. So uh, it's a great have, machine. We have this going on, too. Which, um, if you purchase... <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> if you purchase a, um, a loft frame with a Moxie right now, you get a tool uh -huh. tray two. You know what that tool tray two is? Yeah. Yep. Well, I do. Uh, you get the purple bobbin kit. So you get all those purple bobbins. Nice. Uh, six nice. casters and a HQ bobbin tree. Um, and the wow. list goes on for Sweet. all of the different machines. So if you, I know there's a lot of you out there watching. If you have interest in this, um, please email Jer. Here's pretty fancy. He's got his mouse over here, so he's able to uh, work our screen and stand next to me. There we go. Even though I have, I cool. have camera technology, I could just sit over there, but I felt so distant from Darren sitting on the other side of the room. <laughs> awesome. Um, 
So if anybody has any questions while we have the experts here, just let us know and we'll we'll share them with Johnny. And so we had the, the Moxie. That's a nice uh, eight foot frame. There's a two foot extra extension that you could opt for if you're interested and make it a full 10 foot. We have yep. the Simply. Did you show the Simply? I, would, I had a step We out. did not. Well, there is a Simply that we have that is uh, on a five foot frame um, called the Little Foot. And then we have the Amara. Um, and Jer will give you all of the show prices on all of that. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, um, we did also, um, here in a second, we'll show you um, how to sign up for that class if you already own an Amara and you want to take a, a boot camp basically here in, um, in our Tempe location. Uh, any questions coming up there, Jared? Uh, just for us after we, we let Johnny go home. Okay. Oh, sweet. It's, it's late. It's six o'clock. They're an hour ahead of us. Yeah, we're hungry here. <laughs> so is it snowing there? Probably not. No, actually. Well, it did uh, today or yesterday. I don't know. We've had like all seasons in one day here. So <laughs> yeah. they're up in Utah right now. That's where yep. the, the warehousing is and factory is up there in Utah. Yep. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah. So hey, everybody, thank, thank you, you. Jared. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone at Handy Quilter. I know there's a, is it Josh behind the camera right now? No, Josh, we have Kayla as well. So, okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for. Hey, thank you. We appreciate it. We're going to um, show everybody how easy it is to kind of navigate our site now so that if they have interest, they can sign up for the class and all that. So you guys have a wonderful night and thank you again. They're gone. They're gone. Hey, there's, um, there's, there's Ken. There's my dad. You want to come over? We're going to talk about the last thing. And what? So, um, we have this scaffolding going behind us, so we'll have to figure out what that is going well, on. I made a bet with Darren. Um, you know how we did the uh, the ironing board? It was um, Darren's job to get on top of the ironing board, but we didn't sell out because we had two left. Yeah. Two left. So the new bet is uh, tomorrow you're going to watch Darren climb to the top of this. Yep. Um, yep. Even though he's already three quarters of the way to the top. We only have to sell four moxies in order to do that. So that should be pretty simple. <laughs> and tomorrow we will bring the ironing board out. Um, we'll show that off to you guys, what we're talking about on that. And, um, but right now, if you're, if you don't mind going to, Jerry's going to sneak back over to his, his area over there behind the DJ booth. And then I'm going to actually, before I do anything, there's a couple questions I want to answer. Oh, yes. For small spaces, what would be the, the best long arm machine to use? But not the one that you're moving the fabric by yourself. You know, I always say if if you have five feet of space, then you definitely want the simply. The simply, or you can do the Amara on top of the the little foot frame. Um, I I love the I love the simply because it's it's cost effective um, for the price, like for for what you're paying and the the uses of it um, and you get the touch screen and everything and it's not much more than the the moxie itself um it's definitely one of the best ways to go but um uh, let's and see from what i understand you can put the simply on the moxie frame you can put actually the simply is probably one of the most versatile because you can put the simply on the little foot you can put it on the the law frame as well as the studio frame yep. so but we don't want to confuse you on all the options just email jer at mulqueen.com and I'll put that up on the screen again if you're in a little bit, just in case. And then uh, the foot, the ruler foot is the sure foot. So that's Handy Quilter's ruler foot. They call it the sure foot. We have it on our website. S-U-R-E, sure. If you are on mulqueen.com and just search S-U-R-E foot, you'll find it. And then uh, Rainy wants to know what the Simply is. So the Simply is a 16-inch machine on top of a it comes on top of a five foot frame, which is the little foot frame. Um, so the simply has a little touch screen. It's about that big, about the exact same size as the Avante or the, um, uh, the Capri screen. Oh, the Capri. That's yeah. Right. The same screen, same interface. Um, let's see what else we have. You enter your words. I'll show you those in a minute. 
Did you put the secret word up? There I one? did. Okay. You can get magnetic. Um, you can get the magnetic channel locks for the Simply 16 on the loft frame, I believe. Um, and also, we have uh, regular chalk your wheel kind of channel locks yeah. for ten dollars. So the actually no, if as long as the simply is on a studio or a little foot, you can get it. You can't get it for the loft frame yet, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, let's see what else we have. We should have a couple more that I saw. Right, you know, every when we did this last time in January and we were offering the Moxie, it's forty nine ninety five, um, and then the unbelievably uh, large discounted price that you get for us doing this event. Um, it, it's, um, we sold a lot of them and I have a feeling we might do that again because, um, you can get into long arm quilting for less than five grand So and the, you get these free gifts from and you get a bunch of free gifts. So, uh, one, promotion. one thing I want to, I just want to answer this last question and then I'll show you guys how to get into, um, the class and I'll explain what the class is. Um. What does the Amara do that the Simply can't do? Well, what Handy Quilter did with the Amara is they did kind of like focus groups and they asked um, a bunch of quilters um, what they wanted to see in a long arm. And some of the most notable ones were like a pinpoint needle laser um, where, where your needle drops down, there's a laser shining right on where it will make the hole. That way you can reline up your um, your next stitch, like if you break a thread or something like that, you know exactly where the needle is going to drop. Um, the other things would be uh, a bobbin light, so that way you can see inside the dark abyss that is your your bobbin well. Um, what else do we have? There's a larger interface for the screen and the throat and the throat space. So it's an 18 inch throat, which at the the most at the very end of your quilt, you will be able to um, up to you'll be able to get 14 and no. are you yeah. talking about the Amara yeah 20 inch yeah so you'll get 16 inches of quilting space um, at the very end of your quilt um, so that is nice if you, if you have 10 feet or 12 feet of space so if you have 12 feet you definitely want the Amara on a 12 foot I mean that is the glory and then if you don't have 12 feet the Amara on a 10 foot frame be your next best bet if you don't have that space you can put it on a five foot frame or an eight foot um, or you could knock it down to eight feet so um, generally people buy it as a 10 or 12 foot or the, the little foot um, and then the moxie the moxie is the the one that is kind of like helping the quilting community get into quilting um, at a crazy low price and so just make sure you get with Jer on that. Um, come and see us. We're going to honor these specials for um, this weekend and for all of next week. We generally try to stretch it as long as we can. Um, Actually, when is this? I have. I used to have the papers right here. We can honor these until technically three days from now. Yeah, um, it's this weekend. So it's, your, it's just this weekend for the gifts, but as far as the the sale prices. Um, we can stretch, that, we can stretch that out, but the the gifts I can, um, as long as you guys make a make some sort of contact with me in the next day or two, um, I can hopefully push to get your your gifts. So it's April 9th through the nineteenth. So Kathy G is saying she has five feet of space. The simply on the little foot frame would be perfect for a five foot space. You still then get hand guided, which People find it easier to move the machine on the frame versus the fabric under the needle. Um, so, the um, how much on that chart there is the simply when it's normal before that we're not allowed to give the the show price, but just so you know, the simply is not a whole lot more than the Moxie. It's uh, seven thousand sixty nine ninety five. So the simply is sixty nine ninety five. If you get a hold of Jer, you're gonna be Kind of surprised at how low the price is on the simply um, if you're out of state we are uh, able to ship these to your house just so you know that 
if you're in state, um, we can ship it to your house or we have it here to pick up, or you can schedule a install with setup with here. Yep. So if you go to our website, molequeen.com, you can actually scroll down um, everything that you've seen today. So first we had license to create with Hope Yoder, rulers, templates, patterns with creative grids, electric quilt company, then we had J. Michelle Watts Designs. And finally, we had Handy Quilter, what you guys just watched. So if I go ahead and click on this real quick, um, click on it. If you scroll down, you can see the machines that we offer. So those are the different prices that are available on our website. Currently, right now, if you email me, you will get... Yeah, don't pay those prices. Don't, don't buy those on the, on the website. Go ahead and email me, and I'll get you a way better price. Oh, but, but wait. If you go to the homepage of our website at molequeen.com, the first thing that comes up is Handy Quilter. Click here for upcoming class. So it's a two days hands on with Handy Quilter. It's at our Tempe location. So if you go ahead and click this, it's going to bring you to this page. So what this is, is it's a full on hands on course, not necessarily just for Handy Quilters. If you own any handy, or any long arm, it'll help you, but it is definitely geared towards Handy Quilters. So what it's using or what, what they're going over is. Um, how to load quilts, how to um, use an Amara, just the basics, how to and then out, yeah, how to quilt. exactly how to start how to start in your top left corner and end in the bottom right corner. Um, then go from that to pro stitcher, ruler work, anything of that sort. So um, two day boot camp. It's a, yeah, two days. So you basically you'll pay for um, you'll pay for one class, and you get two. You get Actually, it's like almost four classes in two days. And, so, and just so you know, I think the price is actually too low. <laughs> yeah, ninety nine dollars to get two days worth of classes. Actually, um, typically we would be charging for like an embroidery conference would be at one hundred and fifty bucks. I think that this uh, normally is around that, but um, that's okay. This is our first actual hands on class since COVID hit. So um, the uh, this is a, a two-day hands-on. It's at our Tempe store. They have a big, they have the biggest classroom that we have. Um, we're going to keep the machines. We're, normally, we put 12 machines in there for this type of event. We're only going to put six in for this one, so the seating is very limited on this class. And, and we're going to keep it spread out. So Yeah, we're having, it's two people per machine. Um, but they're far enough apart to where you can kind of be safe um, from everybody. And you have to wear your masks. It's masks required um, just to be better safe than sorry type of thing. So the class, um, let's see, we have two dates. It's going to be the 12th and the 13th for the first one. And then a Wednesday, Thursday. And then we have a Friday, Saturday, which is the 14th, the 14th and the 15th. So that's of, that's of May. So it's basically exactly a month from now. Um, and I believe that the price of $99 is for this weekend. Um, the class price will most likely go up. Yep. So, so if you're interested in a long arm, um, if you know you want one, it's best to take advantage of our specials that are going on right now. If you um, are not ready for one, but you want to do one down the road and you want to actually use one, we're going to teach you everything you would ever want to know about long arms at that class. And Senor Jer will be there. I'll be there helping out. So, um, and you know what? That actually um, falls on our third weekend of right. May. So, just for anybody that's left out there, there's about 120 people um, that are watching right now. Um, the um, live event for May is going to be the fourth. Saturday instead of the third because of our handy quilter event is um, taking a place on the, the third weekend. And I need Mr. Jer here, my DJ and co pilot. Um, so, since he'll be there doing the handy quilter class with the handy quilter educator, um, we're going to push our virtual weekend for May one week out. So, it'll be the fourth Saturday. So, if you click on our class calendar, you can actually see both dates. Um, as of right now, the link at the top only goes to the first two days. The second two days, you have to go to our either the Handy Quilter link in our on the homepage, go all the way down to Handy Quilter, or go to our class calendar and scroll down to the specific dates. 
Um, and then the other thing I'd like to add about emailing me, if you have any questions as far as um, prices on a machine, if you um, are look interested in a machine and you want to get into this class, um, if you want me to help you get signed up or something like that, feel free to email me. If you're if you're emailing me regarding pricing on a machine, please email um, the, your phone number so I can give you a call. Um, I've had a, a few dozen people email me in the last uh, last half hour, so I'm going to go ahead and email or call all of those people when I'm done here. So um, look at all these Mole Queen logos that we have. Next you know, month is two days. Now the uh, oh the virtual yeah I I might be setting it up for only one day. Just right. a, a lot more in one day, but we're shooting for one day next month. Okay. And then if you can't make the virtual, or not the virtual, but if you can't make the handy culture class, uh, look out for one the first week of, for the last week of August. So if you can't make it for this one, we're going to have another one come uh, basically three months from now. So. Take, an eye out for that. take advantage of the class price because ninety nine dollars is kind of kind of nice. It's very expensive to put those on because they have to set up multiple machines, um, six machines in this case, and they're traveling with them in. The big handy culture truck will be here to bring them here. So we get a the educator for we have a educator for four days, but each class would be two days. So take advantage of it if you're interested. If you are interested in a moxie or anything. Uh, handy culture wise, please email us and we will get you show pricing. Um, just before we go um, on our website, we have some handouts for tomorrow morning's class that starts at 10. If you are on mulqueen.com, um, Jerry, will you show where that one is? It's um, if you go to what am I showing? Our website and then scroll down to brother. Because uh, or a side hustle, I guess it would be listed as. So if you're interested in joining tomorrow morning, um, if you go to where it says, um, does he not have? Okay. So that very top item there, Jerry, see that where it says click here? Just highlight that. So that is where you would get these papers that I have. So if you're interested in handouts for the start your own embroidery business segment tomorrow morning, you can print those out ahead of time. Just giving you a little heads up on that excited for that class but other than that i think we're, we're gonna have to sign out for today huh yes uh mr ruby is out there um my son um, he was asking earlier if he could buy a duck i think um he, he commented i saw and uh, i'm going to grimaldi's to pick up pizza so anybody else want any just let me know i'll pick up some for you um, but other than that I guess uh, see him, see him in, uh, this is the worst part. I like to say good morning. I don't like to say goodbye, but I guess we have to. See you in a few hours. Yep. We'll see you bright and early 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Perfect. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Bye.